Why? Let's go. This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, you never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God damn it! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Fuck, fuck, and fuck. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to our humble abode. To don't. On this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, January 24th, 2023, this show starts now. Football has its final four. And we have a change in a line taking place in the AFC Championship. Whew. As of yesterday, Chiefs favorite, now Bengals favorite Ooh. on the road in Kansas City. What do they know? What are we going to find out? So much to chat about over the next three and a half hours or so. The Bengals are now one and a half point favorites on the road against the Kansas City Chiefs. What does that mean about Patrick Mahomes' ankle? What does that mean about what the Chiefs are thinking? Or is this just the books taking another look at what the Bengals did to the Bills this past weekend and saying, you know what, this team is it's Pretty fucking, fucking legit. Unreal. We'll talk about it all day. We can't thank you enough for joining us. We also have a massive announcement. The massive announcement isn't the fact that the Toxic Table is here looking incredible at Boston Connor, at Ty Schmidt. How you guys doing? You guys got a uniform on? Yeah, yeah. I didn't plan it, but, you know, I mean, we do have a uniform on. You guys are on the same today. page. You look great over there. Yeah, Spider-Man. Yeah. Yeah. That is not the breaking news. No. no. Tone digs one half of the hammer. Don Cowboys is here. He looks fantastic. That is not breaking news. No. Uh -huh. What's going on, Tone? I mean, I, I wasn't told. Neither was I. Neither was the man who's sitting right to my right here, 12-year NFL vet, a man who won a Super Bowl. Right. He's a coach and a center and a guard and a mm -hmm. fullback and a tight end at times and a wedge on special teams kickoff returns in the oh, NFL. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Super Bowl champion, A.Q. Shipley. A.Q. That is not the breaking news. No. Right? No. Although it is good news that you're here. Yeah. Thank you. All season's been great. Thank you so much for joining us all year. Traveling from the desert all the way to Indianapolis to make the show a little bit smarter, a little bit better, and a little bit more jolly whenever you stop by. Best day of the week. Appreciate you all having me. Shouldn't have said that. Your week? Or who's, yeah, huh. <laughs> who's week? Yeah. Just best day My of the week. Best, best day, day, of day, 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 day of the week. Best day of the week. Aaron Rodgers. I have some big news for those that have maybe been fans of the program for longer than just this season, you have realized that one part of our show has been missing. Yep. Why has that part of the show been missing? Is it because we've wanted it not to be here? No, no, no. Mm. Strictly because the technology that was put into this multi-million dollar studio was not capable of having this one particular part of the program that was a backbone of the program. And here right. we are on this January 24th, 2023, week 21. Yeah. Of the NFL season. Week 21 in this dome. Mm -hmm. The five hour energy phone lines are back, baby. Wow! Yeah. We are back, able to take calls. Obviously, everybody can remember Owen, the eight year old, dunking on mm -hmm. Connor, mm -hmm. calling him uh, to fuck off pretty much. We all can remember Gumpy way back in the day mm -hmm. calling into the program, being such an electric factory on the phone lines that we brought him in. He actually works for us full time. Now, he has since been deported. Right. That's right. And that is all getting worked out, allegedly. Mm -hmm. Still a part of the company, still working for us every single day, still a part of the family, still a part of the program. He started as a caller, now he's part of the team. That's how important the 5 Hour Energy phone lines have been to this particular program. We have a brand new number, though. It is 1-833-432-3663. Once again, that is 1-833-432-3663. If you spell that out, it's one 833 4 Da dome. Yeah. yeah. 1833 4, the number D A D O M E. You'll get online right here. We'll be chit chatting with you, hopefully, sporadically, whenever a conversation falls dry. There'll be numerous times where I'll say, let's get to the events. Mm -hmm. And then I won't. Mm -hmm. That's right. That happens. happens a lot. Because sometimes, as soon as I say, let's get to the phone, something else will pop up and be like, oh, before. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah. We got to get to whatever. But if you're going to be a caller, all we ask is bring the energy. Mm -hmm. Yep. Bring the juice. Get right into it. If you have a take, sweet. 
We can't wait to hear it. Get into it. If you have a question, sweet. Make sure it is a good conversation starter. Just come in here, have confidence. If you're going to call, don't be scared. Now, if you do call, there is a chance we go, well, what's wrong with this guy? Shut up, pal. But that's what happens whenever you call into a program like ours. Once again, it's 1-833-432-3663. Also, one 833 4 da We had to... Uh, we were 50 different numbers, yeah. mm -hmm. what we were trying to figure out. A couple out. other mm -hmm. choices before the Dome. Yeah, the Dome is not the first <laughs> no. round draft pick of anybody. Uh -uh. But a lot of numbers have been taken. We were surprised that this one wasn't taken by any suck sites. Yeah, that's right. No kidding. Well, sure. that being said, one 3 3 4 the Dome. On the 5 Hour Energy phone lines being back, we're very pumped and thankful and appreciate 5 Hour Energy's patience. You know, because we signed a deal with them to do the five-hour energy phone lines. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, we move into this brand-new studio. And we just assume that we're going to be able to do the phone line things. And then what happens? Boom. Can't handle it. No phones. No, nope, can't work. Can't nope. work. Can't do that. Well, we told you we needed that whenever we were designing the studio. We thought we had the right idea. You didn't. It don't. We got it back. Shout out to fucking Jake, local. Hell we yeah. Jake. Jake Tech Guy. From State Farm. A little bit. No. no not no, Jake no. from State Farm. Jake Tech Guy. Are we tired of that? What's that? What's that? Yeah. It's run its course. Okay. It will never run end, though. From what we've heard about the uh, youngins, they love that guy. Big time. Yeah, but I was watching it this weekend, and I was like, all right. I feel like State Farms had a good good run. Yeah. yeah. I th think they might need to just do a little change up. But we watch every single week. We see every single thing they do. So we probably get sick of things a little bit more than everybody else. Like, um, what's his face from uh, Progressive? Mayhem. He, he, that's a home run every single time. Yeah, that's all, an all-timer. I don't know how that one – I don't know how they top themselves every single time. They do. Also, the uh, act like your parents one. That yep. aggressive. Mm -hmm. That'll never solid. get old. That'll yeah. never get old. Pretty solid one for there. Jake from State Farm, I think, is awesome for sure. They're going to have to evolve that, I think, at some point. Yeah, you don't want to fall into the flow from progressive yeah. territory she where stinks. it's like she's been on there for, what, almost 20 years, Long and they time. just like they know everyone's kind of sick of her, but it's like... Get rid of flow. Let's just keep running her out oh. there and doing you know, the same hell thing. Run. Run. She did. Yeah, she Absolutely. Did. Still doing it, too. Absolutely. All right, let's move on. Let's start talking about a little football. What's going on? You you like Flo. You're a Flo fan. Just he was aggressive about it. Take her Nick. out back. Jeez. Whoa. Wow, geez. Geez. Nick. Don't shoot her in the head. Don't say that. There's no reason for any of this conversation. Flo had a hell of a run. Yeah. Still and going. We certainly remember which insurance company she works for. Progressive. And I guess Jake. We also remember that he is from State Farm and mm -hmm. everything like that. But I think I was watching this week, and maybe they didn't have enough options. Maybe it wasn't enough options, and it was running so much. Could have been. Yeah. They have the new Chiefs ones. The Andy Reid one's pretty sweet. Yeah, I'm going to get to the ball, miss. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed that a lot. Holmes bath bomb. Andy Reid getting a little more love, I enjoy, too. Yeah. Travis Kelsey yesterday was fantastic. I can't thank him enough for joining us today. We obviously have Aaron Rodgers joining us, I believe. Now, we'll see. right before we went live, I thought to myself, I should probably send an ask. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe make sure he knows. Yeah, he is. He just okay. got to confirm. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, an hour and 55 minutes from today. A lot to talk about. Schefter doubled down almost on his report this weekend that it is a real possibility of Aaron Rodgers being traded whenever he was on the NFL's uh, ESPN's kickoff show or whatever. Then we ask Ian Rappaport, and Ian Rappaport says, for the right package, the Green Bay Packers will trade Aaron Rodgers. I did not know that was the case. I'm intrigued by that being the case because when Aaron came on here and we said, hey, what are your thoughts going into next year? He said, well, i got to figure out if I want want to play football and if you're going to play football you want to win you don't want to be part of a rebuild so this is a two-way street i just started laughing when he gave that answer i'm like two-way street here we go this is the same thing yeah. for the last three years and a lot of people started targeting aaron for this all oh, we're going through this bullshit again obviously they want you now it is seeming uh to come out that when aaron talked to uh good to mm -hmm. and the entire thing there was maybe a discussion that was said and we'd have to ask aaron a little bit more and who knows if he'll tell us any of these details or not, because he's always like, behind closed doors, we think conversation should be whatever. Even the last couple of years, it seemingly was the Packers that were coming out publicly mm -hmm. saying stuff, not Aaron. But he got a feeling that the Packers were maybe thinking about moving on from Aaron Rodgers. That's why he said this is a two-way street. If they want to go with Jordan, want to go with the younger players, I think he even said, like, I understand, but that's not what I'm in this for. I'm in to win the whole thing, which got lost in the narrative of burying Aaron Rodgers last week. But it was clear that he had heard something in a conversation where he thought maybe he wasn't going to be the quarterback for the Packers. These two, three weeks, however long he's taken to decide if he wants to continue playing, which is a big part of it, does he want to retire or not? And if I knew what I wanted to fucking do, I would have already fucking done it, Jim. <laughs> Tom <laughs> Brady said to Jim Gray, it's a tough decision. Yeah. yeah, Not an easy decision, but Tom and Aaron have been through this the last couple off seasons. Retiring from a game that you have conquered 
in a game that has given you so much is not easy, especially when you're up there in the top pantheon yep. mm -hmm. of fucking people that have ever played the game. So Aaron and Tom going through retirement conversations probably with themselves or whatever the future holds. If he decides to come back, the Packers will also tell him that if they want him back or not at the same time, then to work a trade. Now it's come out from Schefter that they're reporting that the Packers uh, will not trade him to an NFC team. They will trade him to an AFC team. It's like Schefter's got more information. Yeah. It feels like Schefter's like deep with the Green yeah. Bay Packers side, and they're like, hey, this is real possibility of trading him and moving on. Aaron's already alluded to it, maybe having to play somewhere else if he wants to play at all. That's a big decision he'll have to make. AFC is coming to the Colts. Mike Greenberg's on fucking get up every morning. Yeah. Hey, need to hear if he'll come to the Jets. Yeah. Zach Wilson, we found out yesterday, has a good friendship with Aaron Rodgers. Might be the perfect tag team. What are your thoughts on all this, AQ? If you got a guy, you normally <laughs> – you normally don't move on from them. Tom Brady moves on from the Patriots, wins a Super Bowl. Matthew Stafford moves on from the Lions, wins a Super Bowl. Is this a similar type of situation with Aaron Rodgers here? And where do you think he ends up? It's a great question. I mean, I think the one thing that we've learned in this league is that nobody's untradeable. Nobody's uncuttable. When we saw Peyton Manning get cut, I think that was like... That was a game changer. That was yeah. a game changer. What just wild. happened? I then, was there. Yeah, <laughs> and then, then you see Tom. Build and change a little. Uh, Peyton's got it. Yeah. <laughs> Cutting Peyton. Peyton runs the team. That's what what I do thought. we do? Peyton was the head coach, the general manager. <laughs> yeah. in. I mean, fuck, he could have been the trainer. How's this guy getting out of here, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, that's exactly what happened. Then Tom gets his way. He goes out. And then if this happens with Aaron, this is th the three best quarterbacks of this generation, if that happens. Wild, wild, wild thought. The fact that – I love the fact that they play this game like, oh, we're not going to trade him the NFC. Okay, so we'll lose to him in the Super Bowl. So we, yeah. it, we're not okay losing in the NFC Championship, but fuck, we'll lose to him in the Super Bowl. That is always a fascinating thing because I guess you might run into him in the regular season too whenever they rotate the mm -hmm. – like Schedule. you could, you could yeah. potentially run into him if you want to do that. You don't want to do that, but you play against some NFC or AFC opponents each year as well. I like That seems like an old-school mindset. Yeah. As a Packers fan, as somebody that is now – we've had to cover this a couple of years back to back to back. Yeah. This feels like the most, oh, he's getting traded. For sure. That there's ever been in the entire Aaron Rodgers, Green Bay Packers saga. I'm kind of pumped for Aaron. Aaron wanted to be a Packer forever. Aaron old school as fuck. Mm -hmm. Never gets talked about because everybody thinks he's all these other things. He still has that goddamn cloth chin strap. Cloth chin strap. Yeah. He'll play through anything. If 70% of me is available to play, I'm going to play. He's like an old school guy. Wanted to finish with the Packers because he saw what happened before with the previous quarterback yeah. <laughs> that played there and mm -hmm. everything like that. I think he always envisioned it. He's going to get to experience like free agency almost here for the first time with like recruiting. And I know some of the Packers fans are maybe done with Aaron shit. Hey, you're allowed to do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. You're allowed to think however you want to think. Mm -hmm. A lot of teams are going to be lining up to get Aaron Rodgers and pay him $60 million is being reported, $40 million. So many mixed numbers being reported on how much money they would pay and what, what's going to have to be traded. So many teams will go right now to Aaron Rodgers. How's it feel as a Packers fan also a big-time Aaron Rodgers fan? Yeah, I mean, it does – to your point, it definitely does feel like there's a little bit more to this than there has been in the last couple of years because it's been thrown out there like, oh, yeah, they may trade him. But I think deep down, you know, most Packers fans are like, well, that's not going to happen. If he decides to retire, that'll be one thing, but I don't think they're going to get rid of him. And then obviously he wins two MVPs in a row. But I don't know. I mean, part of me, too, is with the Schefter stuff, you remember he was the one who released the report uh, on draft day a couple years ago, and there were a lot of holes in that. So I don't doubt that Schefter has people that he's talking to and that he's in the know, but I'm, I, I don't see this and say, like, oh, man, Schefter knows something that everything everybody else doesn't know. Yeah, what because, was Rappaport like yesterday? Rappaport was like, yeah. He said, yeah, it's, you know, it's certainly a possibility, but he said, you know, kind of like a, I have a tough time. They'd have to do a lot, and there would have to be a lot in return. Like, in – and it'd have to be literally a perfect situation. And then you look at a couple of the other teams, like we know Aaron pretty well at this point, at least for, I mean, on the surface, you know, who knows what he's thinking behind the scenes. But like, oh. do you, do you, can you really see him wanting to go to like the Jets? Like, I have, I have no, uh, thoughts that the Jets wouldn't potentially trade two first round picks to what get they got? him. They got weapons. Yeah. They got weapons. They got the running Young back weapons. coming back, yeah. too. Yeah. I mean, the, the other team in the AFC that's looking for a quarterback is where Devontae is. Like, it's hard not to think that the Raiders don't, you know, leverage their future on Aaron and say, like, hey, with McDaniels, do we really think that, you know, we could make a run at this? And you've talked about it before. Those Pantheon quarterbacks, they don't care about Mahomes and Herbert and the other teams in the division. Like, yeah, they're in their division. They're in their yeah. division. Yeah. Like, yeah. he goes there, then a lot of that changes for the Raiders. I'm so fascinated by it all because I think Peter King said, well, if Tom doesn't beat Aaron, Aaron to Vegas, there's a chance he's going there. It's like two number ones is what they're thinking it would take yeah. to trade for Aaron Rodgers. Yep. 
Oh. What do you think the sticking point is for these What about guys? the Panthers, dude? Could you imagine the Panthers? Yeah, I wonder how hard the NFC-AFC line is. Yeah. yeah. Because Tennessee's because name keeps coming up, too. If, one, if a team Who? comes... Tennessee keeps coming up, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah because he has raw, raw land there. It does have What raw is it? Land. Raw land. Is I that mean, how AJ... Yeah, Well, raw I mean, land. yeah, if some people are buying raw land in Nashville, that means they're moving there. Is that how it was described, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. pretty much. Raw, raw land. land. Yeah. He does. He does have some raw land there. I... Assuming his relationship with Vrabel will be a big splash for the new GM as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's the worst wide receiver room in the league, right? Actually. Yeah. yeah. That's why the last GM. <laughs> yeah. I do think the AFC NFC thing is a real thing though, because like when they got rid of Favre, he went to the he went to the yeah. Jets and after the Jets ended up going to Minnesota and beat the Packers twice. So like I don't think they want to replay that where you tra- same division is tough. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Like same that that, that was is. a nightmare for it because at that time too, everyone was kind of still sore about Favre leaving, and they didn't know if Rodgers was ready. So I really do think if he were to get traded, I don't think there's any way they trade him within the NFC. Let's go to Bobby in Jersey on the 5-Hour Energy Wow, wow. Bobby, on. what's going on, pal? Great to hear from you again. Hey, boys. How you doing? Keep it moving. Yeah, Happy go, Tuesday. Bobby. Good start, Bobby. Nice. Bobby. 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 This is the 5-Hour Energy hey, Line 2.0. Yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, this is great. Just want to talk about my Jets. They're in a great spot. They're in the rise. Got hit the jackpot in the lottery. We need a quarterback. What should we do? Give up the two first-round picks for a good old Aaron Rodgers or just be like the Browns and just give Lamar a deal that he can't reject? Interesting, Bobby. He's going to be a franchise guy, we all think. Yeah. A non-exclusive franchise tag would cost two firsts anyways. So you're going to give up two firsts for Lamar or two firsts allegedly for Aaron Rodgers. Right. That is mm-hmm. – Allegedly, how this so it's just understood. Do you hear all Bobby's talking? Oh, yeah, yeah. it's just understood that Aaron Rodgers is being traded for two first rounders. It's mm-hmm. worth it, too. We're talking to Aaron and at 205 Eastern Standard Time today. He's been whale watching, I think. I think he's actually been That's whale right. watching. Mm-hmm. That's what he's been up to. Yeah. yeah, I wonder if he knows that he is currently on the trading block for two first rounders and how he feels about it. You were very flustered over here trying to figure out your life. I'm happy to see you're back. It is just understood right now that Aaron Rodgers is. Can't hear the phone line. I was seeing if I could plug in down here. Oh. 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 Sorry, Al. That's the one thing we didn't. Uh, just to clarify, the two first-rounders is coming from Peter King, and it's Peter King's guess that it's going to be two first-rounders. So, and then Ian Rapport said they're going to have to do something good, right, mm-hmm. a good package to yeah. get him. Yeah, Pete doesn't miss. And then Schefter said, well, it's not going to be in the NFC. It's going to be in the AFC. So now we're just kind of shaping – Peter King and Schefter have been breaking news for, what, 30, 40 years? Yep. 20? Accumulation yeah. of information, Evan. Yeah, that's what we're doing right now. And mm-hmm. it's all like, oh, Aaron's getting traded. Yeah. That's crazy. One week ago, this guy was going to go watch Wales, see if he wants to play. Yeah. Now he's still in the middle of that process. You can't hear the callers. So what would that, why would that be? We, we, just have fixed, we just fixed it. Okay. Oh, okay. Easy we're fix. Back. We're back. That was a shame you missed Bob. Bob was a yeah, good call. Yeah, good. Great. Energy. What do you say? Mm-hmm. He How did, are you doing? Keep he said, do we I'm assuming Dan- – let's see if I can put context clues together. Okay. Daniel Jones? No. <laughs> Good run, AQ. Good. <laughs> Mute the phones for him again. Fuck. You know what sucks for the uh- – Lamar. Okay. Or Aaron, the Jets. Ooh. Young team. Going to have to trade two first. I thought Harbaugh said 250% he stays there. Or 1,000% or something. 200%, right? but 200%. yeah. He's, they're going to exclusive franchise. Yeah, maybe, maybe – Exclusive is interesting because if it's an exclusive franchise tag on Lamar Jackson, it's the average of the top five salaries this year yep. yeah, for quarterback. Wild. Yep. Non-exclusive top five salaries the last five years at the quarterback position. That's Probably huge. a difference of 10 to $15 million. Oh, yeah. It's a big number. Yeah, I would, I would assume it's no, no bonuses involved. And we haven't really talked about Lamar much since the Harbaugh press conference where he said, yep. I love him, 250% chance he's going to be mm-hmm. back. Now will they be able to make it take place? Bobby and Jersey still wondering. Aaron being the bell of the ball this offseason, though, was something that I could not have expected. This kind of came out of nowhere. Oh, yeah. Tom Brady's going to be available. Who would you rather have, Aaron Rodgers Tom Brady? Aaron Rodgers. Exactly. Yeah, but not even close. Yeah. No doubt about it, Espe- d- depending on the contract. No, if, you go what, if, if Brady takes, what, $20 million? If Brady does some sort of discount like that where it's $20, $25 million, then you know, you're getting a lot of extra room to play with where maybe a guy who's been bored for the last two years decides he wants to come back and play with his quarterback, Tom Brady. Like, that's the oh, you're situation. talking about Gronkowski. I'm talking about Rob Gronke. So, like, that's he kind did of say I'm getting bored, and then the next day he was on that child horse saying that's he's right. now on the fan. Signing with uh-huh. fan duel. Yeah. <laughs> well, in the he's one- got a kick of destiny coming up. Third quarter of the Super Bowl – 
live. Yeah. He's got to make a field goal for $10 million in bets. He's got it. He's going to make it. Yeah. How'd Vinatieri describe it? The guy's got a size 21 foot. It's like mm-hmm. a boat coming Swinging through. Swinging a boat through. Kick yeah. a football. He says, it's not a, uh, Vinny seemed like there's a chance Gronk's not going to make this kick. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's not what Gronk does. No. no. Gronk shows up. Yes. He's, yeah. Gronk's going to make that kick. I hope so. No doubt about it. $10 million in free bets. You know I thought people? it was going to be Fugues live. Me too. Me too. Yeah. Pre-recorded. For sure. I thought for sure it was going to be live and they were going to have some asterisk somewhere. Vinatieri's like, no, yeah, from my understanding. Yeah. Vinatieri said, from my understanding, live. Live action. Very live. Third quarter, yeah. He's kicking. I'm standing there. I'm like, holy wow. fuck. The amount of tech. Yeah. The amount of tech that could potentially take place. Unbelievable. There. They, they're going to have to put together an entire college game day setup for. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Just to have enough tech, internet, support, mm-hmm. yeah. everything to be live for 140 million people watching at the same time? Oh, That's you, awesome. You can do thousands and thousands of hours of redundancy tests if something goes wrong. What are you so negative about? I'm, no, not, no, I'm no. not being negative. We've I'm just there. saying that. We, is, have, we, we, have, we have lived this song and dance many times. With numerous companies. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Numerous companies. Them going live is, I think it's awesome. Yeah. I assume somebody else has done this before. Is this the first live commercial in history? I think this is the first live commercial. In Let's go, dude. Yeah. Yeah. That might I, be the future. Yeah, the last last year at the FanDuel party, there was no mishaps with the internet. so they. I, I still think don't it'll think it's live. Be fine. What's that, Z? I still don't think it's live. See, that's Zito, who has been, obviously, in the trenches mm-hmm. of all these, I don't want to say remote. Is it live on social? Is that what they're doing? No. No, it's just live, live during Thursday the quarter. Quarter. Yeah. quarter. As a, commercial. as a commercial, yeah, that's impossible. Benny said it was. I don't know how they're gonna. Zito and I had this combo last week, and literally said it is impossible. Like even if, they, if it was possible, sending a live feed to who has it? Fox this year. Yeah. 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 So you'd have to send it, set the RTM feed feed, get it ready, get it going, and then hope, like you said, tech wise goes well. Yeah. Yeah, their connection. And there's then, so many things that have to happen. And if somebody takes over that stream and does send something else down the stream <laughs> by mistake, which could definitely happen, like porn? With, from no, yeah. not porn. I don't think, no. but something. I mean, that's easily the yeah. cues could jump on. So that. it's going to go. <laughs> it's got to go from camera on field to truck at field. Right. Okay, so that's one leg. Yep. Then it's got to go from truck to satellite. Okay, satellite to. Super Bowl truck. Yeah, truck yeah. at the stadium. Uh, I know what's going to happen. Then that thing has to get sent to game feed, and then that has to get sent, obviously, out to 140 mi- There's just so many layers there. The was- only thing I could see them do, the asterisk, is they film it in the first quarter. They have it ready for like a half hour. And of- it runs third quarter. Yes. I mean, that's Which a- they might as well film it now. So right. Snickers. Might as well film it yeah. now. <laughs> Snickers did one in 2017 that it, uh, apparently worked. Oh, okay. What did they do? It was uh, Adam Driver, and it was, um, oh, I don't know. It was the cool cool. Yeah, and he Tall. gave Tall. a little nod to let you know it was live, saying it was 21 to 3 Atlanta at the time. He gave the score during the commercial. So Where was he at? Uh, he was on a set, like on a soundstage, but I guess the whole premise of the ad was everything can go wrong when it's live, so they had a bunch of stuff like messing up around him on purpose. Okay. That's pretty good. I like that. Good mm-hmm. idea. Snickers. I'm excited for... Hey, shout out. Congrats to FanDuel on doing yeah. this. Yeah. This is yeah. an opportunity for our friends uh, above. Zito it, just told me, basically, you know, all this stuff's been happening with uh, UFOs, stuff like that. They're going to take over the feed. They're going to broadcast to You think FanDuel's going to have the first alien feed? No, no. That the would aliens, be massive. That would be big news. Maybe the it. greatest commercial yeah. in history. Yeah. The, the aliens, aliens are stealing it to book. get a message out to 140, 50 million people. Hi, AQ, you know limited about this whole world? How fantastic is it that we're potentially going to have a lot of live commercials going forward at the Super Bowl? I love that. I, I do, too. Mm-hmm. I love it. I know nothing about this, but I'm pumped for it. Pumped we, for it. We, I don't know how much they are. If, if we could just do live commercials, we will certainly be purchasing one within the next year. Have to. Mm-hmm. One million percent. What like would you do? I think we're just staring at the camera for 30 seconds. Yeah. Is it working? <laughs> we live? Hello? <laughs> yeah. Throwing a football around and go, boom, 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 boom. From Jabba. I was not asked to help in this particular kick at Destiny. Uh, you know, I did see the stat yesterday. Me and Vinny went 44 straight alongside Overton. That's pretty good. I'm a pretty good caddy for kickers. I'm a pretty good. I'm a pretty good caddy out mm-hmm. there. Gronk, you need any insight? Little head, any little head game stuff? Not that Vinny's not the perfect guy, but that mm-hmm. is a machine you're talking yeah. to. Yeah, yeah, one of one. Overton's average has gone down in the last month. Oh, what are you talking about? What's your problem? That's on my herd, dude. Oh. 
That was extra points, too. That doesn't count towards the field goal. <laughs> yeah. Snaps are all good. I did think about Overton, though, whenever they were missing, like, two, three straight extra points. Overton's doing a lot of – is it uh, – I do know okay. it? Oh, shit. There's a lot of – is there – in anger, Brian Anger, the holder's like, I think everything's – I think everything – I honestly think it's just – just this guy. I think it's just because Overton is a perfectionist, obviously. He's going to, as all long snappers are, because you have to be. So once that guy misses three in a row, I think there's a chance Overton's like, what the fuck am I doing? Am I doing what do I need to do? <laughs> what are we doing here, dude? You know? Yeah. I'm, I, they had to be so excited when they saw one go through. Oh, yeah. The relief, not only from Cowboys fans, just that operation there. Because they're there all week with them. Yeah. Every single rep with him. So every kick he takes last week in practice, everybody's looking at. They're also looking at the op the entire time. So Overton and Anger, like, hey, when our guy's struggling, we have to be even better, right? So that even heightens the fucking – the asshole on Overton had to be – Puckered. So tight. Oh, Puckered. This guy can't fucking hit a field goal to begin with. If I accidentally send laces to this guy – it no is chance. Over. This guy's career is over. Mm -hmm. I couldn't even shout out to them for getting through that. Honestly. Hey, was I seeing that right? That first one that got blocked was it was going to be twenty yards to the left. Oh right? yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was way. Left. Yeah, I put a video out talking about it, and then there was somebody that responded to me. Okay, just as somebody who is the best people. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm a pretty good person to talk to whenever it comes to like uh, kicking, punting, kicking off. Like pretty much Decent all amount of experience. Pretty much, I've done sure. them all. Pretty good. Uh, field goal kicking was probably my least talented strategy, but I was with Ev Adam Vinatieri every single day for like eight years so, during his hottest run. So it's like I'm kind of in there. Some guys say, we don't know if that ball is not coming back in, though, or whatever. It's like, well, I've kicked that ball. That Meyer kicked. That ball is not, not coming That ball is not coming back. Way less. That ball is gone. I mean, that thing is probably his worst ball. I don't love that they do the finger tap as the uh, – yeah, that's a perfect operation. Yeah, that oh. fucker is gone. Came yeah. out sideways. You see that little uh, Cowboys towel down there? That thing's way left of that. I mean, we're missing the net. That's game ball, K-ball, gone, just like they had happened in the last week where they missed the net, K-ball, gone. Yeah, that ball is – that thing's going left. Probably that Cowboys flag. It's hitting that flag. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Right, the blue one right next to the white flag. It's actually a shame it got blocked. Snap and hold good? Yeah, look like good up. He doesn't lean the ball much, but anger might not have leaned le because – this ball is pretty much straight up and down if you look at it. Pause. Keep going. Lace is perfect. Keep going. Pause. That ball is pretty straight up and down. Vinatieri would want that thing tilted down towards Anger's right knee a little bit, but he literally just missed, what, three out of five mm -hmm. extra points to the right. So the more you lean, the more the ball will go right. So you keep that thing straight up and down a little bit. He might have been doing some ball fuckery. I'm not 100% sure. Nonetheless, this is just terrible ball contact. That's a bad kick. What's the finger tap you were saying? Yeah, so to snap the ball, they're doing a finger tap right there. Boom. Bang, that's the snap. Boom. Huh. Yeah, so like a good edge rush will be able to see that. We never did that strictly because, like, I don't want to move the spot on Vinny. So, like, I don't, I don't want him seeing anything moving. As soon as I lift my hand is when Vinny's going. But, yeah, that little finger there is probably their snap thing. Could be a double. Could you have a double tap? Oh, probably, yeah. right? Oh, yeah, yeah, they got, they got Three all that taps, stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah the same the thing. thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that Man. ball's nowhere near nope. the uprights. Nope. He's going to have a good offseason, though, I assume. I assume Maher is going to – He had a good year. Probably work on some stuff. It's really just these last two games. Yeah, he'll. I'll be intrigued to see what he does. He was a great kicker all year. I also yeah. enjoy the fact he has that one strap off, so he seems to be a swagger guy. Mm -hmm. So hopefully he'll be able to dive back in. But that was a tough watch. I was uncomfortable for yeah. him, yeah. The yeah. first one, That was too. his worst but then kick. But then he got two in a row in, right? Right down. Yeah. And uh, Jack Collinsworth – Whenever I posted the, it feels like it's going to be a long night. Jack Collinsworth goes like, "What would you ask him as a holder?" Jack Collinsworth, by the way, takes a lot of heat. He mm -hmm. does. Not Jack's fault. No. That Jack has gotten opportunities because he's literally met every single executive at NBC his entire life. Not Jack's fault. Is Jack the greatest person on television? I don't think so. But will Jack potentially be great? I think so. For like, sure. I, I think Jack has got the voice. a good aura about him. Everything like that. He gets killed because nepotism happens. It's not his fault. That we got to remember that. He put in the comments. What would you say to him? I would literally. I think the right thing to say is like, "Hey, the worst possible outcome, okay, in our profession has already happened, okay. So whatever you're scared of, whatever you're telling yourself is going to happen, already happened." Let's just kick the fuck out of this one. Like, literally, let's just, let's just kick this thing as hard as we fucking can. And let's just see what you miss another one. 
Who cares? Mm -hmm. You've already missed five. Let's just fucking swing. But those are the types of conversations that are happening between holder and kicker, you know? Like me and Vinny's convos before kicks, awesome. He talked about it a little bit yesterday about how, like, I, it's tough for me to take a lot of things serious. So it is. But I think we were a good mix because of, like, how – he was like one of the most cerebral, calculated, yeah. locked in guys of all time. Mm -hmm. And then he got me out there who's just like fucking, hey, what are we doing? Fat guy right there. That's who we're aiming at, right? Not giving up the upright. Yup. Boom. All right, old fuck. Let's go. You know, like that whole thing. And it's a nice little balance. You're like a caddy for the golfer. I'm happy that Overton, Anger, and Maher were able to have a couple makes going into the offseason because everybody would be uncomfortable forever. I don't know if he has it fixed. I hope oh, he does. Yeah. yeah. You won't find out till the first game next year. Mm -hmm. Preseason game even. Won't even. You know? He'll find out where his mentals are as soon as it actually matters again. And at that point, he'll either get through or he'll have to go back to the beginning. We'll pull for him. Let's talk about some big news out of New England. Hell yeah. Hey, Billy O'Brien, old Billy Teapot, old tea kettle Bill O'Brien from the last dance of Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. What was it called? The man in the arena. Man in the arena. <laughs> Allegedly, Tom Brady and Billy O'Brien love getting after it. Oh, yeah. Tom Brady knew that Bill O'Brien was like a teapot. He's going to start boiling, and his whole face is going to get very Irish red, and then he was going to get upset, and they were going to yell at each other. That was actually something that took place on a regular basis up there in New England, and they were able to bring out the best in each other. Mac Jones, he left to go to the NFL. Bill O'Brien was brought in to be the offense coordinator at Alabama. Mac Jones stuck around for a couple weeks to mm -hmm. teach Bill O'Brien the offense that they just ran so efficiently and so effectively whenever he was the quarterback at Alabama. So although they have not done a season together, Together. They do know each other, and allegedly the respect is high amongst Billy O and Mac Jones. You have an offense coordinator now. He's been there. He's had success. He's called plays before. What? Boston Connor, you woke up with a big raging wood because of this news. Oh, think? yeah, absolutely. I think all of New England really did. Any Patriots fan out there that probably made their week, especially after what happened yesterday. You know, you're already having a good week. Boom. You wake up this morning, all of a sudden – Patriots have an offensive coordinator. It's not an offensive assistant. It's not Yeah, some... it kind of came out of nowhere. There was like rumblings and then bang, he's hired. Yeah, it, it wasn't a bullshit, you know, like title. This is the OC, and this is the first time since I think 2018 where we'll have an actual OC and an actual DC with Gerard Mayo. Gerard Mayo also helped out, you know, with the hiring process, which is huge. But I think the biggest thing, and you mentioned it, how – Bill O'Brien and Brady would kind of yell at each other. Aside from Mac Jones's play, I think a lot of people had problems with him, like the body language of him whining on the sideline, Please. going like this. Oh, yeah. fucking do it then, Bill. Yeah. Oh, 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 fuck you, Tom. It's unbelievable. Fuck you. Hand the ball off, Tom. Why don't you throw the ball somewhere near the fucking wide receiver and we won't have a problem. Great game plan. You can't do shit. Oh, handsome Tom. Bill O'Brien, hold me back. Yeah. <laughs> hold me back. Had this happen in Houston, allegedly on a practice field, and JJ and everybody was like, all right, Bill. All right, mm -hmm. It's time. Fucking let him go. <laughs> but that is what, that's kind of what Bill is known for. It's what you need. It's what Mac Jones needs more than anything, it feels like, for someone to be like, hey, shut the fuck up. The play is fine. Hit the guy that's open and don't make a terrible decision. Like, that is really all that the Patriots fans want out of an OC and out of Mac Jones really because that was the biggest difference between year one where everyone loved him and year two where he was just trying to do too much. What's this mean for the wide receiver market you think, Tone? Fucking uh, well, we're not good for maybe D-Hop but... Yeah, uh, uh, Hopkins uh, yeah. is not going to I want to get, your, I want to get your opinion. How do you think Billy O walks in the building? I think he goes up to Patricia and Judge and goes what the fuck were you two doing? Or he goes like, hey, boys, boys step aside. I fucking got this, okay? No, I think he walks in there and goes, boys, it was difficult when we weren't here, huh? Uh-huh. Jeez. You should, you, <laughs> JJ Watt fought me. Yeah. yeah. And Matt Patricia's like, you should, my ATV ran out of gas. Oh, it's more of a like And a, they pushed me off the thing. <laughs> yeah. And Joe Judge is like, do you see what the Giants did immediately after I left? Uh, like, diving in mud. Boys. Same roster, went to the playoffs. <laughs> boys, thank God we're back, huh? <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Bill. There's, I mean, maybe mocking their offensive scheme, but yeah, Billy O knows Matt Patricia down. is the greatest defense coordinator, and he knows Joe Judge is the greatest special teams coordinator. And he's like, hey, you guys were being asked to do something you're not mm -hmm. supposed to do. Daddy's home. Mm -hmm. I'll call yeah. the plays. Go back. Might get a little upset. Hey, you go back to the defense side, Joe. You're going back to special teams. We, you guys had to do a little dick off year where Bill Belichick was like, I'm still – I'm Bill Belichick. Yeah. It's kind of what happened yeah. last year. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. I'm Bill Belichick. Everybody's telling him he's wrong. Now, nah, fuck you. I'm not wrong. You're wrong. I'm not wrong. You're wrong. I might be wrong. Fuck. <laughs> fuck. Matt, what did you want to do for our team? Defense. Okay. I'll put you back in. Joe, what about you? What do you think you could help our team out? 
special teams. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. All right. That's what we'll do next year. <laughs> Nobody else was saying that. That's just my idea. Mm -hmm. That really is what it was all year, right? Yeah. That's what it felt like. Bill, well, Bill Belichick staring down everybody saying, fuck you, I'm smarter than you. 100%. That feels like what Love that he still got that. Oh, oh yes. yes. Yeah. You know? And Love that, that he still got it. That's what the Robert Kraft, you know, meeting at the end of the year kind of felt like is him telling Bill, like, hey, we're not doing this shit again. But the biggest thing is how obvious this decision was. I feel like from the outside and for Patriots fans, we need an OC. Bill O'Brien's leaving Bama. He's already been with Belichick. He's going to come back. But they never make the obvious hire. So him actually going and getting Bill O'Brien uh -oh. is awesome. Oh. Getting predictable. So now all of a sudden we know exactly what Bill Belichick's yep. going to do. That's sometimes, what sometimes. What's that all about? Not good. Isn't the worst thing, especially when it comes to what you just did. Yeah, there's like 25 teams that are predictable. Well, he you was, know what I mean? he was pretty yeah. unpredictable last year, and we went eight and nine. So maybe we just go back to what has been working. And also, Matt Patricia allegedly, now that his Lions contract is up and there's a chance he might have to be paid. Now, Patricia might not be in New England then, then, this next year. Oh, so really? That, yeah, that, those are the rumblings. Is that maybe he's going to go to DC somewhere? Yeah, maybe he'll go somewhere else to be a DC. Maybe he'll go like somewhere with else. McDaniel's. Oh, sure, can, I mean that final decision. Yeah, he was the last person asked before uh, signing Mac Jones yeah. or drafting Mac Jones. Yeah. Kraft, you like it? Yeah. Bill, I haven't watched film on any of these guys. Very Kraft good. says. Then he goes to his kid, Stevie. Steve's like, yep. <laughs> Sticking his tongue out. Yep. And then he goes, Matt, Matthew, Patricia, how do you feel about it? Yeah. Hammered his chicken fries from BK. Took his Ticonderoga, mm -hmm. flipped it. I like it. Fuck Send it, it in. Draft it. Grab then we, him. Then we got Mac walking there, mm -hmm. yeah. doing the Mac walk. That's what happened. Yeah. That was chain of events. Matt, Patricia goes from in control of who's getting drafted for the Patriots mm -hmm. to now he's being – Going to another team. Out of yeah. time. Jesus Christ, fall from grace with the Patriots. What, what, you guys don't want Matt Patricia around? You guys put him in a terrible Come spot. Well, I mean, who wants Matt Patricia around? Are you Whoa! So what team, what, is what your team? Problem? Okay, do, you, do the Steelers, do the Packers, do the Colts? Who yes, in here wants Matt Patricia? Matt Patricia? I would take Matt Patricia. I would take Matt Patricia. Yes, Patricia. Go ahead. Then go take him. Why, then why don't you? Guy Grab him. Guy. I'm not in charge. I want a Super Bowl for you. Did I'm, he? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember who told... Malcolm Butler to go in the game, but that was Brian Flores who said Malcolm go. This All wasn't right. that so wasn't Matt Patricia. But I, I, go ahead and run with the Patricia storyline. I love this for you guys. Oh. <laughs> when you guys get him, when, oh, when you guys get him, I hope All you right. love him. Let's talk about another New England Patriot that has brought you a happiness, and now that he's no longer there, you don't give a fuck about it because you assholes have no respect for anything. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Brady told Jim Gray. If I knew what I wanted to fucking do, I would have already done it. Here's from the Let's Go podcast, which has been happening for two years. Yep. Uh, this is the most notable and recent clip from it. Jim Gray asking the questions. This one was brought to you by... Uh, well, right after he said, geez, Tom, you sound angry. Maybe you want a Morton Steak for <laughs> dinner tomorrow. Okay, so this question came from Morton Steakhouse, which they have such good beef. Oh, my God. Oh my so God. juicy, tender. S such Delicious. good meat. Yeah. Here's from the Let's Go podcast presented by SiriusXM just yesterday. Tom, you're leaving everybody guessing. Uh, you said you'll take your time. Do you have any type of a timetable as to what you might want to do as not time. Uh, regarding your football career? Jim, if I knew what I was going to fucking do, I'd have already fucking done it. Okay? I'm taking it a day at a time. Love that. Jim had to ask him. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Jim had to ask the question, and that one particularly because it yep. was brought to you by Morton Steakhouse. Right. But I like the fact that Tom's a little fiery. AQ, you know Tom a lot better than us. His hands have been up under your thing. Mm -hmm. Two towels underneath. Yep. You've played for a team. You've watched them. You won a Super Bowl there right. alongside old Tom Brady in Tampa Bay. Is that what he's normally like? Because that was awesome. That was the Tom Brady that I would like to listen to every single day. Mm -hmm. If that was what the Let's Go podcast was. Now, I don't like that they bleeped them. Okay? Yeah, come We're on. adults. Serious come on. XM. We're adults. What it's serious hell? XM. Morton Steakhouse He's serving meat to adults, okay? right? It's not like that whole thing. So I don't love it that I didn't get to hear him say it. It's almost like they feel like they got to look out for Tom. But Vrabel in the last dance for Tom Brady called what the man, man in the, the arena. arena. Oh, excuse me. Vrabel said, your little perfect pretty boy quarterback's not that perfect, okay? He said something along those lines like, what Tom is actually like versus what you all think vastly different is what Vrabel was alluding to. Now we know Vrabel is like, 
top two not two shit talker mm -hmm. in like the history of anybody he's been around. Is that what Tom's normally like? And what do you think? What do you think Tom is going through right now, AQ? He's definitely like that. He's very relatable. I mean, in the locker room, he's one of the guys. So he's he's one an of alien. Guys. All of us think he's an alien. I know, but he's not. He's so relatable on the field, off the field, in the locker room. Like he talks shit. He loves to fucking joke around. He loves accountability more than anybody in the world. So, like, that's what you see. You see the fiery shit whenever everybody fucks up. I mean, I, there was one game where it was on one dipshit, forgot the fucking snap count, dipshit being me. Hey, you stop the fucking – you know what I mean? Like, he is fiery. Like, if you're not doing exactly what, the, what you're supposed to do, he's on you, he's fiery. So, like, he's exactly what you want as a quarterback. To allude to what you were saying, and this goes back to Aaron too, what is – I guess what's the question? Like, what is the sticking point that says, yep, that's it? What – Tells me I want to come back. I don't know. I think it's like a feel. Is it a bunch of things? Is it one thing? Like, four, th whatever, three weeks from now, we're going to sit there and be like, yep, I still want to play football. Like, so, if you want to play football, you want to play football. So I'm a big universe guy strictly because I haven't figured out what religion I believe in, and at some point mm -hmm. in my life, I will do. Sure. So I just say the universe. Now, when I'm speaking to people of different religion, whenever they're talking about their God, I just enter universe in there and then at some point hopefully i'll be able to figure out which one i believe in and everything like that because i enjoy learning about religions i enjoy listening to people and their beliefs i find it very fascinating so i think we make a lot of jokes about religion but i also think that we probably know more about more religions than most shows strictly because i enjoy learning about it these things have caused wars these things have caused people to do things that you would never expect like i'm very fascinated by religion so i always just say like the universe i think what Tom and Aaron would say is their God, their un what the universe will tell them, right? Like you hear, um, I follow a guy who's become pretty religious. Oh, who's that? He, and uh, whenever he says something, he always says like, God put this on my heart to say. And I'm like, oh, like I have feelings to say something. Some people view that as like God saying that they should say something. I think that is what it is. I honestly believe it's like a universe. They, they feel as if whatever is going to show them or make them feel a certain way and it's going to be like, okay, I'm doing it. Because Aaron said it and I assume Tom's the same way. If I'm going to do it, what it calls, what it calls for is a lot. Mm -hmm. So once I get that feeling, I kind of have to flip a switch and I'm all the way in or I'm all the way out, one or the other. So I feel like it's a universe like telling them almost, if that makes sense. Like they get like a feeling, like a vibe almost. Like, oh, I'm supposed to be doing this. I'm not supposed to be doing this. And how does that come? I don't know. Do you whale watch? That's what Aaron's yeah, doing. Yeah. Do you try to go work out and see how the body feels? And that tells you, do you ha go hang out with some boys, like teammates, have a couple beers and drinks what? and share stories? Like, do you talk to people that are retired? I don't know. I just think they're looking for that type of, like fucking guidance almost from within their that's like, yeah, let's keep doing this, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think they're looking, I mean, in my opinion, I think they look for what, what you put together a Venn diagram, right? You got your Ooh. pros and your cons, right? Like, here, here's this. What you a big Venn diagram guy? Yeah, you love lists, huh? I, I don't know. I mean, at the end of the day, but that's my point, is what's the tipping point? Like, you know, I just don't want to fucking lift on Mondays anymore in season. That's it, I'm done. <laughs> You know, I think, like I, that's what I'm saying. Is it something what, as petty what, as that? Yeah, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm wondering. Like, what's the tipping? I don't point? think so. I don't think it's something that small. No, I, I you know that, what I'm going with. No, stuff. no, but that's a real thing though. Like, are they putting that in there? Like, yeah. my Tuesdays I could spend doing this instead of doing this. Wednesdays I could do this instead of doing this. Is it an overall thing or is it just like a gut feeling? You know, that's a that's a. We'll ask Aaron, I guess. I think that's a good question. Why don't you ask? Yeah, AQ, man. Well, you could ask yeah. this question. Oh, I got a good question for him. Got what is it? Question. Did you just say it? No, no. That's a good question, though, what you just said. I'll let you say that one. And right. I got something. I got something. He'll probably get pissed off. Oh, so you got okay. two questions. Wow. wow. Got question through me. Double I'm and dime. I'm ready. Are you afraid? You sound afraid. Yeah, I'm you ready. sound pretty scared. I am ready afraid. this week, boys. Do you want to prep your question I can't right wait. Now? I can't wait to preface it by saying, Aaron, it's so good to talk to you again. Because you did a couple months ago. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you yeah. See what I, you see what I did there? Yeah. You just a, a hot start. Do you want to test what you're going to ask him right no, now? No, no. Yes. Pat, you should probably act as Aaron and then maybe see. Thank you. So I don't think I could. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I could. I haven't read any of these books. Yeah. I read all these books. Maybe I could actually. Sure. Okay. I could be in the same headspace as him. But are you real? Is it a good question? You think football related or life related? Football related and life related, I guess. A little bit oh, of both. Football. football is life, isn't Boom. it? Huh? Yes. Way to go, AQ. Oh, yeah. Man, that's a good shirt. Football ball yeah. is life. Well, and football is life, Ted Lasso. Yeah, yeah. trademark it for sure. But that I think it's a gut feeling thing. Yeah. I don't think it's a full Venn diagram. Yeah. I don't think so. I think it's just a full on. 
How's the inside? How's the soul feel? Yeah, and like the stuff AQ was talking about, like, do I want to lift on Mondays? Do I want to, you know, do something else on Tuesdays? It feels like both those guys are at the level where if they do go to a different team, they can probably say, hey, on Mondays I'm probably just going to be hanging out or on Tuesdays, you know, I need my G day or whatever it's called. But also a lot of it has to do with the current team that they're on, right? Like you see Tampa making all these changes. Obviously Green Bay is kind of figuring out their deal with Jordan Love. Maybe Aaron doesn't want to start over, and if they did, the Green Bay Packers decide they want to go with Jordan Love, that he just calls it. You know, like they're that's a very realistic. Yeah, he situation. might just want to retire. But yeah, I, I think that's a gut. I think that's an inside. I think that's what that is. At peace with it. Could you imagine though, if it is a beautiful mind, and he's got that big glass window over there in Malibu, <laughs> yeah. and he's got all the pros and cons, cons in red, pros in green, and he's just looking at this window of everything. I mean, maybe he is that, and Tom would be. I think Tom would be – he takes notes, right, in every single – Oh, yeah. No stone unturned on figuring out the right decision because it is my life, remember. That's, they could say that. Obviously, they're in a different place than most, right? But I do think most, it's, it's, it's pretty simple. How do you feel about what Tom said to Jim Gray there, though? But that's the question, right? Like, like one day it's just going to hit it. Like, that's what I, I – again, they're, I can't even put my mind in that space because they're in a completely different space than – I was as a player and most are as a player. Well, there's like, another side to that too, right? Because what happened with Tom last offseason where he made the decision too early, allegedly, however that went, but then obviously decided, hey, I don't feel this way anymore. I'm going to come back. And, yeah, and with his relationship with his wife, that we it. have to talk about yeah, exactly. Alex's wife because it's been made so public. I assume that was kind of a, you know, kind of a massive part. Hey, we're probably done, aren't we? We're probably done. And then, you know, other people probably tell him, hey, if you're going to be done, we got to know now. I feel like now there is at least one proponent out of that situation forcing him into a decision. It's almost like he's like, hey, Jim, what are you, my fucking ex-wife, dude? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, right. I, will, yeah. Yeah. I will fucking take my time for the first time in my life. How about that? I, I, enjoy, I just enjoyed hearing Tom be a human there yeah. because everybody has been a teammate of his is like, hey, you would enjoy Tom. You'd enjoy Tom. I'm like, the guy selling that chocolate on – Social media videos? I don't. I don't think so. Not the, sure. the guy that is just like they're like he's going to be a good commentator. This guy knows the game. He's one of the guys. He mm -hmm. hangs out. He knows a lot of things. He's going to be a great commentator. I'm like, every time I've heard him talk, it's like robot Tom Brady's talking up there because he's been conditioned, I think, to yeah. do that. Don't give anything away. Don't look weak. Don't do anything. Just be professional. Be classy. Move on. He's been the prototype publicly for a long, long time. Now, granted, there's always the you know, the ball inflation sure. levels and yeah. everything like that that's talked about him. But anytime he's ever done a press conference, anytime he's ever spoke, it's always been like the most professional fucking human of all time. And then they say behind the scenes, like, this guy is one of the guys. I'm like, okay. And I think we got a glimpse of it. Mm -hmm. right but there. you saw some moments this year. His press conferences this year, he had some good moments. Yeah. yeah. There was, was a couple where they awesome. Yeah. Like, there, yeah, there was that one. There was another one where somebody asked a question. I think it was uh, that one. What? He yeah. said, uh, 40 years old. I'm 45 years old. I'm going through some shit. Yeah. Well, there's that, that one. And then, then they the talked about changing the game plan leading up to the, uh, like, like he was putting in stuff that the coaches weren't privy to. There was and, that yeah. one. I, and then the one about quarterback sneaks. They were like, so and so has so many quarterback sneaks. He was like, oh, fascinating. Cool. And then just like went off to it. Like, I like seeing him just being like a dick. Yeah. Like, I enjoy I, him being I a human. Yeah, that's like being a human because every mm -hmm. day seemingly was the same day for Tom Brady for a long time. Yeah. And that's because that's what Bill Belichick was. Uh -huh. Now, Bill Belichick dressed it up vastly differently. He literally didn't dress up at all. He looked terrible yeah. mm -hmm. while saying the same thing. Tom always had whatever fit he had, whatever yeah. fashion shit he mm -hmm. was going through at the time. And then he would just say, you know, we tried really hard. We worked really hard. We, well, I got to make a better play there. This guy did this. He's always just like, boom, movie character, script out of a press conference, Tom Brady character out of a movie, move on. And then on the sideline, you see him fucking throwing the Microsoft. Bingo. You see him getting after it. You hear stories behind the scenes of him being a guy. And it's like, what is... What is Tom? What is not Tom? And I think this Jim Gray Tom and the little bit more free Tom at the press conference bodes very well for if he's going to get $375 million mm -hmm. to be calling games. Because if he can be relatable and with his knowledge and his resume, mm -hmm. he'll crush in the booth. Yeah. No offense to Tony Romo, who seemingly the world has turned on. Yeah. 
But I think everybody's big takeaway from Tony Romo is that he doesn't prepare at all for no. any of these games. Mm -mm. Doesn't really look into it, doesn't try because he's Tony Romo, he's been there, he's done that. Like, even if Tom doesn't try or prepare as hard as everybody else does, which we're not saying Tony doesn't, we do not know. This is just seemingly the narrative about Tony Romo and why people don't like him is he's just going in there. Guns, which I love. I mean, that's what we do every yeah. fucking day. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so it's a whole different whatever. But that seemingly is what people think about Tony Romo in the booth now. Tom is probably going to prepare his fucking ass off because that's Tom Brady. Yes. But even if he doesn't, he's been playing up until mm -hmm. right now. So he knows the modern game. He knows what the game was. He knows what it is. That should carry him for at least a few years if he wasn't to prepare at all for any of these games. And if he's going to be a human in there, let's go. Yeah. $375 million is going to be well worth it. I think it would be underpaid. Well, and that's what's so difficult for both these guys in terms of retirement mm -hmm. is they both definitely still believe that they can play at an MVP level. So – it comes down to, you know, like, do I want to do this anymore? It's like, well, you know you can do it. So it's like, really, I just have a hard time believing both these guys. When you're that good, it's like, hey, if you even have a little bit left in the tank, like mm -hmm. just a tiny bit, it's like I, I can't walk away knowing that. Because then what if next year, you know, you're, you're watching whatever, and it's like, Jesus Christ, I would have thrown fucking 50 touchdown passes this year. Like, I think that would eat at you forever. So it's just like addicts. Okay, so yeah. addicts are chasing the dragon, right? Mm -hmm. Chasing the high, chasing mm -hmm. whatever they had the first time that mm -hmm. they want to experience again and again and again. There is something to that with athletes that are chasing that greatness. Mm -hmm. Do you think both these guys have enough left in the tank? I think Aaron definitely does. For sure. I yeah. didn't pay attention close enough to Tom. I saw some mic'd up moments where it felt like Tampa Bay Buccaneers were a much different team this year mm -hmm. than they have been yeah. and probably the least organized, committed team Tom Brady's ever played on. For probably. sure. Now, Tom missed 11 days and missed other shit, too, so he's a part of that whole thing. But, like, do you think Tom could still give it a go, give it another run, AQ? 100%. Yeah, I mean, not even a question. I think the way that he prepares – but here's the deal. Everything has to fall in line, and everything has to be on his terms. That's the way he operates. That's the way all the great ones kind of operate. He wants it to be exactly the way he wants it to be done. He's super detail-oriented. He wants to be in control of the run game. He wants to be in control of the pass game, the protections, the whole nine yards, the screen game, everything – the meetings, he wants to control it all. And that's – then he knows exactly who to blame if it doesn't fucking work. Yeah, right? that's why he that's needs it. to go to Vegas. Yeah, because Josh that, McDaniels says that they, have, they grew up in that same system together, so there is no – like, Accountability, this is what it's supposed to be. Exactly. Now, with that being said, Chandler Jones, right, the first half of the year was not Chandler Jones? No. no. He didn't wow. do much. Or at least no production. And yeah. what – is Mc, so is McDaniel still doing what Belichick was doing? Is he still doing what he was doing in Denver? Or is McDaniel trying to change the way he operates? Who's the coordinator? Who's he's the coordinator there? Patrick Graham. Mm -hmm. He's is he, trying is to he just a Belichick be guy. Yes, he is. You're thinking Matt Patricia going over there? Well, I don't know. I mean, it's just. I thought Patrick. I, that's what I was wondering. I was wondering if it was like same scheme, same system. That definitely, was, definitely, we could go over there and yeah, change whatever Patrick the hell they want. But Brady also is there a chance that they don't hire an OC in Tampa and they're just like, hey, Tom. You can just be the OC. No, no. They'll hire, they'll, I mean, they'll hire somebody whether or not they have control. If, if, if well, he's whoa, whoa, what are you saying? If Tom's there, he's going he's gonna to want to have control. Yeah, it's Tom's show. That's it's what Tom. I mean. Like, would they just not hire How an come OC? he wasn't calling plays? I don't, I don't understand. I'm very – I don't know Tom at all. He's quote tweeted one of my tweets before mm -hmm. and saying, although we've never met personally, he appreciates whatever we said. That's literally the most interaction I've had. Know a lot of people that know him, have heard a lot of stories. I'm assuming he knows that I exist. I don't know him well enough to know why he's not fucking calling plays. Exactly. I, that, that's the, is that just not his style? I don't know. I mean, we've talked about it a bunch. Like, listen, every time they went two-minute this year or hurry up, it's money. They, they roll. Yeah. They, well, they that's roll. what I'm saying, though. And he's Tom Brady, so he should have the capability because he has the greatest resume in the history of sport to be like – I'm calling a place. Yeah. This is just what we're doing. We've also talked about this, too. Like, I mean, you've seen play sheets. I, I'll bring a play sheet in here one day. Like, it is the Rolodex of plays. I mean, it's 165 different plays, formation, all that shit. But on. Leftwich is calling plays. They're making the decisions, right? It's not like that Tom is delegated to Byron Leftwich to call the plays that Tom wants because that's, they're dropping ball. They're throwing the ball 60 sometimes. Like, Tom doesn't want to do that, right? Everybody no, says Tom no. Brady doesn't want to do yeah. that. He does not. Tom Brady doesn't want to do that. Tom Brady let that continue to happen the whole season. So mm -hmm. I, that's what I'm confused by. Do you think it's the type of thing where, like, in New England, he knew, like, okay, McDaniels or whoever the OC is, like, 
they're going to be just as prepared as I am. Like, their preparation. So, like, yeah, I'll, I'm going to have choices in terms of, like, how I want to change things. And I'm not saying anything about Leftwich, whether or not his preparation is the same. But No, no offense. Yeah, exactly. But, like, he, he wants someone who maybe he doesn't necessarily want that entire responsibility on his plate of, hey, I got to call the, I gotta call the offense, I got to call everything. But I want a guy who is just as fucking prepared as I am so then I can make changes where I, where I see fit. But I don't want the responsibility of not only do I have to play and play at a high level, but I have to fucking map out the entire offensive side. So for Tom to, like, say, like, Hey, I'm calling plays. Like, not you anymore. Like, there's going to be like a little bit of awkwardness, a little bit of animosity, maybe with some yelling. Maybe he was tired of that in his life. Maybe this year he didn't want any of that uh, arguing or. Let's go to the phones like before we get out of here. Possible. That is kind of what he said to Jim Gray. Yeah. Hey, Jim. I don't need this from you. Yeah. Shut your mouth. You see how this has gone the last couple of years? Nobody's really heard it. You know why? Because there's just no reason for you to do what you just did. Yep. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Tom, don't shoot the messenger. I got to ask you, But if Tom. you'd like to shoot the messenger, Smith & Weston is a great <laughs> <laughs> Jim, you had to ask him, Jim. Uh -huh. no choice. This is somebody that has been in a similar situation before. Mm -hmm. It's not fun. Yeah. You got to ask. Yeah, what are you going to do? It's just, yeah, it's not Part fun. Of it. But I don't ask any hard questions, I've been told. You know, it's like, yeah, well. okay. Did you see what Jim just got there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Did you see this? motherfucked on <laughs> with his first hard on, question. That was the first clip they've ever used yes, on any of these exactly. ESPN shows. Bingo. The first one yeah. I've seen from the Let's Go podcast. Jim Gray is so pissed this morning. Oh, of course, now they fucking <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Blake in Arkansas on the 5 Energy phone line. Remember... This is the first day our five energy phone lines have been back. The number is 1-833-432-3663. Also, 1-833, the number four, da -dome. Da -dome. Blake in Arkansas, five energy phone line. What's going on, pal? Woo Pig Suey. How you doing? Keep it moving, Woo Pig. Hey, Pat, what have you done this morning? Have you, are you telling us in the McAfee Mac Mafia that Aaron Rodgers is going to be in studio next year? Is that what you're doing? Well, hey, I'll Whoa. tell you what. You talked to Jim Ursay, and he said, I'll give him a desk for the Thunderdome, where John Lennon wrote, Imagine all the, the people. people. Thank you for that call, Blake. That is one of the upsides. Aaron Rodgers joins the Indianapolis Colts. Uh huh. Being a city, being a town. Yeah. Got a couple of houses. Literally, you could live in, Aaron. Yeah. yeah. Rebuild, though. Simple. What's that? True. He doesn't want to be a part of it. We're not a rebuild. Who? Are you sure? You should really think about it. What is your problem? I'm just saying. If we get Aaron Rodgers here, we're going to the Super Bowl. Yeah, well, it's what, a reload. It's a definition. We had the fifth best odds in the AFC to go to the Super Bowl when Matt Ryan signed with this team. That's right. And okay. What, the well, what about Matt? Pick? He's, he's pick still now? under contract. Fourth pick. Huh? He's, Matt's still under contract. Exactly. Are you going to pay a hundred? Matt's so good on CBS. Listen, Matt. You know it. We know it. You've done fantastic in your NFL career. Mm -hmm. You've done so good that your resume is uncompete with the bowl with a lot of people. You're so good on TV. You were born to be on television. Mm -hmm. Now's the time, Matt. Take that baton, run with it. With that being said, Aaron Rodgers is Colts quarterback <laughs> would be fantastic. I mean, Only got to pay him sixty million dollars. We paid one hundred forty million dollars for a bunch of other quarterbacks that aren't on the roster anymore. Exactly. I, that is nothing. That is four guitars that uh, Jim Mercy might have to move out of the memorabilia museum that he has over at the Colts facility. Yeah. Let's go. Greeny's got him at the Jets. The Jets. Who wants to go to the Jets? Nobody. No chance. He's playing for the Colts. Mike White is the quarterback for the Jets, and if he's not, then bring Mike White to Indianapolis. All right, let's get to a break. A.J. Hawk, who won 4-0 this past weekend on his picks against the spread, will be joining us. Excited to get his thoughts on this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday about the seemingly – Already done deal mm -hmm. that Aaron's being traded from the Packers. Now, we have not heard from Aaron that he still wants to play football. Yeah, exactly. Clearly. That is the first decision that has to be made by Aaron Rodgers. But if he does decide that, everybody's got his ass traded already. Yep. What does AJ think? What does AJ know? We yep. shall see. And More then Aaron Rodgers will join us in one hour to chit-chat about what he's been up to for the last week. We assume a lot of it revolves around watching whales fuck each other in yeah. the Pacific Ocean. Nice. That was exactly a good time. right. Right? I love that. Is that what we got from him last week? That's what we got. I've been whale watching before. Good time. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. cool. Whenever you see them come fly up out of the air, you, and I don't know whale fornicating enough if they just finished when they were doing that or they're attracting, but it is awesome seeing these massive fucking buildings. Yeah. Gosh. Which is what the whales are size of. Spectacle. Buildings jump up out of the water and then just fucking boom. Oh. 
and then fucking pfft, blow a hole. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, how do those things exist out there? Crazy. Oh, because they're boning. They're recreating right That's now. right. Yeah. Avatar wants to. That's what Aaron's been checking yeah. out. And that big dumb one that was off by itself. No spoilers. Real important to the plot, I think. Very important. I didn't see the end, but I think I got it figured out. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Nominated for Best Picture. Did it? Yeah. Hell yeah. Hey, Top baby. Jimmy. Did Top Gun? Yes. Sure did. Oh, so Cruz didn't get nominated for Best Actor. No, nah, he's a producer, though, so he got an Oscar now. There's some, um, <laughs> there's some media awards that are coming up really? that I just got a little bit of a heads up for. You talking about the Albies? The Albie uh, All-Pro team is certainly going to come out today or tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Excited to hear that. <laughs> I don't want to win any of these awards. I don't want us to win any of these awards because then we have to celebrate these awards. Well, do we? And then whenever we don't win these awards, which will be immediately after they give us these awards, they regret mm -hmm. giving us these awards. When we don't win, we have to act upset that we didn't win it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like I'm an anti-award guy. Exactly. People saying way too many nice things about us and me and everything we've done, and we're lucky to be here. But the awards thing is interesting because do you care? It's awesome being honored. But if I don't win, do I care? No. So should I care if I win? I don't know. This is the athlete, I think. This is like the, uh, the ebbs and flows here. Yeah, I've won. Like if you get, you're probably going to get. But if you just stay right there, mm -hmm. you're always there. So it's an interesting thing that we've entered here. Yeah, only trophies we want and the awards that we want are sitting right there. Right, right below your desk behind you. Boom. That's right. Hell yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Lordo. That's right. We That's why Lordo made that sound. We are in this one. Yep. Mm -hmm. Is that the only one? Love you, Lordo. Oh. Oh, you, you don't do. say. Oh, Boom. Fucking Larry O'Brien. Yeah. yeah. All right. Larry O.B. <laughs> Larry O.B. <laughs> the Bulls stopped by today. They did. No big oh, deal. Yeah. No Lombardi? Fucking Michael Jordan in here. No, we don't want because I might go back and play when I'm 40. Yeah. So I want to jinx it. Yeah. We need to get the, uh, the soccer Lombardi, though. I'll say this. Hell yeah. Plum Little League football won the fucking Super Bowl. We fucking yeah. did it! Donated, uh, I forget how much, to the, I think $250,000 to them. What they do, got new uniforms, won the Super Bowl. What's up? No big deal. Look Roll good, Mustangs good. here, baby. Roll Hell Mustang. yeah. Goddamn right. What? Roll Stangs. Congrats to them. I have no idea how old they are. Congrats to them. Champions. That's a good sign for the future. Bunch of dogs on that team. Mm -hmm. And the cheerleaders, they won the award too. Best right. in the division. Boom. All right. All right. AJ Hawks on the other side. Be a friend, tell a friend. Take five. But what is it about Tom that last night, everybody on earth watching was like, ah, he's going to fucking score here. This game's over for the Saints. Sorry about it. Even though there's little to no time left. He's the clutchest performer of all time. I mean, I think that's neither here nor there. He prepares so well throughout the more week. More clutch than Adam Vinatieri? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think so. I think you have to put him there, he's right? He's had so many more moments. So like, many yeah, more cool. moments, right? Like, if any, and so answered every time. Yeah, he's well, had, well not every so, time. I yeah. guess that, that one time. Yeah. And against the Eagles uh, in the Super Bowl. That's so hard because Vinny's answered every time. Vinatieri's clutchness comes from his competitive juices. Like, Vinatieri is so competitive. So, so, so competitive. He does not want to lose. And I, I don't think people fully comprehend, like, the people up there, the Jordans, you already yeah. saw his whole last uh -huh. dance. Yeah. The Peyton Mannings, the uh, Wayne Gretzky's, Serena Williams's. Kobe. Kobe, yeah. yes. Yeah. The Mamba mentality. It's right. described as the Mamba mentality. What that is is just being more competitive than fucking everybody else. I think it all revolves around the competitive juices. Is that what you think it is with Tom or no? I think it's a little bit of that, but also same thing, going back to Kobe, right? Like whenever you, if you guys saw that Redeem team or whatever on Netflix sure. and he, they're all going out and having a good time at the club or whatever and he's shooting shots at like 6 a.m. and they pass him coming in the night before. That is Tom. That is Tom. Like he is, they are so prepared. They care so much. They want to work on every little detail that when it comes to the game, when it comes to those situations, they have no excuse because execute execution is the only thing that matters. They have all the answers to the test. Now it's time for SmackDown Rumble Championship Weekend. We just had another Super Bowl! Oh yeah. What a fucking three day run. I'm lucky to live this life and I'm thankful that you all watch.
you might get knocked out. This is the to work with us, Hey, my dude. Squeeze the bottle. Yeah. That's what I was trying to do. I have a good job. I'm giddy. I am so pumped. It's like the the night before the first day of school when you were a kid. Hey, happy birthday! Happy birthday! All right, our sources haven't confirmed whether or not Drew McIntyre can be standing up, but... Come on, Cole! Come on, Cole! Feel it, Cole! You better move, you might get knocked out. Knocked out. You better move, you might get knocked out. That is one of the worst of all time. The worst ports of all time. And a baby foxy! Just so everybody knows. And this is good, bro. And a boost! Chameleon gold and magenta jacket. Big Cuban link. Obviously, good watch. Pinky chain. Gold plated Steve Madden. When I woke up this morning in beautiful St. Louis, the air smelled better. Food tasted better. Tonight, dream. Thanks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God damn it! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Fuck, fuck, and cut. Shut the fuck up! Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to our humble abode. Da -da. On this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, January 24th, 2023, hour two starts now. Football it is certainly heating up, isn't it? Oh, Hell yeah. 45 million people watched this past weekend as the Cowboys and the Niners played football against each other. 35 million people watched as the Jags and the Chiefs played football against each other. 39 million people watched as the Bills and the Bengals played against each other. And then 26 million people watched as the Philadelphia Eagles dog walked the Giants into fucking boredom mm -hmm. and oblivion mm -hmm. out of the playoffs. Start spreading the news. They're leaving today. I want to be a part of it. New Jersey, uh, Lowest rated game of the weekend. Makes of course. Sense. With the New Jersey, New York market, which is obviously because of how boring and terrible the game was. 
But also a little conversation piece. Maybe New York, New Jersey doesn't necessarily carry everything. Yeah, you know, I was trying to think Jewish. about going forward. So whenever Aaron Rodgers is thinking about his next place, let's not just assume because you're going to New York, it's good news. Nobody uh -huh. watches the games. There's an there. afternoon game. Two of them that fucking just blew their numbers out of the water. Joining us now, best friend of Aaron Rodgers, a man who's the all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, a Super Bowl champion, a college football national champion, a Ryder Cup champion, COVID survivor, and a man who's on fire mm -hmm. when it comes to picking against the spread, A.J. Hawk. Yeah. Yeah. A.J. AQ's here, Ken Diggs is here, the Toxic Table's here. We are so excited that you are joining us because it feels as if, and I don't know if you're getting this reading in Ohio, and Ohio is obviously different, it feels as if on this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, January 24th, where Aaron will join us in about 50 minutes or so, he's getting traded. Peter King says for two first-rounders. That is now the conversation. He's out the door going and playing somewhere else. This means a lot of things. This means Aaron wants to come back and play. This means that the Packers would like to rebuild and move on with the next generation. And this means that the Colts are going to have Aaron Rodgers. Is that what I'm hearing? Is that what you're expecting? And where did this come from, AJ? It sounds like it's all coming from Peter, Peter King, correct? Is that who? Or well, Ian Shefty, I guess. Peter and Shefty, two big swinging, hey, in the NFL. Big swinging meets in the media business. For you sure. are correct there when you say that. Yeah, Schefter doubled down on it and was like, hey, probably to an AFC team if they are to trade. Now, is mm -hmm. he trying to feed Mike Greenberg, you know, to think that the right. Jets are going to be in Bumping the conversation up. or is it going to be the Titans or the Colts or literally 10 other teams that would want Aaron Rodgers' services immediately upon hearing that he's on the move? Is it $60 million? Is it $40 million? What is it? We do not know. But this morning, it feels as if it's just understood that Aaron Rodgers is coming back to play, and it's not for the Packers. So your thoughts on that? And Peter and Shefty, big swing in Peters. You try to deflect. Your actual thoughts on this, though, just being a matter of fact almost at this point, which makes no sense at all. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't really make any sense. But I guess you, you can definitely see like how they're speculating and saying this could happen. You could – you could say, yeah, right, if the Packers do not want him back there and they want to move on from him, I guess these are the options that we could have. And it makes sense that they wouldn't want to trade him in the NFC. I, I understand that. But what if he wants to come back and play for the Packers? Then what? Done deal. Run it back. No, no, no. no. He, 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 it doesn't matter because, remember, it's two-way street. He said that, which was the reason why everybody called him this fucking guy. Again. That's why a lot of Packers fans kept saying that because for the third year in a row, it's Aaron saying, like, yeah, I would, but also – the other side has got to do their part. Packers fans are like, oh, they paid you how much money? They obviously want you back. They, get them out of here. I'm sick of dealing with this guy. People on TV, obviously the Packers would want Aaron Rodgers back. Well, Aaron didn't just tell us on this show with the history that we've had with Aaron Rodgers Tuesdays where everybody hears fucking everything that is said on this particular show in the sports world. He wouldn't have just floated that out there if he didn't think there was a chance that the Packers didn't want him, you know? Like, as soon as he said, that's a two-way street, you know? That's a two-way conversation. I'm not here for a rebuild. I'm not here to do that. It's like, oh, so he must have gotten a sense in some of his couple hour-long meetings that he had with the Packers front office, which happens yearly, I guess. Obviously, over the past couple of years, it's been a little bit different because that's been a talking point two years back on how much Aaron has say and how much he's listens to and everything like that. So as soon as he said, I'm like, there has to be a reason that he has a feeling that they might want to move on. Now you got Peter King, Shefty. Who are their sources? Not Aaron, right? No, I would imagine it's not Aaron, but also another wrinkle to the whole situation. I, I saw the report where LaFleur gave the, the staff has their normal time off. Like they're off until like the second week in February now. Like they're out of the building. So it's a, you think they're all taking their time to, does LaFleur matter in this whole thing? No, right? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm sure he does. He definitely has to have a say in it. You think? Really? I don't think yeah, so. I'm sure they would. I'm sure they consult with him if they're going to make a monumental decision like that. You yeah. think? You don't think they're going to talk to the head coach? I don't know, dude. I'm not saying he, I'm not. I I'm not claiming he has a ton of power or he has no power. I I don't no clue how much they would. Like, they, they value his input, but I'm sure he's a part of it, yes. Okay, so let's just talk about if we were owners of a program. Now, remember, mm -hmm. the Packers do not have an owner. Mm -hmm. Massive part of the problem that they continue to go into because they don't have one person making decisions, which could potentially offend some people. Seemingly, you know, that has been something that has affected the Green Bay Packers over the last few years with the Aaron Rodgers situation. If we were to own a team, when we're hiring a head coach – and we got a Hall of Fame quarterback, we're probably going to say, hey, do you potentially like this guy's offense? How do you feel? Not that you need to give the okay, but he wasn't even con consulted at all, right? 
when Aaron when Lafleur was hired? I guess not. Yeah, that that was part of the problem, right? Yes. So like, just assuming that Lafleur is going to get any say in what the future is, is I think reasonable and logical. But the Packers have not acted in that fashion in the, when it comes to these types of decisions in the very recent history. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's definitely true, but he would be aware of it. There's no way it's going to happen. He's going to hear it on Twitter. I don't think the head coach finds out that way. Yeah, he's in the know, you think? You think he's in the he's, know? I would imagine if he's not, I'd be pretty pissed if I was the head coach and I didn't know the direction we were going. Well, that's why I thought it was very okay for Aaron to be fucking furious whenever they just hired yeah. a coach without yeah. him even getting a heads up. Because, no offense to Matt LaFleur, Aaron Rodgers has accomplished 10x what you have in the NFL, although you have had an incredible amount of success. And I think everybody has respect for him. I, I don't I don't ask enough. He has those great eyebrows. It's all. Yeah, and man, I see his commercials yep. and everything like Pumps that. Crowd up. But I, I, I'm not necessarily sold that he has any fucking say in who we're going with going forward, which is wild. I don't think it's like that in every building. I'm just talking about Packers specific, if that makes sense. Yeah, and I don't – it's different. So when I was in Green Bay, Ted Thompson was the GM. And I, I don't know, like, all the details, but I know largely, like, Ted did. The, Ted controlled the roster. He controlled who was there, who we cut, who we brought in, and then Big Mike and the squad coached the team. And they didn't really mess with each other too much. Like that's how I think it was set up for a while. Now I'm sure Mike had had say in it, and he was involved in everything. But I know he wasn't like the he wasn't expected to be the ringleader to put the roster together. Hey, Big Mike might be might be back on move, and I, I'd like to let Big Mike know. You can be offense coordinator for Aaron Rodgers yet again, mm -hmm. right here. Boom. Hey, Indianapolis, <laughs> Indiana. Hey, one, I, one of my kids asked that yesterday. What, could, could Uncle Aaron go to Indy? You could go to the Colts. It's like, I don't, I don't see why not. Maybe. Wow. Tell them Uncle Pat is thinking pretty heavily that Uncle Aaron's coming over to Indy. And you know what that means? Maybe Dad and Mom can move to Indy as well. Yeah. Make everybody's life easier. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's going to happen, but you know. Uh, <laughs> come never on. Say never. Aaron said, I never say never. I, I never say never. We can get General Bob over here. Oh, what? Yeah. We can find a, a neighborhood. in the side of the side of the igloo or that big old open field. We could build a little, little tiny house there. Okay, so I'm thinking about rolling that actually, putting some uprights there and just like kicking. Put a field turf. Put a full field turf field in. Play seven on seven That's or super 50 that. yards. Seven That's knees. Knees. <laughs> Listen, my you're not wearing knees. cleats on there. Need you don't wear grass. cleats, you're all right. No, but I'm thinking I'm 35. After talking to Vinny yesterday, <laughs> Vinny was like 43 kicking in the NFL. Yeah. You know, I'm like, I could legitimately probably have a full career here. You know, we go for another five. That's a long time yeah. in this. I'm 40. If I just keep it, you know, around, they got young guys that can do the kicking off and the punting, mm -hmm. which takes a lot of things. <laughs> I mean, there's – why not keep it a lot? Like, when everybody was tweeting me – now, RG3 was doing – he was not the first person to do it. A lot of other people were tweeting me, like, why don't you go kick for the Cowboys? It's like, I've never kicked in the NFL. Okay, so that is <laughs> – that would be quite an egregious <laughs> thing for me to do, just coming out of a five-year five -year retirement, you know, nominated for Hall of Fame, <clears throat> <laughs> running out of players' insurance from the NFL, okay, never kicked in the NFL, either only in practices, but everybody's seen me in practice pretty good. That would have to be who the coaches would be for whatever team is at, is the people that have seen me kick in practice. Why not keep it? You know what I mean? Yeah. Why, not? Why not for like a week 18, week 19? You know what I mean? It would be obviously hell to deal with with our deals with FanDuel mm -hmm. and with the NFL <laughs> and the Colts. It would be hell to deal mm -hmm. with, mm -hmm. but should keep that alive. Why not? Why not? Especially because it doesn't die. It's not going to die. You're not going to forget how to kick. I think so. And I'm, I'm, I'm in better shape now than I was, which is, once again, I apologize to me for not taking advantage <laughs> of all the opportunities I had when I was younger. But if it's not broke, don't fix it. Should have probably done a little bit more. Probably in the core department, in the diet department, mm. cardio department, probably should have done more. Why does any of that matter when it comes to punting and kicking? I don't think it matters. You got to be explosive, bro. Got to be, like, very explosive whenever it comes to, like, kicking a ball in the NFL. You have to be explosive. That's the difference. You can be a big, you can be a big sloppy body and still be explosive punting and kicking, though. I agree, but I don't think you're able to do it as consistent if you're not in shape. It makes sense. Like, that the years sense. I was my best was when I was in my best shape, and it fucking obviously goes... It makes sense. Hey, man, that was the end of my career. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I figured it out, end of my career, you know, like, <laughs> oh, should be in shape. But if, like, the first four years I did that, when I probably should have. But, man, you got to remember, I, I could really drink with the best of them. Yeah. And I was, yeah. you know, it was good times. I could really. Hey. 
it your was, path is your path. Your path is what it was. It is. How but, it should be. but I think that's what we're doing with that field. And we should. We should set up an NFL PA alum be unreal. seven on seven thing out there, too. <laughs> we could really turn that field into something. Now, I don't know how the neighbors would feel. We're not going to use it every single day. But that, that field is a weapon. I completely forget about it sometimes because oh, when, yeah. when I pull in, I don't really see it. <laughs> Where I park, I don't really see it. I walk in, I don't really see it. And then I took a little uh, walk around the other night. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, yeah, oh yeah. fuck, this whole thing of, is ours. It's yeah. huge. This is a full. You could bubble it. You could honestly bubble it. Oh, my God. We have an indoor practice facility. Oh, yep. yeah. What are we doing? AJ. Now, old, buddy, old buddy that showed up at the uh, city council meeting, he may have something to say yeah. about it if you want to put a giant bubble right there, but I think you should give it a shot. I object, by the way. <laughs> Have we seen him? No, he's seen no, us. No. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's been sitting on his porch. Oh, he's yeah. watching. With I wave to him every day. Gauge. I wonder how many, like, red dots I've had on my body oh, so just many. walking into this place. Bill so has. Many. Bill's had. Bill's got red dots right back on him, so don't worry. Well, Bill's been a photographer these days. Yeah. yeah. Right. Fucking good photos. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. been sniping here and outside. Billy Picks, we appreciate you. Hey, Bill. Baby Bill. Love you, Bill. Is Billy with the workout program as well, like Zito is? Yeah. Good job. Yep, day four. four. Nice. Bill's been getting after it over here, too. He's been doing full body workouts every day. Oh, yeah. Deadlifting. Every P90X? day. P90X? Uh, remember, remember that, that took over the world. AQ, did you ever do P90X? Was that uh, Tybo? Oh. P90X, Billy they had Blanks. a guy Billy doing Blanks. leg day. He had one leg only. What's that? What? P90X, uh, with the leg day workout. There's a guy doing it. He only has one leg. Mm -hmm. and so he, what's your excuse? He makes you feel bad the whole time. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a good motivator. Making people feel bad. Guilt tripping has been something that people have done since the beginning of time oh, yeah. to make yeah. things happen. Not saying that is, but that would be quite motivating. No, it was. It was yeah, guilt tripping that, all the way. That would be that would be quite motivating. Let's go over some other news stories. Aaron's getting traded. We know that. Yeah, understandable. Greeny is very excited for the possibility of New York. He said he was going to call me today. He asked Aaron if he would want to go to New York. Yeah, he give he you did. a call. He did not call me. Maybe he'll call me afterwards and ask me why I didn't call. Uh, Maybe he'll call the phone line. One eight three three four Doug Dome. Have you heard about this, AJ? Five energy phone lines sweet. back. It's back, man. It's been a long time, hasn't it? Yeah. Let's go to Isaac in Texas. Isaac, what's going on, pal? On the five energy phone line. Yo, yo, Matt. Can you hear me? Yep, yep. Pat, Pat, and AJ. All right, my, I'm at work. Hey, no worries. Oh, what? No, no, my fault. Where do you work? Hey, oh. Hey, now I just want to congratulate y'all for the big blow up for the sponsorship. Hell I ain't yeah. gonna lie, y'all doing y'all thing. Keep it up, y'all really, y'all really hell. I ain't gonna lie, but I just want to. All this Aaron, Aaron Rodgers speculation. I want to get out the air. Aaron Rodgers going to the Jets and he's gonna win the Super Bowl and he gonna go out just like Peyton Manning went out. He gonna make that franchise something. Why? Okay, huh. a lot of people feel that way. We had a call from Bobby in Jersey this morning. Mm -hmm. He said. Um, uh, it's either Aaron or Lamar at the Jets next year. Rappaport reported yesterday Aaron and Zach Wilson have a relationship. Yeah. Oh, huh? Be the backup? Oh, man. Boy, You think? I have no, I couldn't hear the caller at all, so I don't know what he said, but yeah, that would be cool. I feel like that's something we're going to have to yep. fix in the back there. Aaron uh, and Zach Wilson go hunting together. Yeah, MILF hunting. Oh. Boom. Gotcha, Tony. Not planned. <laughs> Cougars. Yeah. Should have let AJ play context clues there, I think. Yeah. On the phone call? Yeah. Still can. Yeah, AQ couldn't hear the first call. Had to turn his ears on for the phone. You couldn't hear that call. Have to turn your ears on for that phone. Nick's got to figure it out back there. Fixed. Nick has a great show from 1999. Oh, yeah. Right now. Hell, yeah. Sweet. Let's see it. Other side, jackass. What? What? What's what? on the other side? <laughs> Stone. Okay. Cold. Jeez. Steve. Terminator. Austin. Wide. Wide. Take it from here, nurse. Raw 30 was last night. Did you watch any of it, AJ? Uh, I actually missed that one. I'm going to go back and watch that. Oh, you should. Oh, you DVR'd it. Did The Rock come back or mm. Cena? No, Hulkster. Yeah, Hulk yeah Hulkster. Let's not forget who else was there. Yeah, the American badass. Yeah, Wait. Take was back as the American badass, seemingly handing the baton to Bray Wyatt for being, like, the enigma creature mm -hmm. of the WWE. Wow. What was that? What's your eye roll for? Uh, because Bray Wyatt ain't fucking take. So let's <laughs> no, let's yeah. pump the brakes eh? out. The fiend, I get it. Firefly Funhouse. Uh, he ain't fucking take. He ain't if the they dead man. Do that, right? the dead man. There ain't no fucking dead man other than the yeah, dead man. The dead man should have came out. That's how they were gonna do it. <laughs> DX was there. Kurt Angle was there last night. That DX. What made them all come back? Your thirty year nerdy, reunion. Thirtieth anniversary of the Raw. They've Kurt, been going for amazing. thirty years straight. Not every week. Wild. 
Kurt Angle and Vinny could be a, twins. Vinny, <laughs> hey, you didn't get to feel and experience Vinny yesterday, dude. He is yeah. so stropped right now. Shredded. I mean, just not shredded yet. He's getting to a shred. Uh, it's fucking pretty shredded. Pretty shredded. He is. His head. He looks just like he looks like a physical specimen. His head, trapped shoulders. Like a, he's just a, a thick bodybuilder. I think his head and neck same size. Now that I'm, <laughs> do you look that way real quick? Smaller. Like you're talking to uh, toxic table. Hey boys. Same size. Yeah, I think that was, the, that, that was the that was the that was the same thing right same there. Same profile. AQ looks good. He does, doesn't he? You do look good yeah. in retirement. Thanks, AJ. Jay Glazer moved out of town, so he's not scared to go to the fight club. Yeah, anymore. true. Right? Oh, what? what? I know. I'm, I'm back, though, soon. I'm back. Soon. 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 You're still not in? No, I when, when do you guys tomorrow. go? When does practice start? Like, you, like, what 8 a.m. 8 a.m. Wednesdays and Fridays. So okay. tomorrow. You can't make it. 8 a.m. local? Who's yeah, basement? Phoenix. Oh, it's called WTF, Waltz Training Facility. Place Mr. Waltz. Mr. Waltz. Yeah. Base. We got, a, we got a member of our fight team fighting next week, Ryan Bader. Let's go. No, go. Hey, Let's go, go, Bader. Where is he fighting? Yo, Bader's fight team? Are you serious? You got to get in there. Yeah, roll. Bader comes through. Bader's awesome. He's yeah. part of their basement team. You know, Bader's got a wrestling team, a basement team, a what? fighting team, a striking what? team. Master team. AQ's part of the master team. He's yeah. part of the master training, obviously. For sure. Are you going to be at the fight? Where's the fight? No, it's in California. I was hoping, I was hoping it was going to be in Phoenix, but... It's in California. Is it, can't make the trip. Can't make the trip. Is this like Hustlers University? <laughs> Basically. Yeah, essentially. Oh. I don't know what that is. Is that an OnlyFans? It's an Andrew Tate thing. That His bald subs guy. Subscription-based thing. Hey, guy's bad guy, I heard. Yeah, very See, bad guy. It sure seems like it, but I don't know who's signed up for Hustlers University, whatever program he's selling. I don't know anything about him. This is the – I've heard some things, all bad. Uh, but everybody – I don't know. I did not know he existed before he got banned from the internet. Exactly. This, this happens to me a lot because I, I have been on the internet for a long time, but I'm just on my internet. And I'm appreciative of everybody else that does the internet and has businesses in the internet. And I got massive respect for anybody that's able to make a living off the internet because it's not easy. It's a lot of work, time consuming, all that stuff. But I feel like I'm a rather guarded internet person. I'm, I'm pretty proud of that, actually. I haven't fucked with my algorithm enough to get enough stuff in there. They kind of know who I am. They keep me in my own world. So when I learn of these people, normally it's whenever they're getting kicked off the internet forever. Exactly. Yeah. It's wild. This has been a wild internet existence. Tate is the most recent one that has got yeah. banned from the internet that I learned of his existence at that point. And then, obviously, Billy. Yeah, Bill knows everything about Bill him. Bill McComas knows his entire oh, yeah. life story. Up, yeah. The guy told me his whole life story pretty much. I'm like. I was kind of with you. I, I became aware of him probably real shortly before he was booted, I think. Yeah, like, people in jail like that know, pop up in your reels. And then so Bill told me he was in jail. Out of jail, back in jail. That's what Bill oh, told me. Okay. So he's in jail now. Was out of jail at one point. Got caught twice. It's in one of those countries. Uh, yeah, Bill said Romania? what Romania, Romania. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and he said he went there because their uh, like sex crimes are a little more lax than Whoa. elsewhere. Allegedly, this is what Bill. That's what Bill this said. Is Bill yeah. Where all the stars. cam houses are. Yes, so, actually. But you hear the word Romania, I just automatically assume I'm going to get uh, held hostage somewhere. Yes, yeah, taken. locked up abroad. Boom. Yeah, Neeson. What a show. Yeah. Movie. You guys, have you watched uh, The Last of Us, AJ? I have not. Is it good? Here we go. Unbelievable. Come on. Tell them, Pat. Come on. Oh, is it? Tell I've seen Pat. it. I know people, people talk about it. I've thought about it a few times, just haven't made the leap. So it's a, it's a zombie thing. Okay. Uh, okay. I probably won't. Boom. Apocalypse. Kind of tough for me to do zombie stuff, too. <laughs> mm -hmm. I guess from the zombie people, though. Dawn it, of the Dead was great, though. That was a great zombie movie. So is that a zombie yeah. thing? Yeah. It's a movie, yeah. And Shaun of the Dead of also the Dead was really good. So I don't do any zombie stuff. Just That's what I'm thinking of. I, I can't do dragons. I can't do yeah. zombie stuff. Dude, I can't do Harry real. Potter wizard Come stuff. Come on. Whoa. I'm too basic. I'm too, I'm too dumb. I'm too dumb. I can't do it. Pittsburgh. I can't do it. I'm with you. Hey, Q can't do it. I'm not the only person. I just can't do it. Smart enough. I don't believe in sci-fi. I don't have. Zombies aren't sci-fi. They're real. I don't believe in anything that's fake. Nick just said Pittsburgh invented zombies. They did. They did. Shout out George A. Romero. Monroeville Mall. Monroeville Mall. I've heard about it. I know. I know all the history. I am not smart enough to watch something that has these and go, oh, I'm interested. I'm immediately <laughs> disinterested whenever I see it. I'm like, okay, it's never going to happen. I need to think that it could potentially happen. I, that's how okay. basic I am. This could happen. Yeah, I, this is one thing that can definitely Even happen. animated stuff. I, I need to know that this sure. could potentially happen. Secret now, Life of Pets. Boom. boom. <laughs> Toy Story. <laughs> boom. <laughs> Loved it. Yeah. yeah. Loved everything that's happened. But boom. Love it. Just need. I can't buy in. 
to the zombies, and I don't want to be scared either, so I'm not signing up to get scared. I can't do the fucking, I tried my best to do the uh, Thrones. The Thrones thing. I just, as soon as I see the dragon, I'm like, okay. That's not real. All right, can't, can't do, do it. it. Might yeah, be. Exactly. Can't do it. You can, I can't. AJ, I think it, we're, that's because we're dumb. We are not. I know. Down. We're not. I'm not smart enough to follow the 75 storylines going on. Bing, I can't buy into that. The That's opposite. on me. I'm not. I'm not a smart enough person to do it. So it's not me knocking the people that can. This is me yeah. knocking me because there's a lot of people that are into this, and I'm not. The Last of Us. I have watched the first episode and now the second episode. Here we go. It is okay. a zombie thing. Okay, I will say it's a zombie thing. Tough to believe, but also kind of could see. Could Young happen. Guy. Last night, they spent 35 minutes doing fucking nothing, okay? I don't need 35 minutes of fucking nothing in episode two. And I think that's where, that's where me and AQ are too dumb. I don't have time for 35 minutes of story setting, okay? I need you to set that story in one scene. I need you to go into a place, has the date on the wall. I need to see who's living with who, who's pissed at who, and move on. That's how basic I am. 35 minutes. So last you like the pilot, though? The first episode? Yes, pilot. Our third for you to episode. get to the second episode, episode for a big me too. deal. There's that's a big deal. The first spoilers. episode was tough, too. No spoilers. Is it viral? Is it viral? Uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, through being bit. Yeah. You can tell us. You right. can tell us. Oh, no, no we're only on episode two. 5.7 yeah. million people watching the, in the first so 24 hours, so it's like wow. the most well-liked oh, yeah. thing. I like the guy. I like the guy who's the actor. He was Bento. in the... Uh, hey, Bento. 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 Great. He's great in Narcos. Hey, great in everything. He's solid in this as well. He's a beast. And the girl. But if, yeah. you also if you watch the first episode, Pat, the fact that you even started the second episode says a lot because you normally don't get through five minutes. There's nothing else to watch right now. Bingo. Yeah, it's nothing. You're right. I've been in a real mm -hmm. drought. Like We try to find something to watch tonight. There is nothing. Nothing. Jack Ryan. Yeah. This takes us to succession. Also, it's unbelievable. Keep in mind. Jack season, Ryan. season three, Jack Ryan's unbelievable. What's that? That's a show? Yeah. If CIA you like, analyst. If you liked... Um, Krasansky. Is it good? Yes, yeah. it's unbelievable. Jim from The Office. See, it's going to be tough for me to believe. He's yeah. jocked now. Exactly. He's yoked up. <laughs> Have you seen him in 13 yeah, hours? 13 hours. I understand what you're saying. <laughs> this is just like when Gosling. Didn't Gosling become like a fucking badass? Oh, a gray yeah. man. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. That movie really sucked, works. though. Yeah, but Krasansky's actually like 6'3". I couldn't do gray man so because Gosling is... Hey, Gosling, you're the handsome cute sure. guy who makes people fall in love again. Yeah, watch That's that again. That's who you are. Yeah. Gosling the other is day. a he's a problem. Yeah, you need to see Drive. That's Gosling. Yeah, yeah. and he is an he's like absolute stunt driver, player. just murking people, yeah. stomping so people's heads girls. into mush. That's hard for me because I just see him as the heartthrob guy. Yeah, I can't from, see him from the, the Notebook. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm not sending him into battle, so it's tough. Once again, this is me being dumb, not you. It's like Green Actually, Street Hooligan. Have you seen Green Street Hooligan where Elijah Wood? Yeah, that's tough. That's sure. tough. It's a tough, tough. Yeah, sell. but he gets his ass beat most of the time. Yeah, Plus, he's Frodo. Frodo's a fucking. That's also one of the greatest movies of all time. It is Anyways, Last of Us, I, I would watch it because there's nothing else on, is what we're saying. Mm -hmm. Okay. No I Monday might give it a shot. No Monday Night Football last night, so what are we doing? Yeah, there's nothing else on. Yeah. But to your point, this gets us to secession. Bingo. And this will, as Hell soon yeah. as that starts, that's really the in-between period, too, right before March Madness. So April it comes out? We have no – it March. was supposed to be in fall. Yes. Then it was moved to spring. So first show I really got into a long time. Mm -hmm. Secession. Love it. Yeah, it's so good. Great show. Fuck off. Damn it. I need five, too, is where take five mm -hmm. came from. Mm -hmm. Are you a sicko? Can they drop three at a time? Can Eight. we meet in the middle? No. Linear television, old school, new streaming. Can we meet in the middle at like two episodes a week? Can we do one? Yeah. Yeah. H yeah. HBO ain't ever going to. And Apple. Yeah. Apple also only doing one, and that is another show coming out uh, this spring, Ted Man. Lasso final season. How about morning show? Two. We got another one coming out of that. Morning yep, show's coming be, yeah. back out. Yep. Okay. Severance. I liked morning show. You watch morning show? Uh, yeah, I don't know if I'm completely caught up, but yeah, I like it. Yeah, I don't remember what happened in the last couple episodes. The last season ended with uh, Jennifer uh, Anderson uh, 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 going through the process of... Whoa. It's been out a long time. It's been out for almost a yeah, year. Yeah, but I actually what? watch it. I don't remember. I, may, I might either. need to watch like three or four episodes to get all the way caught They up. have a recap. They have the two-minute recap before you watch They're in Italy a lot. Whoa! Yeah. They gotta that's do the. Not, uh, I mean, that's... They gotta do the full like last night before the Last of Us. Mm -hmm. I had to watch the recap of episode one for exactly. sure yep. because it had yeah. been a week, and I watched yeah. a bunch. Some things I forgot about episode one that while episode two was happening, I was like, oh yeah, this also had already happened, but it wasn't in a recap. Just give me three fucking episodes. Give me two <laughs> episodes so I can just at least a little bit dive in. You know, yeah. I will tell you, fellow gamer nerds love this show. Absolutely oh, yeah. love it. What? Well, it's the last it, was game. Yeah. it was a game. Why right? is that? It's based on a video game. Yeah, it's yeah. on a video game. Yeah. Oh. The judges coming back for season two. 
Huge. Cranston. Fucking great. It's called Your Honor. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Judge. Yeah, see, I don't watch any of this stuff. This, this I think is, you would like Your Honor, the first season. It's pretty good. This guy from Breaking Bad? Yeah. yeah. He's a judge, and his son gets caught up in, like, the New Orleans mob, and he has to, like, basically, I Manipulate mean, it, you, I think you would like, it's only eight episodes, too. And they're already all out? Bingo. Yeah. It was awesome. Anyways, I would recommend The Last of Us to watch. It's good. There's no f- sports okay, on. Not, how many episodes do they have? Two. It's tough. I'll, it's, wait, I'll wait till the season, then. That's what I'm talking about. Like, I wish I could have watched those two episodes at one time. Mm-hmm. And if you need me to wait two weeks, okay, yeah. or wait a week, good. Just give me the opportunity to dive in if I can. You know what I mean? Well, we were or talking- let me pay five bucks to watch two episodes or something. Ooh. Yeah, yeah charge upcharge it. It's a way to upcharge it. Yeah, just like DoorDash has that uh, express that never fucking changes no, the that time, amount of time. Ever. The That's the biggest scam it is. going right now. Yep. Which one? Seven to 17 minutes. It will come in the normal oh, time yeah. every single Standard. Time. And it's going to be cold still because the person has somehow figured out how to manipulate their app where they're still delivering to somebody else. Right. Mm-hmm. So you're just paying more money to DoorDash. That's not even going to the drive. Nope. And it's not working. No. So power move here. Message right when they get it. Yo, 10 bucks. Get here right now. So five minutes. So now it's even more money. Yeah. So I so, never do the express though. But I you're still go, paying more. The express is only like $199. Yeah. $250 sometimes though. Depending sometimes on where it is. Yeah, right. And it's probably not the biggest scam going. I'm sure there's, I mean, FTX just took place. True. Sure. Hey, it's all coming out that that's a scam. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The uh, thing like people, what, just people, not, what do you mean? Yeah, I think that was. Wasn't that stated already a while ago? Yeah, I think day one through like five, the internet was stating, hey, this is a scam, this is a scam, but the world was not recognizing no. it as that. And by the world, I mean like the people that are, yeah. you know, in charge of actually yeah. doing something about that. I think they're all now like, oh, yeah, this guy fucking scammed yeah. everybody. Yeah. Well, something on that. He like, uh, he invested like 500 bill, billion or something into some. Some crypto company overseas somewhere in yeah. some country. Like, that's a big part of it. There's all kind of Are stuff. Are they sponsoring the Let's Go pod? FTX? <laughs> no. Oh, that word? He lost what? 30? I thought it was Ty. I yeah. thought that was Ty asking questions for real when I heard the clip. Oh, when you're talking about the uh, Tom Brady. To with Tom Brady, FTX? yeah. If I fucking knew, Jim, I would already do it. What did you think about that? Let's run it one more again because AJ hasn't been on whenever it played. I don't know if he's really mad. I don't know if he's really mad or he's messing with him. No, I think he's a human. This is the first time I think Tom Brady's been a human, which I love. Like, I, I enjoy this answer. I also enjoy the fact that Jim has to ask this question. So, Jim and I, you know, kind of had to share a situation there. Not saying that I'm anywhere near the journalist that Jim is. I'm not a journalist. He is actual journalist. But having to ask a question that the whole world would like to know yes. to the person that is in there is not necessarily a fun spot. You asked him about tra- getting traded yeah. and if he'd be able to play. That was incredible. Hey, AJ. That was an incredible question oh, yeah. to Aaron. That was an awesome question. Not easy to ask those things. Like how we get to those questions is a part of the whole thing. You know, it's like a part yeah. if it comes up, how it doesn't come up, how should we address this? What are the potential thoughts of this? Like that is actually thought about as the conversation is taking place. So it's a fascinating scene. Jim Gray on the Let's Go podcast had to ask Tom a question. And when you hear him asking the question to AJ's point, this is not Ty Schmidt. This is actually Jim Gray, and this is actually Tom Brady responding from yesterday's Let's Go podcast on Sirius XM. Tom, you're leaving everybody guessing. Uh, and you've said you'll take your time. <laughs> do you have any type of a timetable as to what you might want to do uh, regarding your football career? Jim, if I knew what I was going to fucking do, I'd have already fucking done it. Okay? I'm taking it a day at a time. AJ, what you hear there? I heard a guy that said, like... <laughs> We, we talked about this in the first hour. I heard a guy that was like, listen, my ex-wife, okay, asked me a lot of these same questions. Mm-hmm. Okay, Jim, I don't need you asking these questions. With that being said, I'll fucking figure it out when I do, pal. I loved that answer from Tom. Felt like a real human. Your thoughts? Yeah, it did feel like a real human. And right after that, too, Tom said, well, I appreciate you asking, asking though, didn't he? He did tried it. to, like, yeah. soften it a little bit in case Jim's feelings were hurt, which I think Jim's a big boy. He can handle it. He knows. He's, he's a journalist. He's a journalist. Oh, he, yeah. he asked the tough question. Speaking of journalism, I heard a lot of journalists talking about the journalistic integrity of DallasCowboys.com and their reporters reporting and having, like, some sort of Big J narrative before and bigger than any other website that's on earth so that's why the tweet happened and i just wanted to be like you journalists are the fucking worst bro honestly not everybody 
okay? Not every journalist is this way, but journalism doesn't mean fucking destroying somebody. That, like, I feel like that's what people think journalism is. Hey, journalism is exposing the hard truths and saying the things that nobody wants to say. Well, it's also like, Expanding stories and learning about things like it doesn't have to be just killing somebody. That doesn't. We're not in mean politics. This isn't politics where we're holding politicians accountable. Like that's not what we're doing. That's not what, what our job is. Yeah, these people have no power over your life. These people are just yeah. playing sports. Like politics, if you got to tear somebody down and point out things that they've done in the past, because this person's going to have power over you and making decisions and how we live our lives. We get it. Okay, we we understand that you got to do what you got to do, and that seems to be the politics world. But like in sports. Journalism doesn't just mean fucking murdering somebody, let alone whenever it's the organization that just paid the guy more money than anybody else that's in there in their organization tweeting, which everybody understands what Twitter is at this point, unless the journalists don't, unless the journalists don't fully understand what Twitter is, how it'd be responded. I would love to do a journalism report on what Twitter is and how it operates and how the team, Dallas Cowboys, with the gold check mark, with the NFL plays, shouldn't be burying their fucking franchise quarterback when everybody else is. Can't. And I would love to dive into the journalism behind that, but that was really what people were saying about DallasCowboys.com is like they're a journalism uh, website long before anybody else was long after anybody else does it's like cool you can have that on your website then to tweet out that statement from that that organization is just so fucking dumb i, I can't even fathom how anybody go to bed. but once again there were people that were and the cowboys still have that tweet up it makes no sense to me i don't fully understand it oh no, it's like a calling card for you know every all all the fans are already going crazy and saying ridiculous shit about dak whether it's warranted or not but then the team puts that out and it's like have at it you know, pile on this guy, yeah. tell him he sucks. And to your point, like, we're talking about sports. Like, not all journalism is investigative journalism where, like, you have to unravel some deep-seated conspiracy or, like, you know, try to prove that someone's corrupt or something. Like, we're talking about a fucking quarterback of a football team. Yeah. Like, that, you know, it's a it, game. It might be it's one thing, too, if they quoted the author in the tweet. But the way it was tweeted out just makes it look like it's just a tweet from the No, team. the social media manager knows, though. Remember, they, want, they got a social media degree. Yeah, this so, one's going to go. You know? And Jerry's like, is this what other teams do? Absolutely. This is – it's directly from there. It's a quote or whatever. Well, fucking run it then, which is taking place too. Old money, hiring new people to run the new age stuff. But those new age stuff – People, they didn't run a business, which yeah. is what you have to do with your social media. You're running a full-on business on your social media. Everything that you yeah. say is coming from your company. From your, Everything you say is either building fans or tearing fans down. Building things or tearing things down. And I feel like this is, a, this is an abuse of characters by the Dallas Cowboys Twitter account, whoever's running it, on their guy. Like, hey, everybody's killing our guy. We need to be the ones that maybe don't kill. Maybe we do some journalism about like how he had the most touchdowns in the NFL thrown since week seven or whatever. I think he had like 27, had the most touchdowns in the NFL thrown. Like maybe that's a good piece of journalism to put out there yeah. for your guy for that works for your company. It's okay to go to bat for somebody too. Like I don't understand yeah. how this is a thing. I, I don't understand how it even happened. Well, how do they pick and choose if, if, you're, if they're like – the Cowboys Twitter account and their journalists, how do they pick and choose what they report on? There's plenty of other stuff that I'm sure dirt that they know that they can report on. What do they, how do they know what, what is for public consumption? What is not? And I don't think you have to baby face everybody all the time, except for maybe no. your franchise quarterback that you've just paid $40 million yeah, to yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe baby face him because everybody else is tearing him down. But I saw that stat about him having the most touchdowns thrown this year over a span. I forget what it was towards the end of the year. It's like, well, that, I should have learned that from the Cowboys Twitter account. Yeah. That, that's, yeah. that's a stat I should have learned from the Dallas. It just – I feel like there isn't really uh, like, hey, Twitter account's a promotional thing for the team. If you're, a, if you're the Dallas Cowboys Twitter account, you're, it's a promotional tool. It's straight marketing, I feel like. Once again, we have offended NFL team social media managers for sure. telling them that they don't fucking know football or how to build a team mm -hmm. or how to run any type of social media thing of all time. And they're – remember, they're the kings – Mm -hmm. at these teams they know more. to a lot of people and they have decks that they show how many likes and views and those numbers obviously blow the minds of these fucking old fucks who might have their own instagram that gets 50 likes and then they see oh this thing's got a 1.5 million Whoa. Uh, uh impressions holy hell you're doing a great job it's like no 
You're not. There's a lot of terrible people running social medias right now, and they're the kings in their building, so nobody can ever tell them that. And they kind of get so comfortable in their position that they hire people, and then people are reporting to these people. It's like things have spiraled quickly because people understand that social media matters, but there's a lot of keys to Ferraris getting handed over to people that can't fucking drive, and that's happening. And I think that happened in Dallas, to be honest. And that's the biggest franchise in the world. Yeah. yeah. They and, got this type of thing going and on. And you've said it before. Like, a lot of people, like casual fans, like the Twitter account is the only interaction they have with the team. Like, yeah, they may watch the games on Sunday, but like all the news they get about their team is from the Twitter account. And I assume the Cowboys are the most followed Twitter account in the NFL. Like, so, you know, you got all these casual fans who, yeah, maybe watch the game, but they see that and they're like, Oh, I guess Dak fucking sucks now. Like let's, let's get it. Let's get this guy out of town. That's a narrative building. Yeah. That's a narrative building tweet. That it almost feels like they're doing on purpose to get rid of them. But if you're trying to trade them, why the fuck would you put that out? Zero sense. Uh, AQ Shipley, as the master of Twitter that you are, what are your thoughts on the Dallas Cowboys in this whole situation? I thought it was a joke. I thought it was like a fake like account. A fake yeah. account a for, I mean, I had to like check it a couple times, and then you guys put it out yesterday. I'm like, oh, it's fucking real. Like this is crazy. The fact is, is like those. Twitter accounts should be putting I mean it should be very political based like they should be keeping it very very simple good news this that and the other you think and they just bury the guy because they buried him I just want to say this and this is for a lot of people and I think it's why I like the New Heights podcast so much mm -hmm. it's very easy to do numbers by burying people very easy hate brings a lot of people together so if you just want to be a negative person on the internet, you're going to garner views. You're going to garner likes. You're going to garner everything. Now, the, none of those people are going to listen to you. Those people are strictly going to use to hear somebody lay out how they feel. So whenever they go into a conversation with somebody, they can use some of that and love it. But I don't think it's a good way to build a company personally. I don't think it's a good way to build up something that's real because like hate watching and hate views and everything, I don't think they're meaningful. I, I don't think they're real because I think a lot of people think that they're fake or not real or why would you want to go to something that's so negative all the time to really get an actual grasp on what you should do whenever you're sports gambling or anything like that I don't think it's the right play but I think it's an easy way to get numbers so I think a lot of people kind of get infatuated with the numbers they get a little drunk with the numbers whenever they see like oh when I do this this goes up and a lot of people are operating on that bottom line I need this many retweets I need this many views and people are doing this that aren't just businesses they're actual humans doing it as well they see the most action and their best tweets are the ones in which they kill somebody or bury somebody and then they're like boom that's what I'm gonna do I think it's easy to get into that trap I mean we've buried a couple of people obviously before but I don't like it like I, I, I don't like I think it's hard hard enough already to fucking exist. I think it's hard enough to be in the NFL, and I think people should understand that. And I don't think that's a cool existence on the internet to just be super fucking negative either. I don't know why the Cowboys would want their mentions all day to be filled up with, you're right, that <laughs> stuff. Yeah. That's, yeah. It's like, I don't know why that It's going to attract those people too. It's also going to attract those kind of people that, yeah, I mean, who, I get it. Like, I, I don't know why, like, what is it about humans? Why do we want to, like, why do we hate watch sometimes, or why do... Why does it feel good for people to see other people get killed? To be clear, I'm not a big fan of it. Ty Schmidt certainly does. What is it about it? Just learning about the person, learning more about why you hate something? I'll be honest. I don't do it nearly as much as I used to. I think having a kid has kind of changed that a little bit because you don't want to just be super negative all the time. But a lot of times, like when you watch that kind of stuff, it's just like, oh, I just want to laugh. It's funny. Like, this is so bad or, that it's funny. Or you want to see what not to do, too. Like, you want to, because a lot of times some people get in the game and they're, they're on the internet or whatever, and then they get comfortable and they get in that lane of being like negative. Okay, this is how I can go, and then you become that person. Bro, you don't want to ever let yourself yourself slip into that person. But you got to think about the deck that is about to come from this Dallas Cowboys tweet. Yeah. Oh yeah, Matt. It was it was mentioned on Get Up. It was mentioned on First Man. Take. It was mentioned on this. The amount of impressions it got was at this, and that's like their presentation, and not even like then given the reverse effects of it. Yeah. Like now, our mentions for the next uh, 72 hours, we're burying our franchise quarterback. It does feel as if everybody in Cowboys Nation who is maybe on the fence about Dak certainly has come to our side. So if we're going to have him back next year, expect some sort of drawback. Although, like, that's not being... You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. that's, not, that's probably not being displayed in the presentation, the monthly report of that whole thing. So these are just things I think that we think about because we're in the social business and we're also in the fucking NFL for a bit that I don't think ever... Like, that social person's going to be around Dak. 
Yeah. Like oh, they're yeah. going to be around each other. They're yeah. going to be in the building. And Dak's supposed to just be like, oh, yeah, you, you had to do it. You had to post that. No, Dak's a human. He should be like, hey, fuck you. Yeah. Everybody mm -hmm. on earth yeah. wanted to kill me that day. The only people I needed was my team almost. Yeah. And the social part is a part of the team. That is a part yeah. of the team. And I just think that was disgusting. I, I do. I don't like it. From a team-based thing, I don't think that was a good yeah. move. It's yeah. way different. You're not, like, you're not talking about a beat writer writing a scathing story about him. You're talking about the team credited Twitter account with however many millions of followers on them. Yes. That's, it's a different story. It's the number two right behind the Patriots, I guess. The Patriots yeah. have 4.6 million. How many are real? God damn right. How many are real? So oh. many what do the Patriots post? We just post love all day, every day. <laughs> Bro, they just won a Super Bowl like every other year for 20 years. Yeah, yeah. very easy. That's and for all you, all you big money folks, like NFL owners that just won a bottom line, bottom line, bottom line, like you know how you win? You win. Like exactly. The business grows. Yeah. Uh, more, more tickets are sold. More merch is sold. More people want to do business with you. More people watch your team. More yep. people want to play for your team. Yeah, you win. Yeah. You know how you win, AJ. Say it. It's crazy. How? You invest in your team. Yeah, spend money. You know, you have to invest in your team. Mm -hmm. Cincinnati Bengals are seeing that, aren't they? Uh-huh. That, that, that's, that's nice up there. That's nice. What's that? Fucking that list. Good list. Yeah. What you love about it? I didn't even see. What's Where's Steelers? Three. Pittsburgh Steelers, number wow. three overall. Yeah, three's cool. <laughs> Holy hell. I can't see that, obviously. <laughs> Three of the best teams of all time. How about that? The sense. Panthers are what five? Yeah, that's, that's crazy. pretty good for them. Yeah, Tepper bought a bunch. A lot of, of bots. Yeah. yeah. If you combine like Instagram and uh, Facebook, I believe it's still the same top three teams. You say Facebook? Yeah, I found this. Are yeah. they calculating Facebook into this equation? This no, is just this is Twitter. Twitter. So I was told I'm not getting Facebook. Well, what was that? What were you Wait, where are the Colts on that list? No, I don't think. Uh, they believe me. I mean, AQ was probably there oh, whenever probably. I was telling the Colts. About wow. their social media presence. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you were. I was not happy with the Colts' Jeez. Twitter presence. I was going to ask us, speaking like South by Southwest, about fucking Twitter and the brand that I was building on Twitter. You know, like, hey, will you come speak at this whole thing? Not that that's that big of a deal, but that was the first time I was ever asked to speak at a panel. What do you want me to speak about? Uh, what, what you've done on Twitter, pretty much. It's like, okay, somebody like is acknowledging it's sweet. And I come back to the Colts, you know, and they're running a terrible, I mean, Maybe the worst Twitter in all professional sports. And I go up to, like, Pete Ward. I'm like, hey, the Twitter account. Like, I'm having a lot of success on Twitter. I feel like the Colts can have a lot of success on Twitter. And he goes, oh, thank you. And then who was in charge of social media at that time? Not even going to get into it. Whiz kid. He put together a deck for Pete Ward. Sure. And then Pete Ward sent it to me and said, uh, I feel like our social media is doing just fine or whatever. And I'm like. There's the problem. Yep. I'm not even. All right, whatever. I'm not even going to get. And then at some point over like the next year, they hired a girl named Amber, or next two years. Her name's Amber. She's still with the team. I think she's very talented. I think she's good. Nice. I, I did not. But the Colts haven't had many winning seasons. True. Yeah. You know, since that whole thing has happened. And those kind of. <laughs> so I think the Colts' social media will go if the Colts can win. With I Blue. think. Blue does some good stuff. He actually does with their. TikTok, uh, he crushes. Yep. You should see whose TikTok account is the biggest because that's going to be have the bring those young kids along as they grow. I believe Blue. Yeah, I also think the uh, the cream Bills pie guy have a massive TikTok. That is the cream pie guy. Yeah, does all the cream pies. Yep. Sorry about that, Evie. Sorry, Evie. He did not cream pie me, AJ. I well, hope I thought, so. Oh, I have said you. this before. I thought he I did. I certainly hope so. There is video evidence. Yeah. Yeah. Of inflatable Blue. Mm -hmm. Beating the fuck out of Foxy. Yeah. Respectfully. In his lunch. Foxy has never been cream pie, though. Thank you, no. Pat. By yeah. Blue, at least. Yes. Right. Yeah. Bopped him pretty good, though. <laughs> he did bop him. Yeah. A lot of bopping. Bopped him into yeah. the next Respectful week. Respectful bops. But we're talking cream oh. pie. Oh, okay. Obviously, everybody's thinking the wrong cream pie. I just. Well, cream we're talking pie. about the cream pie. We're the talking face. about a pie. Yeah. A cream pie. What cream pie are you guys oatmeal. thinking of? Like, Which, yeah, I saw pies. AQ's eyes get real big. What are you talking about? What are you talking about, AQ? That's what Zito uh, just said in my ear, like, oh, they're talking about a different cream pie. Yeah, like, what, what? 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 What's a different one? What do you mean? AJ. I wasn't talking AJ, about get that. get on the internet. Zito said something. AJ, AJ is on here. Yeah. AJ's on the internet man. too much. Yeah, he's on the cream pie internet. Yeah. If well, the cream pie we're talking what's about. What's everybody going on? We're talking What's about blue on? taking yeah. the pies that have cream That's in them. That's what I was talking about. But now that you guys stay off the suck what like he cream thought they pies. were talking about. Listen, I have never received a whipped cream tang pie. Whoa. Whoa. A lot of what? rock clips. Oh, yeah. People getting uh -huh. sucked up. 
<laughs> what is Come your problem? On. Everybody needs to relax. Guys. I'm talking about the fucking pot of the face thing. Yeah, yeah. the funny thing. Oh. Yes. That was cool. like, I, believe, I don't know if you can cream pot of the face. Like, I think it has to be. Where, yeah, you, see, where does it have to be? Once again, about? cowboy. Yeah. You're in the wrong subject. We're talking about what Blue did to 4,000 people yeah. mm -hmm. on his move. TikTok. Believe it was the most watched TikTok of the NFL this year as well. Blue. Does that that would hurt the shit out of my Blue nose? Just assaulting people? Like, oh, yeah. do those people know? Or are they surprising them? Yeah, they have no idea. They're walking, Someone's looking somewhere else, and then I, I, all of a sudden, boom. the camera that they see, boom, Blue gets them without them <laughs> knowing. It's sweet. Yeah, there is a chance oh, Blue yeah, gets bopped in the face. Yeah. I assume he cream pied Victor the Viking at some point. That, guy's, that guy's been awful quiet, huh? <laughs> Man, <laughs> Bruce buried him in the ground. <laughs> That's why. Dead. Dude, he had a hell of a year. Yeah, did. great year. Did. Fraud. But guess what? No one gives a fuck if you don't win the Super Bowl. Well, everybody, you you seemingly have had the best week of the Patriots season this yeah, thus far. Yeah. This is the best year of the Patriots uh, probably, or actually, yeah, probably since they beat the Rams in the Super Bowl. It was the best week we've had. How come? Because the Bills lose. Bills lose, and they win the Super Bowl every year before we even start playing football. Bill O'Brien's back, so Mac Jones is probably going to have the best year of his career, and he's still on a rookie deal. And, uh, yeah, life is good. He legitimately, it's almost like it's back to week one of the NFL season it when he really thought the is. Patriots were going to win the Super Bowl. Yeah. Exactly, it is. He came in here after this past weekend, after the Bills lose to the Bengals at home and get dominated at home 27-10. And I think that was a surprise to everybody. I did not expect the ripple effects to go all the way up to New England. Him skipping in here Monday Buzz. morning. What an incredible dude. We just won a Super Boost. I thought that's what it was. Like, we won a Super Boost. Hell yeah. yeah. We just hit, and he's like, the Bills are never going to win a Super Bowl. Nope. And I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. You are so rude. And he's like, you, they don't win it this year. What year are they going to win it? They had everything set up for them this year, honestly. With DeMar Hamlin back in the building, maybe is what Connor said. Well, maybe. You have to just consider what people say. Maybe back in the building or whatever. And then, obviously, DeMar has tweeted a picture of himself at his own. Uh, with mural. the caption. And he says, clone. Okay. Right. So he says that, obviously, because the internet was doing that with whole thing. It, it was hard it, to see him in the middle of the snow. But nonetheless, the Patriots fans are pumped for this week. Yeah. And I, I, I find that interesting. Stephon Diggs, he and Eli Apple have been – I mean, Eli Apple has been dunking on Stephon Diggs on the internet. AJ, have you seen this? Eli Apple up there with, like, yeah. CJGJ, I think. Oh, yeah. And, like, shit-talking and not being scared at all to be a savage on the internet, AJ. I mean, Eli Apple's been doing this since he – I mean, I think since college. Like, he went to Ohio State, and he's, he's a very polarizing figure in the NFL. He was – When you win, man, you're on a team that's in the AFC Championship game. I mean, he's not – He's not scared to go after some people, I guess. I love Lou Anarumo sitting in his office trying to figure out what he's going to do <laughs> against Kansas City Chiefs. Mm -hmm. And uh, somebody going, have you seen what Eli Apple has tweeted? And he goes, no, what? And he goes, seeing Cancun on three with the DeMar Hart. With the DeMar Hart. Lou goes, oh, Jesus, what else? What else? Is he? Oh, he also recommended that Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs go ahead and get couples therapy. And Lou's like, Pfft. Eli, yeah, Eli, Jesus, anything else? Yeah, he's calling him statue, basically, uh, saying Stephon Diggs is fed up with Josh Allen. He's Terrell Owens Jr. Jeez. Lou's like, what are you? It's going off. So do we get him, like, does he win an award for, like, best shit talk on Twitter, or what, what do we do? Well, Zach is going to tell him, like, Hey, maybe just two of the four need to go. Right. Not all four yeah, or okay. whatever. Focus on and Lou's going, like, we're not holding Eli back, though, right? No, he was he was smoking in their fucking locker room, right, mm -hmm. giving interviews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lou's like, perfect. Let's just keep it going. The guy's balling. This dude don't care about nothing, AJ. This guy's awesome. Look at that. I missed my – man, I missed that era where you get to smoke cigars in the locker room. That would have been nice. Yeah, Buffalo could not have been thrilled with this. No. It didn't uh -uh. look like he regularly smoked cigars, but, hey, I give him credit. You sure? No, he did not. He had to do it though. In the moment, he felt That's obligated. good though. You have to. If, if you're if you're an active player too, you need to act like, oh, this is my first time ever. You yeah. know Eli, AJ? I do not actually. I I'll, believe he played with CJGJ too in New Orleans. So that was just a shit talking secondary. I would like to let Eli Apple know that some people are saying he crossed the line with the Cancun on three, the heart thing. I'm gonna say who makes the line? Exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Who yeah. makes who <laughs> makes the line? And not us. Eli, like. Uh, you're fucking entertaining, bud. Mm -hmm. Nobody does this anymore. Yeah. Especially no, with play well. PR we'll people, <laughs> PR people, agents, teams, the yeah. amount of people that 
are probably suggesting against doing this type of thing. And Eli going, no, I got to get these off. We got to get these nah, off. Nah, that's too good. To, I, did you see what I said? Yeah, we did, that's what we're calling about. Well, hold on. Hold the phone. Keep looking. Couple's therapy, bang. Boom. Send it. <laughs> oh, he's kind of like turn on his Boom. All right. Oh, this guy's always going to be posing, huh? Bang. Boom. Okay. What were you going to say? You shouldn't have sent off those four tweets that were saying. Jesus. All right. I'm, I'm sorry about that. All right. You going to take him down? Nah, Absolutely. Yeah, no, no way. No way. I'll see you later. That's the conversation that's happening with Eli, though. We need to know that that's taking place. And Eli's like, sorry, just had to. Yeah. Sorry. It's too good. You don't want to do it. Got to let the players be themselves, right? Yep. Think Bill Belichick's going to pick him up? Eli Apple? Yeah, you think he likes that? That kind of stuff? Maybe. We have breaking news out of the music industry. Justin Bieber has sold his entire music rights to Blackstone-backed fund. Look into Blackstone where whose money's I mean, in they Blackstone. Own, they own everything. Black they have Rare. all the money. They have trillions of dollars. Him knows his songs capital. The deal with an expected value of around $200 million covers more than 290 titles released before the end of 2021. So we saw Justin Timberlake do this. I don't know if it was the same one for like $100 million. Yeah. Justin Bieber's now doing it for $200 million. We assume that that should be worth way more, but I believe Justin Bieber can now re-record all of those songs in this exact moment and own them. I think this is a way to get out of a uh, label. I think. Oh, uh, okay. Is it? I think. I'm not 100% sure. But I think that's why, like, Justin Timberlake did it. I assume. I, I don't know how so much. You just money. make a remix and it's, you own it again? Yeah, so Taylor Swift did this whenever Justin Bieber's guy, what was his name? Scooter, Scooter Braun. Braun. Scooter. Scooter Braun bought all of her rights. She was not happy about it. That was very public. She wanted yeah. to buy it back. She has the money to do it. And I, I think Taylor Swift is a dog. dog. Like, she works her ass off. Like, I am, I am a fan of everything she's accomplished. She re recorded. Yeah, her version. Her version of the songs. Mm -hmm. So she had. She owned them now. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, all the streams have to go back up to the billions that are the other ones. Okay. But that was kind of like done. So I think that's why the timing is always such a big deal yeah. for this. Nonetheless, we got to get to a break. Congrats to Justin Bieber, we assume. Yeah, there you go, Biebs. Seems like you got a lot of money. Yeah. Nice little payday. He has some bangers. He does. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Baby, but every new song he comes baby, up with, though. Baby, he gets oh, What's that, dude? Every new song that he comes out with is all him, though. I there think so, go. yeah. Yeah. I think he's that's still this, so young. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, I think that's what how that works. I think that's why that deal happens. I think that's why we were so alarmed by the Timberlake deal. Like, that's it. Conan O'Brien just sold his shit for 150 million. Yeah, mm -hmm. Justin. Justin, no offense to Conan O'Brien. You're bringing back me back. Yeah, you know, like so you, many hits. You got less than yeah. Conan O'Brien. What's going on? I think it's like a freedom thing. That would make sense. The boss did it. Bruce Springsteen did it for like $500 million. You know, that makes sense. Fuck it, because uh, my live albums are what I'm going to make a bunch of money off of. So, fuck you guys. Speaking of live Beatles. albums. Beatles bought Michael Jackson a long time ago, didn't they? Mm -hmm. All of his stuff. Yeah, tough move now. Why? We all saw the HBO. Dog. Artist art. I mean, still selling. They're still making money off it. Let's get to a break. Yeah. We did not all see the doc, but... I assume what you're talking about is certainly toxic, and we should have eyes on it. He's doing gross things with kids. All right. There was a court case, I believe. Mm -hmm. Blanket? Yeah. yeah, that was even after. I think that was during, wasn't it? The blanket thing was like the end of it. Do we have to say allegedly here? Or? I think it was innocent, right? No, now. yeah. Oh, then we definitely have to say allegedly. Yeah, they didn't have you allegedly. end up charging him, did they? I don't know. I thought he went to court. Weird. I, he I did, yeah, and then he, he stood on top of the car celebrating. So some, he didn't get, they didn't throw him in jail. You know? I don't know if it was with the two kids because I don't know if they ever went to do a lawsuit again. What are you say, talking about? Say it to be safe. The HBO doc. Allegedly. Allegedly. Anyways, yeah, people have been buying people's uh, music rights a long time. Seems like a cash out to restart, but we don't know the business nearly as well as we should be to be talking about it. But the business we do know about is football. Hell yeah. And football is going to have some breaking news in about five minutes when Aaron Rodgers Tuesday kicks off. Be a friend, tell a friend. Take five. Bye. Bye. Wow. Let me tell
tell a tale about this little blue can Inside there's a nectar love from here to Japan It's a vibe, it's a time, ice cold over time So sublime, this shit is divine It's the beer of choice when you wanna rejoice Hey yo boys, what's the noise? Wine! Hey yo boys, what's the noise? Well, us and Bud Light have made it a fish we bring the stoogery, they bring delish Feels like a genie just granted us a wish Cause for all of us, it was love at first sip Now be a bud, tell a bud to grab some bud lights Go and drizzly coat is what? Five dollars off tonight Go and drizzly coat is what? Five dollars off tonight Cause if you're living life right, and you're drinking Bud Light And you wake up in the morning and you fight the good fight Then you're doing A-OK, -okay, doing A-OK -okay. Matter of fact, you're doing great no matter what they say Now, be a Bud, tell a Bud to grab some Bud Lights Go and drizzle coat is wide, five dollars off tonight Five dollars off tonight Wide Why is football the greatest sport on earth? And do you think football is the greatest sport on earth? And why do you like football? That's a really deep question there, Pat. I know. I think I'd get a good answer out of you, though. Like, I, I think you'd be able to talk about it in a way that I think a lot of people haven't because you've been at the pinnacle of it for so damn long and inside of it. And your brain is a pretty fantastic one. We've learned here over the last few weeks, mm -hmm. obviously. Last few weeks, that's it. That's all the time we've learned that. I think it's the greatest sport in the world for one main reason it is a true team sport where it is damn near impossible for one person to dominate an entire oh, game God, right. and if you look at other team sports uh, uh basketball with five guys on the court i think you've seen multiple players over the years uh, maybe one player or maybe one or two players on a squad be able to dominate and win championships baseball you can have a dominant pitcher uh, and win championships soccer you can have a dominant forward and or goalie that seems to be a little more of a team sport, but you don't have 11 players engaged at the same time on every play. It is truly uh, a sport reliant on every player on the field to do their job in order to be successful. And I think that's why at times, you know, certain star players can get uh, maybe too much credit and, and maybe too much blame on the flip side because it does take so many players at the same time in three phases to win football games uh, and I think that's the beauty and the draw of our sport is that something new happens all the time because you are literally dealing with 11 humans on the field at, at one time who all have lives outside of football and there's distractions there's uh, a reliance on, on coaching there's a reliance on preparation there's a reliance on diet and performance um, I just think there's so many facets to it that you see something new every single week and I think that's the beauty in our game uh, when it comes to the love that I have for it, it's rooted, and I think like any uh, any player who's played for a long time, the, the love is not just about our sport, it's about competition. And I think there's nothing in the world, for me, that fills that need and that hole I have like competition. I think we, you know, if players who play for a long time at a high level, you have that uh, need to be satiated uh, competitively and, and it's a love of going out there and going against guys and being in an environment where you know that uh, nothing is guaranteed and that's why I, at times I've taken uh, umbrage to people saying that it's easy because it's not easy it's never easy and I think that's the beauty in our game is that you see things new every single week it's never easy and your only thing you're guaranteed is, is the ability to compete. Uh, I love that aspect of it. I love competing. I love going out there and harnessing the fear of failure, where I think so many people who maybe don't love football as much, the root of that is, is a deep uh, fear of failure, uh, that you might go out there and your best might not be good enough, and that's not okay with you.
He's yeah. got this moxie, Aaron, for being Mr. Irrelevant, the last pick. That seems to be a trait that the great quarterbacks have, and then if you don't have, the NFL can expose you. Is that why you think Purdy's having the success that he's having and why some guys don't have the same success as others? For as many blue chippers who've had success in the league, there's been as many and often more who were not that. We're not the number one prospect coming out of their high school. We're not the number one guy coming out of college in the first pick in the draft. You know, obviously, you know about Tom, 198 different options to take him. Joe Montana was the same way. It was passed up by a ton of people. For as many Peyton Manning, first pick in the drafts, there's been a ton of these other guys. And, and what it does is create this chip. And the chip can be an excellent motivator for the right disposition that feels like they need a little bit extra at various times during their career, or even in just a workout. The thought to motivate you a little bit more or inspire you, I think is really, really important to success of people who can do that. Michael Jordan, you know, used to make things up, I think, at times to be motivated, but he was also cut from his high school team. That's a pretty good motivator. But Brock was passed over by a ton of people. He went to Iowa State, I believe. He has a lifetime worth of slights that he can pull from. The moxie part, I think, is, is one really, really important thing. I, I love to use that word. It's hard to define what exactly that is, but it's that kind of it factor that encompasses, I think, a lot of different things. How you handle your day to day, you know, like uh, setting the huddle, bringing energy to practice, confidence, mastery of the offense, dealing with the media, dealing with your teammates, bringing people together, all those different things that make up an important part of the quarterback position that not every guy has. Some of it is just stuff you have, personality, likability, humor, charisma, all those different things. And some of it you can work on for sure. But he obviously has has that moxie. And, and you can see it with his teammates. They love playing with him and, and hyping him up in the media and talking about him uh, glowingly. And I have nothing but respect for the way he's played. And, and I love seeing uh, the underdog. I mean, I feel like there, that was part of my career for a long time. Obviously different. I was picked in the first round, not the last pick. But I did go to junior college and, you know, dealt with that uh, frustration that turned into a definitely a chip I could deal with. And so a ton of respect for guys who deal with adversity and turn into a positive, and obviously Brock has done that. Hey, why? Let's go! This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, you never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God damn it! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to our humble abode, the FanDuel Thunderdome. On this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, January 24th, 2023, Hour 3 starts right now. Football! Has four teams left vying for its trophy. The Lombo, the biggest in all of sport, will be on the line a couple weeks from now in Phoenix, Arizona. We are entering championship week now where we have a line shift in the AFC matchup in a game in the NFC that the world cannot wait to watch. Last week, there was uh, 45 million people watching one game. Mm -hmm. There was 35 million people watching another game. What? There was 32 million people watching another game. And then there was 26 million people watching another game. The NFL is king and we're in the biggest time of the year. To my left, your right, is a college football national champion, Super Bowl champion, Ryder Cup champion. Kind of a pot stir yeah. in yeah. the video game community. Yeah, For absolutely. sure. Basketball pundit, father of 10, COVID survivor, AJ Hawk. AJ! Toxic Tables here at Boss Connor at Ty Schmidt wearing a uniform. You boys look good. Hell yeah. yeah. Thank you. That's Thank not you. planned or mandated, nope. but you both look great. Thank you, you too, Appreciate it. It's about to get real cold here in the Midwest. I think we got a, like eight inches of snow coming overnight. Everybody be safe yeah, and we'll bundle see. up out there. We'll see. You don't think that's Donardo on the Doppler? You have a couple questions. We know it's not Donardo. R.I.P. Miss you, Joe. But, you, Joe. you know, we'll see after last time what, what comes tonight. Anyway, it's supposed to be a bad start. Rest in peace, Joe Donardo. Miss you, Joe. Miss you, Joe. Yep. Thank you. It's times like these when we wish Joe Donardo was around. Yeah, you say it like you mean it, AJ. Alan said AJ. How about you? Mm. Both yeah. of you. We know. We know my support. He didn't even say 12 year NFL much. vet, Super Bowl champion, AQ Shipley's here. One half of the hammer. The Cowboys, Ten Diggs is here. Rest in peace, Joe Nardo. He's the founder of the Doppler. Yep. The daddy of the Doppler, if you mm -hmm. will. Former Pittsburgh meteorologist who was never wrong. Doppler daddy. Ever. <laughs> Ever wrong. 100% hit rate. Doppler daddy. Never lost. Say it, AQ. The guy is great. 
fantastic. The great. Thank you. Thank you. Joining us now is another man who's fantastic, another man who is great, a man who might be uh, in the middle of watching Wales right now. That's where we left him one week ago. Mm -hmm. He's a four-time NFL MVP, and his future is certainly being chatted about everywhere. This morning I woke up, and he was getting traded. We have no idea if he wants to play football again. Ladies and gentlemen, the host of Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, Aaron Rodgers. Yay! Yeah. How are you, pal? Howdy, boys. I have sad to report no whales since we last <gasps> talked. What? Where are they? What happened? They left? I don't know. They, I don't know if they've come all the way down from Alaska yet, but I haven't, I haven't seen them yet. So just for the last week, you've had binoculars out on a dry ocean, no whales having sex out there? What have you been up to, man? Just chilling? Well, they, they have sex up in Alaska, actually. Then they come down to warmer water to, uh, to have the babies. Um, at least that's my understanding. Uh, again, not a uh, ocean uh, expert, uh, but that's my understanding. So they're not ready to have babies. Yeah, they're coming in the spring. That's right. Oh. A little bit later in the spring. And that was your plan for the whole week. You were going to whale watch out the backyard there, maybe take some time to yourself. What have you been up to? And have you heard the latest rumors about you, Aaron? Yeah, you have them in the spring, right? The babies in the spring. Not in the summer when there's some get-togethers that would be nice to come to, right? That's right. That's, that's the rules there. Look at AJ. All his kids are born in the wintertime, right? All hey. that off-season lovemaking with, the, with Laura. Atta baby, AJ. Father of 10. Yeah, I mean, that's, they, they got to figure it out. They got to map out. Right. I mean, that's how it's supposed to be. What, what have you been up to the last week? Chilling? Man, I've been, I've been doing a whole lot of nothing. Have you seen the movie uh, Office Space? You know, Peter's, they talked to him about what's your, you know, if you had a million dollars, what would you do? Nothing. It's not about me and my dream of doing nothing, you know. <laughs> Have I been missing work? I guess I've really been missing work, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what you've been doing? I've been, yeah, I've been enjoying myself. I've seen, seen a few friends. Um, but, yeah, just, just relax. And there's some things coming up on the horizon that I'm looking forward to. But I needed some time to just kind of decompress and relax a little bit. Got AJ. What do you have on the horizon? What's out, what's out there you're looking forward to? I'm going to play in the Pebble Beach Pro Am. Hey, uh, okay. 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 Let's go. Yeah, I need I need a little competition in my life, so oh. I'm excited about that. Um, so excited to get out to uh, to Pebble. Haven't played there in a few years. There was a couple COVID years, and they had some, you know, they they didn't have any amateurs, I believe, one year, and then there was some sort of. Uh, Vax restriction, I believe, another year possibly. But either way, I'm back in it and, uh, and excited. You were immunized. I mean, you should have been able to yeah. get out there and hit the old white ball around. But obviously, that's conversation for another day, like a couple years ago. And it was a conversation that was had very loudly. You said you need a little competition. Is this part of your process of deciding what you want to do in the future or no? Well, listen, we've had, uh, you know, other than last year, we lost in division round. But we had a couple runs to the NFC Championship, so you're still playing this time. It's fun. You know, you, you know, you know, like the Eagles and the Niners and Bengals and the Chiefs, there's only four teams still playing. All 28 are, you know, out whale watching. So you're, you're still in the building, still, still playing and still excited about uh, what's in front of you. When you're on the other side of that and, you, and you're not doing that, uh, I think you miss uh, that, uh, that competition and anything that can fill that void. Uh, if you got a big uh, competition hole in your body, it's nice to – Try and do that. For me, I, I love playing golf, and I usually play, you know, I played in Tahoe uh, the last 18 years and loved that event. Phenomenal event. Got invited to play in the event in Florida that Marty Fish, shout out Marty, uh, just ran away from uh, the field uh, down at the, uh, in the course in Florida. Um, I haven't played in that, and, don't, and, and, you know, maybe when I'm done playing, I might play in that. But I do enjoy the Pebble Beach Pro-Am. Used to be the week after the Super Bowl, so it was pretty easy. Uh, you know, unless you're really, really tired from the season to go play. But they had to move it up because of the scheduling and uh, missed a couple of years, but excited to, to be back out there. There's a lot of great fans from NorCal, and it's fun to watch the pros. They're incredible and yeah. stay out of the way and hopefully hit a couple good shots. Well, you stopped by Nance. Isn't Nance have a house on? Uh, mm -hmm. Is that his house that's right on? No. Is that? He has a part He's got a couple, I think. Right? He's yeah. got a couple, I think. <laughs> yeah, him and Romo, you know, they're only yeah. – growing with every single coming week mm -hmm. there. Uh, I hope you do well in the Pebble Beach Pro-Am. We asked you, I don't know if it was season one or season two of Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, and we run it as a commercial. Why do you love football, you know? And you just talked about basically your competition 
uh, trait needs to be scratched. Like you enjoy competing, you enjoy giving your all and knowing that your all might not be good enough. It's a video that we run. It's a beautiful, like I think depiction of how you feel about football and sport. And there you just said you want to play in Pebble Beach because you need the competition a little bit. There's a rumor coming out about you this morning. And I don't know if you know this or not because it sounds like you've been doing nothing in your own world out there and you've been waiting on the whales to come give birth. But pretty much everybody in sports media has you being traded this upcoming year. So they're just assuming that you're going to want to come back and play football. Now, a lot of our conversation last week was thrown away. Strictly, nobody listened to it. They did hear the clip, though, where you said you still think you could play at an MVP level. When I asked you, physically, do you think you could still play? And that came shortly after you said, if you're not playing to win it all, why are you playing at all? Uh, so have you already come to the decision that you're playing football again next year? Is that already something that's taken place? Because the decision has been made that you're getting traded by sports media as of this morning. And I feel like there's another decision that has to be made before any of that can take place. Where are you in that stance? And are you in the middle of that process still? Usually you would think they would wait until maybe the off week between the championship weeks and the Zero Bowl to drum up some, some storylines. Because there is, you know, two great games this Sunday. And Obviously, four really deserving teams to be playing. Um, I have, you know, some people that love to track that stuff, so I've been made aware of it. Go ahead. You just pointed, AJ. No, he's got the next question. Yeah, he's got, he's the, got, next, yeah, uh, he's yeah. got the next I'll, question. I'll finish this. Yeah. But listen, listen, uh, there's heroes and villains in, in sports and entertainment, and I think because of my stance on COVID uh, and – maybe some other things. I've been cast as the villain, especially the last few years. And so that is the way that, uh, you know, a lot of things I said are often interpreted. I'm not upset about that. I don't feel like a victim in any way. I don't have that mentality. That's fine. I actually embraced that role a little bit. That's how you want to cast me. But um, I did see there were some comments that, you know, I'm only playing for MVPs and yes. stuff like that. Didn't maybe quite see the entire clip of some of the stuff that I said. I don't care about that stuff. It doesn't offend me. I mean, this culture, this woke culture wants to be offended by everything. You just go online and find something you don't agree with. I'm offended. How could you possibly say that? Yes. I don't really care. I don't care who it's coming from or who said it. They're entitled to their opinion. It might not be right. And every now and then you got to get on here and, and say, hey, you know, you just found some bullshit. Like, that's just not true. Like, let's just tone it back a little bit. You might need to do that. Most of the time, you just kind of gloss over it. Who cares? It doesn't really matter. Because it honestly doesn't matter. It doesn't affect my day-to-day. -day. It doesn't interrupt my whale-watching time. It doesn't interrupt me at all during the day. I don't, I don't think, you know, agonize about, like, oh, you know, oh, Gronk said, you know, I shouldn't be worrying about MVPs. I'm like, I know Gronk. I love Gronk. He's awesome. He's, he's fun energy to be around. Like, but what do they do? You know, if you take us, if you take the right, the right sound bite from the right thing, you know, and it's a, and it's a station that may or may not have in the past been brought to you by Pfizer, then they got to make sure that their villain, oh. you know, gets cast in the correct light. Uh, and whether or not they're, you know, sponsored by Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson and Johnson, whatever it might be, what? when you go up against some of those powers that be, you put yourself in the, in the crosshairs. You know, they're going to paint you in a certain way. And that's what the media did to me a couple of years ago. That's fine. That's their prerogative. That's what they want to do. But I think I responded, uh, you know, pretty good in those, in those times. And uh, I'm glad I went through that. And anything that comes after that, small potatoes, bro. Okay. So, obviously, I'm happy you cleared the air on that whole thing. We agree. You said a lot about wanting to win. And physically, you were able to still play at an MVP level, you thought. And that was the question that I posed. So, also, we are in uh, the blame Also, game. let me say, Patty, Patty, let me say this. I don't mean to cut you off because I love you and, no. and, and, and you're so good at this. But I, I, I just, I was reminded when you said that of just one thing. Everybody wants to win MVP. Everybody who plays the game wants to be MVP. Like, yeah, you want to win a championship, 100%. Like, you want to go down in history on a championship football team. But everybody wants to win MVP, too any sport. You want to be recognized as the best of the best. Anyone who says they don't is lying or non-competitive. And either one of those, I don't want to be a part of. So right. everybody wants, who plays wants to be the best, wants to be recognized. And then if you don't win it, you always say the right thing. Oh, it's more important to win championships, you know. But of course, everybody wants to win it. You know, there's been a lot of guys who played the, played the game, they haven't got an MVP vote. Like, and, and 
you, know, you can rest on the championships you won, but you still want to be recognized as the best. Aaron, I'd like to let you know, though, there's only like 10 of you guys every single year that have an actual chance to win that thing. So I think what you're saying is if you're in the conversation to potentially win an MVP or an award, you would like to win that award. Because I want to let you know, I played a good eight years in that league, NFL. I mean, there was one year I thought maybe I had an MVP for chance. Sure. No shot. No shot of me winning. AJ, you had a couple opportunities there. You were racking up. But what you're saying is the people that are in that conversation, it's a real thing. Because yeah, it's a quarterback award. You know, it's, it's more of a quarterback award. Obviously, Barry Sanders, uh, you know, shared it with Favre in 98, and AP won it in 2012. But it's, it's few and far between. It's mostly the best quarterback who's had the best year. I, I totally understand it. That to be said, there's also other awards. You know, Pro Bowl has kind of become more of a uh, more of a joke in in years, in more recent years, because you have third and fourth alternates going to the Pro Bowl multiple years, and and that kind of hasn't you know that that kind of takes some shine off. But All Pro for sure, All Pro is definitely especially for you know for linemen, for yourself, for punters, for receivers. It seems like All Pro. It usually gets it right who the best of the best for the most part. Well, obviously they don't matter. And when you act like they matter, people get mad at you for acting like they matter. But then whenever they're voting on Hall of Fame or legacies or how you remembered, all those things are brought up literally, <laughs> bam. Like, oh, oh, you mean? This guy not good. He won this many all pros, this many MV. I was like, well, I thought those titles didn't matter. Well, they do matter whenever you're remembered for the rest of it. It's a fascinating thing. And you answered that in a much different part of the conversation than about that whole thing. Now back to the, the rest of that whole part of that whole thing. It's already been decided you're getting traded by sports media. Schefter, Peter King has talked about it. Both those guys very dialed in. I don't think with your side of the entire thing, but certainly dialed in with teams everywhere. Have you got to a point where you even know if you want to play football still, or is that still something that, like, you're going through the whole process? Because Tom Brady was asked by Jim Gray, and he said, uh, Jim, if I knew what the fuck I wanted to do, I would have already done it. It's not easy to make that decision. I think you've had to battle it every single year here for the last couple of years. Tom has obviously had to battle it the last couple of years. That whole part of your thing is just getting tossed to the side whenever we're assuming you're getting traded. Are you still in the middle of that process, or has that been completed and you told somebody and they told Shefty and Peter and everybody? <laughs> First of all, kudos to you for talking through the uh, coffee machine that was just cleaning itself before turning off. So, oh, well shout done. out to the future but, having yeah, cleaning yeah, coffee. Yeah, yeah, I mean that is awesome. Yeah, yeah, the choices. That was a gift, by the way. Uh, coffee. Listen, I think again. I think anytime you make a decision, you have to try and take the emotion out of it. And there's emotions with the end of season, with the end of uh, runs with certain teams, with the end of. Uh, uh, specific uh, teammates who might be moving on or end of a contract, and obviously, you know, the way that the uh, season ends, uh, you know, on the on the field is also emotional. So I think it's always important to take time and get away from it. Um, if there was a timetable where I was told I got to make up my mind and in two weeks, then I would have came to a decision. It would have been much more difficult for sure. But I think you know, Tom's been playing a long, long time. He deserves the right to take as much time as he need. I've been playing a little bit less time, I think five or six years. I still think that, you know, should warrant, uh, you know, the ability to take some time to make this decision and to weigh all the options. I don't think you can wake up on January 24th and, and say, all right, I'm ready to, you know, go run this thing back. You know, I think even when you're in the midst of a career, in the middle of a career, there's always, you know, moments you're like, man, I just... I need a couple more months, you know, <laughs> not to figure out if you want to play or not, but just like before that mindset kicks in, we're like, oh, man, I'm really going to go do this again in April and, and, and this thing. I just think you need, you need time to, uh, to kind of decompress. At least I do. Maybe other people are differently, but I need time to decompress. It doesn't mean you totally let yourself go like AJ did when he retired, but you, you know, take a little bit of time and, hmm. and, uh, and just kind of let the off season start to sink in and, and then at some point make that decision. But, yeah, you know, all the other, you know, ideas about, you know, trade and whatnot, that's all conjecture until um, I even decide uh, what I want to do moving forward for myself. Got it. Have you ever, when you're sitting sitting there in your bed or watching whales, trying to fill this big, gaping, competitive hole you have in your body, have you ever envisioned yourself in another uniform playing for another team? Has that ever crossed your mind? Is it blue, too, with your eye? Oh. Great green, I mean, Greeny would really like the Jets to happen. He may, he may give you his bed if you go to New York. 
It's kind of strange. I mean, like, you could take his penthouse. I mean, I'm sure he has like the 28th floor of the whole oh, thing. Because okay. oh. you sure. said bed. Yeah. 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 That's what I mean. Thanks, for, he, thanks for clarifying. Very excited. Oh, you're Green saying he's excited for the possibility. You're saying he'd Airbnb it. You're saying you he'd Airbnb yes. it for a great yeah, rain. You can have it. I'll move out. I'll go to the Motel Six, he said. <laughs> That's what Greeny and Colts thinking the same thing. A lot of houses around here. You know what I mean? Mm. A lot of houses. There's a lot of other places too that are certainly feeling that exact same way, including some Packers fans, but you get it. Great question, AJ. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for clarifying that, Age. I appreciate that. Um, and actually, I lay in my bed. Usually, I don't sit in my bed. You know, just to you talking about me sitting in my bed. I like to lay down in my bed. I'm not sure what you do. And I think you have oh, one yeah. of those water beds still. Uh, yeah, next yeah. second generation yeah. water bed. But. <laughs> second generation. Ever think about that? I'm not trying to avoid the question, but like how kind of strange water beds were. I mean, that's a weird yeah, invention. They're right? awesome. Hey, they had a run, though, Sweet. right? Like, whenever I was I a kid, it. I remember my parents, like, thinking about maybe one day getting a waterbed mm -hmm. or getting. Mm -hmm. I forget the exact. Yeah. It was dreams. Dreams and aspirations yeah. were waterbed life. It was like driving a DeLorean and sleeping in a waterbed. That was, like, <laughs> tip top, right? It was those two things. Uh, listen, uh, I have never been a free agent, um, which is pretty wild. I've never gotten to the end of my contract. So to even think about being in another uniform never really crossed my mind just because I was uh, I got a second contract in my fourth out of fifth year, five years. Um, and then each successive contract was with at least a year left on the deal. So there was never a time where you're thinking like, oh, I might be another uniform. And I've just never thought that way. You know, even when Jordan was drafted, I thought that might be a possibility for sure. I might not finish in Green Bay. Uh, then I won two COVID MVPs. And it, you know, obviously seemed a lot less likely, um, but you never know. I mean, anytime there's a situation where change is possible, what's the old adage, you know, that people want to say, oh, the grass isn't always greener, yeah. you know, on the other side. And I always say the grass is green where you water it. And I think that's the most important thing to remember. Uh, change is, is a part of this business. It's a part of life. And I think being open to it and embracing whatever that change looks like is an important part of coming to peace with whatever decision lies, lies ahead of you. And I think that's the most important uh, kind of peace I want to get to is um, mentally feeling good about uh, where I'm at. If I want to hang it up and, and do that, uh, having the peace to do that, if I want to keep going, um, understanding all possibilities that are involved, uh, which is not too dissimilar to this season. We were in a big rut, and I was thinking – uh, a lot of us were older guys. You know, if we lose another game, we could be out of this thing. They could be playing the young guys and could be uh, kick these guys on down the road. And, uh, again, you know, in a victim culture, uh, you know, that might stimulate to trigger people to be like, oh, man, like, you know, nobody cares about me anymore, blah, blah, blah. Look what they're doing to me and all this shit. It's like I don't operate that way. I came to a piece about it and understood this is a business that's been great to me. Uh, it's an incredible profession. It's a tough business, though. It's tough on everybody. And there's, there's stretches where you're on top of the world and stretches where they're kicking you when you're down. And I think to find peace in both of those extremes is an important part of being able to navigate this thing uh, with, uh, with a clear mind. And I don't think it's a, a bad thing. Now, people don't like talking about this kind of shit, right? It's, you know, it's, it's taboo to talk about uh, you know, some, of these, some of these ideas, but but to be open to the possibility, if I want to keep playing, that it might be somewhere else, I understand that. I understand they might want to move on and, 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 and go younger at a number of different positions. That's a part of it. Uh, there, again, th when I think about that thought, because it's important to, to understand that, to have some peace with that, because there is a lot that's out of your control, um, it's not with any malice. It's not with any animosity. It's with complete gratitude for an incredible organization that's done a ton for me. I've been there 18 years. I have lifelong friends in that organization. I have lifelong memories. I've made some of my closest friends in my life because I was drafted by the Green Bay Packers and they paid me multiple contracts and had amazing success. I met some just really special, special people. So why would I have any animosity toward that? You know? And on the flip side, I hope there wouldn't be any animosity if that was a decision at some point because I have nothing but love for the fans and the and amazing people I've met over the years at different events and out at fresh time at the grocery store or at Barnes & Noble picking up some books or whatever oh. it might be. It's a it's a beautiful a beautiful town. So, um, you know, I think there's there's been uh, a, a lot of a lot of fun dreaming about retiring as a Packer because there's something really special about that.
but if the competitive hole is is uh, still needs to be satiated and and it, it's time to move on, then I, you know I hope everybody would uh, would look at that with uh, a lot of gratitude and not any uh, resentment. Or even on the flip side, you know, yeah, let's fucking get rid of this old guy. Like it's you know it's time to time to move on. I hope there's some gratitude on on both sides if that happens. But again, uh, that doesn't that doesn't uh, open you know the door for any really conjecture honestly on my side and I'm not saying that to be cryptic um, I got to figure out what I want to do and then uh, you know we'll see uh, we'll see where all the parties are at and and uh, and what kind of transpires after that so that was an incredible answer and we appreciate you giving it and I think it's the right perspective at this stage of everything with where the Packers are with where you are and whenever you said that if I was to return to the Packers it's like a two-way street is kind of how you gave your answer a week ago and everybody was like, oh, here we go again. This is like the third year in a row where you're talking about if the Packers would like this, if the Packers would like this. And there's a lot of people that are just like, the Packers definitely would want Aaron Rodgers to be their quarterback if Aaron Rodgers is going to play football again. But you saying that to us about it being a two-way street, me, as a dumbass for sure, but who has listened to you talk a lot, you say things because something happens. It's not like you're just making shit up. Was there something said like, hey, the Packers said we need to take some time to figure out what we want to do too, so while you're figuring out what you want to do, we're going to figure out what we want to do as well? And is that what led you to believe like, oh, they might be on the verge of moving on and with Jordan with where he is? And I'm sure you're very fucking happy for Jordan Love as well, man, you've shared a quarterback room with here since he came into the league. Did that happen in the convo with Gunta Kunz, or is it just you feeling out the lay of the land? Uh, I wouldn't say that happened in the conversation. No, I don't think that'd be a, a proper representation of it. I think it's more just living in the reality of, of what is. And what is, is they drafted uh, my replacement. And if I didn't win two COVID MVPs, this conversation probably would have happened earlier. But in a year where I'm not going to win MVP, uh, it allows for all the different conjecture. Um, is Jordan ready? Is it time to move on? Uh, the Packers have had this uh, interesting um, uh, view on personnel from conjecture from outside the building that it, it's better to move on a year before a guy is done than a year after and is that the is that the mindset uh, for them deep down now as an organization they're obviously not going to say any of that um, why would you there's not a whole lot to be won and, and often unfortunately in times as uh, you know was mentioned by Mark Murphy last year you know uh, in a situation where there doesn't need to be sides, there can be sides that are drawn. Like, there's not sides here. It's not me against the Packers. You know, it never was me against the Packers. It was a strong desire to be a part of some meaningful change uh, in an organization moving forward. And I feel like we, you know, because of some of the conversations that we had, there was some, there was some good movement on that. And I'm, I'm proud of some of the things that, uh, that seemed to change. And I think they're important things the long after I'm done playing that that are going to be important for the organization to continue to embrace. Um, and, and I think that's the, the beauty in the relationship that we've cultivated is some great conversation and some real honest and direct conversation. Um, that being said, I'm, I'm open to all honest and direct conversation. And if, if they felt like it was in the best interest of the team to move forward, so be it. You know, that doesn't, that, again, that doesn't, that wouldn't offend me. That wouldn't, uh, you know, make me feel like a victim. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have any animosity towards the team. I love the team. I love the organization. I love the city. I love the region. You know, I'm a minority owner in the Bucks. Like I'm going to be a part of the region long after I'm done playing. Like I have. I have a lot of love. Uh, a lot of love for what's going on in Green Bay, and I'd love to finish there. I would, and and uh, I might have finished there. You know, who knows? Um, but uh, you know. When I talk about my future, I don't talk in any cryptic terms. You know, I, I'm pretty direct about how I feel, and I am taking time with my decision, and I am, you know, not, you know, egomaniacal in a sense to think that, uh, you know, I should be able to play wherever I want as long as I want. There's two sides to this. You know, there, there's... No, no, I heard you were an egomaniac. Yeah, yeah, big time. I heard you were an egomaniac. <laughs> That's right. I, I thought that I was told. Shout out, Gumpy. Oh. I was told you were an egomaniac. So it's more of you like getting a read and a grasp of the reality of the situation that the Packers are in, that you're in, with Jordan, with everything. That, that's kind of why you feel the way you feel, let alone if you want to play football still. That old thing. That's number one is if I want to play, 100%. And, and if I want to go through the grind again. And then number two is that's why I say it was mutual with both sides. It's, it's uh, 
you know, what does a team look like with me? Uh, what are the proposed, uh, you know, direction of different players that uh, they're thinking about bringing in? How do I fit in that? And and uh, and what are the prospects moving forward? I think that's that's a part of it, you know, because you want to win a championship, right? You want to you want to be a part of a team that can win a championship. And every team is going to say in the beginning of the season we can win it, but we know every single year there's about you know a handful of teams that have a legit chance, and the four left are all four that I would have said before the season. You know, these four have got a chance to win it. Now, I would have put us and some other teams in there, too, which didn't come to fruition. But, um, but you, you, want to, you want to win, and, and, uh, and every team is going to say they want to win. But it's, uh, you know, it's the type of team you're putting together. And I don't need, you know, I don't need all my guys to be there for that. I don't, you know, I'm not standing on the table for these seven guys need to be a part of that, you know, if, if, to, to come back. It's just the... Uh, kind of the feel of, of the team and, and the what's tone, missing. What the, tone, the tone in which the roster is being built. Like, what is the tone of this roster? Are we trying to go right now? Or is this like, uh, let's get some, let's take another, like, kind of a build year almost. Not a rebuild, but a build almost. Like, that type of thing, right? Yeah, is it a reload or is it a rebuild? That's a good question. Like, or mm-hmm. tear it all down. Yep. Can't do it. AQ has a question for you, Mr. Rogers. This has been an incredible conversation, right. by the way. AQ has one for you, pal. Aaron, it's great to talk with you again. <laughs> I am pumped for this moment. Had a baby, AQ. Wow. Thank you. All right. Hey, you mentioned a little bit about the grind. You've mentioned that the last couple of weeks. First, first part of this question. I got a three-parter here. Oh, all right. Slow first down. part of this question is: Do you have a firm date when you start your off-season preparation? Second question is. Has that changed over the course of your career? Similar question. Third part of that is, do you still enjoy every part of the process that you go through from the end of the season to the end of the following season? And where has that gone? Had a baby. Hey. Wow. How are we doing today? Had a baby. Thank you. Hey. Had a baby. Hey, Hey, we're proud of him, huh? Holy shit. Holy fuck, dude. Whoa. See you guys. Hey. See you next week, AQ. Good for you, man. Take a dump. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great questions there, buddy. Um, I don't have a firm date. It's just more of a feel with my body. I didn't have a whole lot of lingering uh, things besides my thumb. Uh, and thumb doesn't really affect a lot of the workout. So uh, I would say I like to take a good a month uh, from doing, like, really jumping back into some really strenuous stuff. Uh, the second part is a really interesting uh thing you know does that change it definitely does change i think when you're younger you're like right back into it you know it's 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 not really a whole lot of break you're like all right uh you know i just got back let me get right back into my workouts and 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 get back into i think as you get older you learn that your body needs a little bit of time to to heal up and uh and you focus on maybe different areas earlier in the off season uh then as you get going you kind of strip it down and build it back up um you know, start working on maybe some of the smaller muscles and then get back into kind of the full body uh, stuff that uh, that you really like doing. Uh, the last is a great question, and I think one that's really, really important to me, and that's about do you enjoy uh, the whole process? And, and it's unequivocally yes. And I think if it wasn't a full fuck yes, then I think that's your answer. Oh, so you're that back. <laughs> you're back. Hey, as I just heard, sounds like you're back still, right? You, no I, duty. I, sounds like it. Listen, uh, we do what we do because you love the grind. And it's also a big commitment. It's especially as you're older and you got other things going on and other interests and other things pulling at you. And I don't have, you know, 10 kids like AJ, but there are, uh, you know, a lot of other things that, uh, that take up uh, time and energy and focus. And when you commit to that, it's a, it's a, it's a full-time commitment. And I think that's the beauty in it. Um, I want to say a little something about process versus performance, which has always been really important to me. Here we go. And I think it's one of the most important things that uh, uh, for leaders uh, of businesses, organizations, and even for competitive uh, individuals is you have to be process driven, not performance driven. And I think in our business and in life often, we're, we focus on some of the wrong things. Where your perspective goes, uh, your reality follows. And uh, the way you Uh, view the world, the lens you view it from will become your reality. And if it's a uh, uh, performance-based, you know, rose-colored glasses or even, you know, whatever the opposite of that is, if you're just looking at wins and losses and performance, you're going to actually ride a roller coaster of 
things uh, always need to be tweaked. And I think a better mindset that actually is akin to a growth mindset is a, a process-based mindset. And that means you come up with a process that works for you. It's not just the Monday through Sunday of the preparation, but it's the off-season process as well. Like what puts me in the best mindset first, what allows me to emotionally be the most uh, doubt and connected, uh, what allows me uh, you know, spiritually to be uh, completely present uh, with my job, with my teammates, and, uh, and physically uh, allows me to, uh, to show up in uh, the shape that allows me to play at my best. And I think it's a process that doesn't, doesn't get altered and, and ride a wave of emotions based on a performance both positive or negative. And that's why we say in our business all the time, AQ, you know this, like winning kind of covers up a lot of things. Uh, and just because you're winning or having great performances doesn't mean the process is a little bit jacked up. And on the flip side, conversely, just because you're not having the performance you want on the field doesn't mean your process sucks. And in a win now business, what have you done for me lately business, I think that's why the owners met and talked about all the millions and millions of dollars of paying out to former coaches, that maybe we're looking at the performance stuff too much and not on the process. If you have a process that works uh, and you know it works and you have people who can vouch for it and, and show growth, then maybe you need to adjust uh, some of the players in, the, in some of those process systems or adjust some of the leaders to make sure everybody's pulling the same direction. Uh, because if you strictly focus on the performance, um, you might have some good stretches, but but a great process is gonna is gonna win out over the long haul. And, and I always say, if it's good enough in, good enough in week one, it's got to be good enough in week 18. And and it's 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 a full time job uh, to play in the NFL, um, but you got to find a process that works works for you. And when you do, you stick to it. And and even in in the up years and and, and even in the down years. Um, minor tweaks you can make, but when you make wholesale changes, obviously you have uh, more than just uh, an issue with uh, uh, with what's going on. You have uh, kind of a perspective shift that needs to happen. Yeah, you need to trust the process too, and you can trust the process if you start seeing some good too. So I think you do have to have some sort of success, but uh, you can't just judge strictly off the results. I've hit a couple shanks that have gone, you know, 65 yards. Best punts I've had in my career, mostly the ones that just got great bounces. Are we judging the result or are we judging the punt itself? Those are two different aspects of how hard I want to be on myself. Uh, you, talking about your process was incredible there. Thank you for letting us in on that, dude. Honestly, I, I appreciate it. Now, you did say you're going to play again. You know, you, you pretty much said that you yep. love the whole thing. Right. And, you, you know, you're going to miss the whole thing in a competitive hole <laughs> and everything like that. So I appreciate that. I, uh, no, I, no, no, listen, I, I didn't say that. No, 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 <laughs> no. no, no, no. Well, 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 of, of course. Accumulation of information. You know, now, it's a huge I commitment. The questions, I answer the questions you guys ask me. And you guys answer some fucking – you guys ask some great questions. AQ. And AQ, that was a great question. I think – I think it's something that we need to talk about in our business, about, about process. Now, Pat, you bring up a great point. you got to win, of course. But if you're winning with a bad process, at some point it's going to rear its ugly head. You know, if, if, you're, gonna if you have a good process, and I, and I believe on the flip side, I really do believe if you have the right process, right, and, and a growth mindset, you're going to win at some point. You're going to win. It's just it's going to happen you know? if you do it the right way. How do you know if it's the right way? How do you know you have the right process? Well, that's a good point. Um, you know, it, it's, I believe it's a certain type of uh, mentality and, and leadership. And I think that there's been some great things. Uh, if you piece together, you know, a lot of things that we've had over the years uh, from different leaders we've had, different head coaches, um, there's been a lot of great things in that that uh, are part of a great process. I think accountability is right near the top. And when you have accountability to each other, you can have honest conversations with each other, and there's not sensitivity in the room, and and uh, and you allow for um, you know people to uh, to hold each other accountable, to be honest with each other, to have uh, expectations of professionalism. I think that's a, a good part of the process. You gotta you gotta find a way to uh, to raise up leaders on both sides of the football and on teams, and I think the player-led teams are the best teams, and. Um, you know, part of that process is is cultivating that leadership, is creating opportunities for that leadership. It's allowing those guys to uh, to have a platform to speak. Um, and then not everybody wants to speak. Some of our best leaders have been just purely lead by example guys. You know, the Julius Peppers of the world, the, the way Kenny Clark goes about his business. 
Um, you know, the way that uh, Jordy was never a huge vocal leader, but, Great you know, fun. phenomenal, phenomenal guys who led by example. And I think that's part of the process. Um, but you have to have a structure that allows for that. Uh, in in every situation, Jordy, great rancher mm -hmm. too, yeah. softball player, like oh top five God. in the country. Bombs Jordy, I mean, he could still obviously run a go if you needed him, oh, but yeah. Jordy Nelson, what a fucking. Uh, he could run a he could run a corner post though. Right now, if he had to. Oh yeah, he'd be open. How hilarious would you be? And obviously, you'd be judged very harshly for this. What if <laughs> you want, <laughs> what if you went to the Packers and said, "I want to come back." <laughs> And I want fucking Jordy Nelson. Yeah. Hell yeah. I want Jordy Nelson on the <laughs> roster. Well, you can't stop there, though. You can't. You got to bring James Jones back as well. Yeah. Bring him on in. Yep. This is what we're thinking. Yep. You know, Throwback yeah. Thursday, every Bubba day. Bubba Franks. Yep. 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 What about Coon? Yep. Eddie Lacy. Tom Crabtree. Yep. yep. Can Coon put it back on, you John think? Coon, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, he could. What about this Chad guy? Clifton. Tage Lang. Yeah, AJ. <laughs> Chad Brandon Hannes. Schiller, BJ Rogers. Spencer Havner. Yeah. Is that, is that your demands? So you got to figure out whether or not you want to play football again. Sounds like you're going to. Just AJ's been saying that this whole time, as has everybody. But you got your own process. Take your time. Okay? Knock on, hey, thanks, Pat. Thank you. Knock on Jim Gray. Uh, no offense. Uh -huh. but, but if you had this list of demands, it would be hysterical. But now, let's just hypothetical here. It's hypothetical. Can we hypothetical? Yeah, yeah, it's a fun game, really fun game. $60 million is a lot of fucking money, right? That's what everybody's talking about is what you're owed or whatever. Does that come into any of this conversation? And there's no way you can say yes to that and be realistic. But is the contract like something that you have to think about in this whole thing? Oh, uh, shoot. I mean, it's a, it's lot, a lot of money. fucking money. It's a lot, it's of, a lot money. of money. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot of money. I don't think there'd be a scenario where I'd come back and that would be the number. I think it, it would definitely, definitely things would have to shift. Hmm. Got it. I mean, we'll see what we just did. Oh, um, yeah. Un, unpeeling the onion here. For Why sure. do you think that? Well, I just don't think it's, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of teams because of COVID that are strapped. And you're seeing us a lot of different contracts. They're pushing more money out uh, in, in, uh, in deals. They're creating, you know, certain kind of void years. Uh, to allow for the um, an easier cap hit, so there were, you know there would have to be some adjustments for sure. Yeah, because there's this cash over cap thing that everybody's doing. You know, Andrew Brandt kind of broke it down to us, as both of you gentlemen know. Were you able to have voided years that aren't real years on the contract, but they're being reported as how long the actual contract is, but they're just fake years that are kind of dispersing the signing bonus, which is coming up front. So instead of it being like a four-year deal, it's a seven-year deal, but the last three years aren't even a real deal, but it adds three more years to divvy up the signing bonus so the salary cap isn't as big. For those that are just brand new, that's why we allude to the salary cap being fake because it's not fake. It certainly exists, but there's a lot of ways to kind of dabble around it, and a lot of teams have done as such with deals with quarterbacks more specifically yeah, right. because of how large they are. That's awesome to hear you say. I think a lot of people are going to be excited about that. Ty, who has been coughing for 15 minutes, yeah, has a question Jesus for Christ. you there. Yeah, I took one way too big sip of water and went down the wrong pipe. I've really been battling over here. I <laughs> yeah. uh, thought he was going to die. Yeah. So, so I, I, I thought, thought you were trying to get into your little holst, maybe. <laughs> well, <laughs> Jesus Christ, I mean, I, I damn near did cough to death for the last 15 minutes. It fucking sucked. I, uh, I still can't breathe, really, but... No, seriously, though, Aaron, uh, my opinion doesn't matter, but obviously you're too good to retire. I mean, it's just as simple as that. That's really all there is is to say. And I don't care what anyone else says. Like, it, it really would be heartbreaking if you don't finish your career with the Packers. But at the same time, like, I still want to watch you play. So if you don't end up playing for the Packers, it is what it is. Um when you look at the games this weekend, you've talked about these four teams. I assume when you've played as long as you have, you've had a pretty bad high ankle sprain. And I, th I think back to when Stu, uh, Sue intentionally stepped on your foot uh, at that game at Lambeau. But when cap, you, yeah. Yeah, cap, cap. right. Uh, when you look at, at like Mahomes this weekend, is it more difficult playing on like a bad high ankle sprain like that or playing with like a broken thumb like you had to all year? Mm. I mean, every injury is different. It's hard to comment, you know, about severity. That looked like a, a, a really bad one. You know, when you get, when you get fallen on like that, I would not, I mean, I haven't heard this or seen this. Again, I haven't seen a whole lot of uh, 
commentary on it. It looked like there was maybe some knee issues as well, just based on the fall. I, I, hopefully that's not the case. Oh. It looked like maybe the situation where maybe there's some MCL issues. Again, that's purely conjecture. Oh. I love watching, I love watching Pat play. Um, and he, you know, Doctor. looked like he was pretty upset to even go in the locker room and get that thing x-rayed, which everybody, anybody would be. Um, I, I will say, I, you know, I put myself in that situation. I guess I'm a little older and a little more uh, curmudgeon-y, but I would say, I would say, the hell with that. I ain't going until halftime. You know what I mean? I think he, I, I give him credit for seeding that battle, like allowing that battle to. Okay, I'll, I will go check that out. He was outnumbered, Andy, wasn't he? He was outnumbered. Maybe, he was, yeah, he was. He was up against it. Maybe Andy just said, "Get your ass in there. Or you're not going back in." If that was the case, I totally understand it, but. There was no doubt in my mind he was going to come back just because I just know what a competitor he is. And anybody talking about, oh, he may not play this week, you're talking about Pat Mahomes. Like, Pat's going to play. Like, he's going to play. I think he's going to play really well, I would assume. Um, I haven't had a bad, thankfully, a bad high ankle sprain since, uh, since college. I had a bad one against uh, USC that lingered for a while. But... Uh, um, but, yeah, you know, I think any time you're dealing with, obviously, ankle is probably a little less uh, detrimental than knee, you know. Like, so that's good. But he might have both going on. Uh, he, he doesn't need to scramble. Like, I think that's what people maybe forget sometimes with Pat. Like, Pat is a great quarterback in the pocket as well as all the other things that he does. And that's what I think allowed him to take these jumps and possibly win another MVP this year um, because – He's become, you know, an excellent uh, pocket passer. And then on top of that, then, oh, you can move out of the pocket, you can throw on the run, right, left, under a guy, over a guy, look off, all those different things that he's been doing. But, but the key, I think, to really lasting power in the league, especially as a guy who used to run around similar to him, um, you know, you've got you to be excellent in the pocket. So all that to say, Pat doesn't need to run around to be effective. Now, it might behoove him to maybe do some pistol stuff like we did uh, when my calf was really bad in 14, um, you know, just to, because I saw a couple of him trying to take handoffs, and I know it's just, it, it looked rough, you know, but maybe move him back to the, or, uh, to the pistol if they want to do, you know, some of that stuff, or just keep him in the gun the whole time. They have so much offense, I'm sure they can do that with him, but, but uh, I look forward to watching Pat play. It's always fun watching. Joe's obviously had a great season, and, and he's playing really good. There's a lot of, a lot of weapons. I loved, uh, I loved uh, what Zach was doing. Uh, you know, with their their plan, watching that game, they had a great plan, and, and Joe played uh, played really well. Hey, Joe seems to be a fu now. Obviously, Patrick Mahomes, great insight there because you two play similarly. Similarly, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is that a word? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. me about ten years ago, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you you get it. Similar styles, you know, and, and I assume whenever as he ages, it'll be very similar to everything mm -hmm. that you have. How about Joey Burrow? Hey, this guy's a fucking stone cold killer, dude. He, did you see that warm-up shot of him doing the spin and then, like, literally dancing while warming up in the middle of the fight? Like, he just has this demeanor about him that just feels like in the biggest moments he's always going to show up. Have you met him? What are your thoughts on him? I mean, I talked to him briefly uh, after we played him, uh, what, last year? Uh, did we play him or the year before? Yeah, last year. Last year. Yeah, last year. Thank you, Ty. Um so I didn't. I've never met him outside of that. Uh, I like watching him play. I like I like watching him compete. I think he uh, obviously uh, is a real good player. Had a great season. Um, I think a lot of people were wondering if he got hurt. And you know, his first year, right? He hurt his towards oh, ACLs. Right? Yeah. His Dude, year. he yeah. he was getting hit so hard every play. He's for and then and then he was running and not really sliding. I remember I did say, "Hey man, you're way too good not to slide more often." <laughs> I think that might have been one of the things I said to him. But but I like watching him play. I think his demeanor is great. You know, he's he's real even keel. I think that's all the all the great ones have the fire of competition, but but real even keel, not riding a wave of emotion. So I really really enjoy watching watching Joe play. And you know, this is uh, between Joe and Pat and and. And Josh, they got they got some good uh, competition over the years. It's gonna, they, we're going to be able to watch uh, in the AFC. Yeah, yeah. And you. Yeah, yeah. yeah of course. course. Yeah. Hey, do you have a uh, do you have a relationship with Zach Wilson? There was was it Rappaport who said you texted him mm -hmm. when he was like 
in the facility during the off season on a Friday morning. You said, "What are you doing? Get the hell out of there, man! Get some, right spend now. some time away from the facility." Are you guys tight? Well, it wasn't a Friday morning; it was a Friday night, and he was there late. And I said, "What are you doing?" I said, "Get out of the facility." I said, "Get out of there! Clear your head. Be a kid. Go to dinner. You know, relax a little bit." Um, so I met him uh, before the draft, and then they came and uh, practice against us uh, in the preseason. Had you know some of those uh, uh, inter squad uh, practices where they come in a couple days early, and uh, I think he's super talented. Uh, I think, you know, I think a little uh, humility is good for all of us at various times in our careers. And I think the first year they literally had no players. Um, they came and practice against us, and I was like, defense can play, and the offense needs some more players. I think you said that they, to us, actually, yeah. Yeah, a couple years, yeah. probably. That's what you said, a couple yeah. years. And then, and then they added, you know, they added a young receiver, right, from uh, yep, Ohio Garrett, State, is it? Garrett Wilson. Garrett, Wilson. Garrett yeah, he's stud. And got a tight end from the Bengals, I believe. Uzama. Uzama. And the young Uzama. Brees Hall. Brees Hall is getting healthy again. Mm -hmm. They picked a running back, right? It was pretty damn good last year. Him. Awesome. So, so it's just for him. It's just going to be, you know, humility, clean, leaning into that, and then just consistently, you know, working on the fundamentals. I think, I think he, he's so talented. But but the best, the best in the business, can make all the plays outside the pocket. Can move around. But fundamentally, inside the pocket, like you know, especially the two guys on the FC side, you got guys who can really uh, play in the pocket and then also extend and make plays outside the pocket. But inside the pocket, that's where you beat teams. Outside the pocket is where you kind of uh, embarrass teams, and, and you know maybe Pat's Pat's department, and, and also jo uh, you know Joe had some big first down runs he had, and and uh, extended plays, you know, the touchdown to Chase. Uh, looked like a total blown coverage on the play, but he, you know, looked right, looked right, stepped up, moved to the left, threw a nice little ball over the top, and and that's what you got to do. But you got to first win inside the pocket. So um, I hope that uh, you know that uh, whoever they decide to to go with uh, at coordinator can come in and and uh, and work with him and and uh, kind of break down a lot of the fundamentals uh, for him and and uh, get him playing on time because I think he's talented enough to have a long career in the league. Hell yeah, a lot of moxie. Oh yeah, a lot of moxie, which is a great word. Uh, you also have a lot of moxie, and seemingly a lot of time for us every single Tuesday. We can't thank you enough for joining us, dude. What do you got the rest of the day? You gonna wait on those whales still, or maybe golf? Get ready for Pebble Beach. What do we got going on? I need to play some golf. I haven't touched the club since August, so uh, I probably should should play a couple rounds. Although I'm usually better when I don't play, but uh, I got you know I got. Uh, Got some whale watching to do. I got some, you know, some adulting to do. Some emails and texts to respond to. Oh. And then who knows? You know, the day is wide open. That's why, you know, I'd rather be playing right now for sure. But if I'm not, I get to spend an hour with you guys. That's a hell of a day. Right hell there. yeah. Hey, you're going to watch the games this weekend, obviously, from there? I, yeah, I am definitely. I'm, I'm a fan. I'm a football fan. And I love watching, uh, I love watching uh, good quarterback play. And, and, and uh, you know, a couple – I enjoy – you know, Jalen a lot. I think he's a really great kid. I'm happy for him. He's playing. And I, we talked last week about, about Purdy. I mean, uh, you know, pretty incredible story. Two great defenses. You mentioned to see, obviously, you'd think the advantage goes to Philly playing at home. But you never know. 49ers are so dynamic on, on defense and obviously incredible weapons. That'll be a fun one. Really looking forward to the rematch from last year's AFC Championship, though, with those two, yeah. those two squads. Uh, extremely well coached. Um, Cincinnati, you know, had a little red ass with all the tickets being sold to the neutral site last week that I'm sure they kind of channeled in some extra motivation. And obviously Joey's playing great and, and uh, can never count Pat out. So it should be a great weekend. Like you, like you said, millions and millions and millions of people watching. We're the best sport in the planet, and, and uh, I'll be one of those people watching. Hey, that's the next generation, right, of quarterbacks? That's what they're saying. You agree with that? <coughs> What, those three guys? You ready to hand over the title? That's what they're saying. This is the next mm -hmm. generation of the entire NFL, is what everybody's saying. You know, like, uh, this is kind of a showcase of it this year, because I think this is the first time, I forget, you or Tom, I forget how many years. A lot of years. Like, 2009, I believe. First that? time in a long time where it hasn't had, you know, you or Tom in it, basically. Still happening, you know. 
obviously a lot of success out of both those programs into the playoffs, late into the playoffs when all eyes are on the NFL. But now it's kind of the younger guys getting a chance to shine here these last couple of weeks. It's an interesting time here. Interesting time. Say that a little bit. Say that a little bit louder so Tommy can hear. It. Then we'll both come back next year. All right. <laughs> you old fucks ain't got it anymore. <laughs> All right. We can't thank you enough. We'll see you next week, hopefully, pal. And one last thing before we go: Who is number ten on your high school team? Oh my god, that was freak! Is this Jordy Nelson? Who was this guy? Thomas Wilson, man. Shout out to Thomas. He was unguardable in high school, bro. We watched the highlights. For- Look at this dude. Mom. Dog. <laughs> soccer player man i think that was a that might have been the only only year he played and then he ended up going to wow you guys got a lot of clips there that's pretty impressive Thomas, we'll hey we pulled Bama. this we, we were uh we've got there we go right there that's a good one that was a, that was the almond bowl and that, that last clip they, you just got a second that was us against Jab. chico high the night before we were supposed to play now this is yeah that's i don't know who that's against what uh, paradise maybe oh, that's a guy Tommy, Tommy that's Tommy 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 Tommy. 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 This dude's unbelievable. He changed his name to go to the league? Is that Julian <laughs> Edelman? I mean, who yeah. the fuck is Tom that? Tom Wilson, the hockey player? <laughs> Anyways, what were you going to say about the Almond Bowl? Something happened. Well, the night before, we were supposed to play at Chico State, right? It's a big rivalry game that we have. And look at Thomas. just Tommy I mean, Wilson again. Yeah. Bro, he's unguardable. Oh. He only played one year of football, this nice dude. Stepping. Couldn't stop him, man. The best it never was. Almond Where Bowl. are you getting these tapes from? This is incredible. So man. we ran oh, this. We Googled it. I think There's Zito. David Jackson. David Jackson with a touchdown there. Who else we got? Oh, that was a bad throw. There's David again. Another touchdown. Hey, he, came Peter in late, Grapp. he came in late in Casey the season. Casey Helmick. Ryan Angle Branson. Yep. Oh, there we go. We got Derek Lawrence. Shout out DL with the uh, touchdown. Hell yeah, DL. There's, here's he got the Almond Bowl. Oh, there he is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, freak oh. of nature. See ya. We were wondering if you had always been accurate. So Zito Googled <laughs> some Aaron Rodgers high school footage. And this hey, came here we up. Go. This, is, this is the all-star game right here that we played in. Really big. Yep, there's me right there. Really big all-star game. A lot of fans. Yeah. That's an all-star game? Great throw. That guy <laughs> didn't care. How big, how big are those jerseys? 23 had been there before, bro. Oh, here we go. Here's a touchdown catch for me. My only touchdown in my career of catching. Oh, smooth. <laughs> Imagine you didn't put the ball out. Probably didn't score. No chance. All right, here's a long touchdown pass. Oh, okay. That, that was Sean Bodiford right there. He played in the NFL. That was Bodiford? Here's a throw to Garrett Cross. He also played in the NFL. He's from Chico High. Damn. Jeez. Butte, Montana. Place a pipeline up here. Butte. Not Montana, bro. Not Montana. <laughs> oh, classic. Hey, Butte, Butte, Montana. <laughs> and that actually, that wasn't uh, me right there. That wasn't, there's me right there. The oh, somebody snuck in. Me. Look at you. It's stolen valor from wow. the other guy's touchdown. Wow. Wow. Great ball. Yeah. Is that you? Who's that? Who's won? That's Mark on a Of course. Donald Hawkins, a freak. Oh, dude. CFL Hall of Famer. <laughs> dude. Just watching the highlights. We did this last week. Yeah. Bro. There's some oh, big ones. This, hey, this was our rival here. I threw six touchdowns this game. <laughs> Is that good? Oh. I don't know. You tell me. Six. That's Bobby Bernal right there. He went to Idaho, Idaho and played. Got like 90 balls when he was there. Great, Great band. Bob. All right. Well, we appreciate you running through that. I'm sure the boys appreciate it. Hey, thanks it. for that trip down memory lane. It was awesome, man. I appreciate that. Hell yeah. And you have always been accurate. Mm-hmm. That's what uh, that's what we landed upon, and I feel like we just witnessed it So he's back next year. Yeah. So, hey, remember. Remember those it's days, bigger. too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whenever you're going through your entire whale watching process on whether or not you want to play again next year. The world thanks you. We appreciate the hell out of you. Enjoy your week. See you next week, huh? See you next week. Hell yeah. Wow. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, boys, great work out there. Packers hey. need to fucking sign Tommy Wilson. Yeah. Today. Yeah. Today. I right. played high school football one year, has 15 touchdowns. Yeah. Should be the Soccer OC. player, bro. Soccer player out there mossing. How about him going on top of that guy, finding his balance, and finishing? Yeah. Touchdown. High, high stepping in the end zone. Jeez Louise. That guy's got moxie. How about him just literally naming all oh, DL there? Yep. There's probably so many thoughts that just he hasn't seen that in forever. Right? Yeah. Guy goes off oh, the, the All-Star game. All right, let's get to a break. The Almond Bowl, something happened. You didn't <laughs> yeah. finish the story. Yeah. So many highlights were coming. We'll have to catch up with them next week right. about the Almond Bowl in 2003. Mm-hmm. Write that down. 2001. What year did he graduate high school? 2000? 2001. Yeah. Or no, he'd be 02, same as me, but he's one year. He got in the league a year before me. He A year before you, even after going to JUCO? 
Yeah, he left. He went to Cal for one year after JUCO, and then he was drafted the year before I came in. Did you redshirt? No. Did you come in early? No, definitely not. That was not a thing. That wasn't really going on when I was coming out. Maurice. Some guys did. So I think yeah, my, did. my first year, I think, was the first year that West Virginia let freshmen in before schools enrolled, before school started. Like during the summer. So we were there the summer yeah. before. I don't know if that was the first year for all college football, but it was definitely the first year for West Virginia. Might be Virginia. right. Because Dan, I think Dan Connor might have been. Wait, did you Penn take State? class yeah, or did you just go. go with the workout? Yeah, I took class. I took like two classes, summer classes. They were obviously A not joke. actual Rigorous. classes. But the workouts were terrible. Terrible. They were the worst workouts I've ever encountered in my life. That was my introduction to football. Yeah, yeah. Now, I still had my soccer lungs. So, like, cardio-wise, I was okay. But they were, they were torturous workouts that were happening. It was like, this is college football. It's like... I, I think I made a big mistake. Uh -oh. I wanted to play football so I didn't have to run anymore. And then I get here and it's like every day we're running more than I've ever run in a soccer practice in my life. Is this what it is? Not what I signed up Every for. day. Yeah. No, this is what summer workouts are. This is where we're creating our team. And also we're seeing who the fuck really wants to be here. I'm like, oh, so we're going through like, this is like run people out of the program workouts. Yeah. Boot camp. Every day. Yeah, every day. Oh, great. Sweet. Happy I came early. This is my senior yep. summer. Yeah. Awesome. This is great. It was terrible. I agree. Those summer workouts back in the day before I think a lot of these NCAA rules were made. Oh, oh, yeah. Was it like I did that? that? I drove up I drove up and stayed uh in Nugent's apartment. Like the day I graduated high school, then went to Ohio State and walked in. There was me, Bobby was with me, a couple other guys, and just had to just fit fit in with the like, you know, I'm all of a sudden you're in a workout, a grueling workout with these dudes you've been watching on TV for the last two or three years. Like, this is weird. And they're four years and older it was than impossible. you. Yeah, it was it, impossible too. I mean, they ran. They yeah, you ran so much, so much. You go out on the field. They got the paddles there. Uh -huh. It's like all right. I know you have to have that, but also seemingly putting it in a spot where yeah. it's like we're gonna use this today. Up. That's what we got. That's what we got. And then as a freshman, we had to go for the first workout. So second workout, normally no, much hotter. Afternoon, much hotter. But at least you know the run. So like first group does not know what the run is at the end of the workout. So you're going in blind. So I was not good at that. I need to know yeah. how many I got left. Like, I need to know that. So I became afternoon guy, but that freshman year could not <laughs> fucking go in afternoon. Had to go in. I was scared to death going into those things. Yeah. I hate Always. not knowing things. Need to know how many times. I was the same way with, like, practice schedules. Like, you better not fucking surprise me with a 9 on 7 today. I, I need to know an hour before. Andy. I am conserving energy at every single step <laughs> of the way here, so I need to know how much more I got. Here's yeah. AJ from his freshman year. Bunch Fun of photo. dogs. Yeah, look at Mangold. Yeah, Mangold on the left. Jeez. Oh, Mangold is ginormous. Look at him holding up. Uh, is that Tyler Hansborough you guys are lifting up? Yeah. <laughs> That's Mike Nugent we're holding up. We're all, those are all Dayton guys. That's why they took the picture. That's Nuge? Yeah, it's Nuge up top. Wow, he looks good, huh? A young man with that jawline yeah. down. Yeah, 90 play goalie for the Mighty Ducks. Who's that, Quinn Pitcock? Mm. Yeah, there's Quinn. Is you played with Bobby Quinn, didn't Bacla? you, Pat? Me? Or Quinn get, maybe got there right after you left, or I don't know. I, play, played, I played against Quinn. Quinn. So was he with the Colts when I was there? Talk, Quinn could squat 1,000 pounds and, when he's, and touch his butt on the ground. He's one of those guys. Far like, right? Freak. Yeah. Beast. All right, what a crew. Look at how Ohio you look. Wait, I gotta yeah. hold a guy. Oh, uh, one hand. All right, yeah. So fun photo. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's after. That's like after one of our early camp practices. I mean, we weren't wearing pads, so it wasn't crazy. Yet. Yeah, yeah. It's still not fun. Uh, all right, we'll take a five minute break. We'll react to reactions. Then we got in the trenches, and then we're out of here on this glorious Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, January twenty fourth, two thousand twenty three. We'll also do a giveaway later with a AQ putting. Hopefully, in the trenches will be great, which it will be. Then the putt will fall. We'll give away stuff, and we'll have a great Tuesday. Hell Boom. yeah! Right? Hell yeah! Be your friend. Tell a friend. Take five. 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 body feels fresh, my mind clear. Like, I'm gonna go do it tonight, I think, you know? Like, I'm gonna go do it. 77,899 people going bananas. I thought I wouldn't be able to sleep last night. I thought that I'd wake up with high anxiety. That is not the case at all. I am so ready to get out there and do what I was put on this earth to do. I'll be walking out of that thing. Well, this is a big night because uh, 11 years ago tonight, I had my match with Jerry Lawler. Come on! Broadcast colleagues, 
same night, 11 years apart, could become the first undefeated broadcast team in the history of WWE wrestling. Not could. We will be. Only two superstars have actually commentated on the same WrestleMania that they had a match on. Pat McAfee joins that club tonight. Pontius is in and Party Boy is here. Pontius is here. Party Boy is in WrestleMania. Pontius' cheeks are out in WrestleMania. Now he's putting that thing up on Sami Zayn. I would like to say that that's the first time I've seen Pontius' ass, but that is not the case. Hey, look at, look at, look at, look at, look at. Leave it. Leave it. You know, I've walked out that ramp into this setting probably 10 sure, million times fine. in my that's mind. Fine. There was a time where every time I walked out of a door, I was acting as if I was walking into a WWE arena. So tonight, whenever I feel that energy, just hoping that I don't have a heart attack immediately. I'm hoping that I don't get too gassed, and I'm hoping I put on a damn good show because I've been thinking about this for 23 years. Let's walk through and do this thing, huh? I'm prepared, I'm ready. I'm excited. Hey, who do you want to see tonight? I want to I want to see Pat McAfee tonight.
beer in my ears. Like it feels like I got water in my ears. I got beer in both of my ears. But I just had the incredible opportunity and honor <coughs> to chug beers with Stone Cold Steve Austin. Have a WrestleMania match that Vince McMahon was a part of. I'm living on cloud 50 right now, dude. This is sweet. What a day, what a dream, what a life. Now I'm gonna have a couple more Steve Wisers. Wise. Maybe a little whiskey. Wise. Maybe some carbs, because I've been ketoing for four weeks. Wise. Hey, fuck it, dude. <laughs> Welcome back to the Pat McAfee Show on Aaron Rodgers, Tuesday, January 24th. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Today's show is sponsored by SeatGeek. Oh, yeah. Oh. This is your weekly reminder that SeatGeek gave us all 15% off football tickets, yeah, whether you're a first-time buyer or not. You're going to need this if you're going to that Eagles-Niners game. I believe right now it is the most expensive NFC Championship what? game ticket of all time. Really? That Breaking records, I believe. Thanks, inflation. Standing room only seats. Yeah. $838. Yep. And Dan Orlovsky's looking for him. So mm-hmm. if you know anyone who's got a connection. I don't know finance well enough. Okay. Inflation just means everything's expensive and everybody has enough money for everything. Pretty much. Everything's Definitely going the up. first part. I always more expensive. fall back to supply and demand, motherfucker. <laughs> everyone wants to go see this game and there's not enough supply. Supply. In the name. Sell me this pen. Bingo. Write Boom. your name down. Oh, you can't. Hey, you need a fucking pen. Here you go. Boom. Boom. Can Boom. I get some fucking ketchup? Anyways, SeatGeek's got the, got the goods. They got, they, the goods. They got the goods. And if you're going to a conference championship game or the superb owl, nice, Bruce, SeatGeek has you covered. Just click the link in the description, and the 15% off code will Jeez. be auto-applied to your account. No code needed. So Hell yeah. I just put my head right in the way of that whole thing. <laughs> I do apologize. We got a rugby ball here. Yeah. Whoa. New we, ball. We added a, a new ball to the collection here, obviously. Yeah, there's a lot of Which them. country is that yeah. rugby ball from? Uh, Ireland. America. 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 Okay. <laughs> Anyways, welcome back. Shout out to SeatGeek. Uh, SeatGeek has a thing on there where there'll be like a green light or a red light next to it, or a green dot or a red, light, uh, red dot. Mm-hmm. Green dot means like, hey, we've scanned the internet. This is a good ticket for a good price. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, the red one means like, hey, this is a bad price for this ticket, but it certainly is this ticket. You won't get catfish with SeatGeek. They nope. scan them all. It's a great spot, great opportunity. I think they're in the middle of something, though. A lot of ticketing stuff going on with the. Um, is that right? With uh, Taylor Swift and. Oh, uh, yeah. Really? I thought some other st- companies were. I didn't know SeatGeek was involved. Other well, yeah, yeah, that's were. what I'm saying. Yeah, I think like yeah. I think there's some real ticketing stuff going on right oh, now. Oh, yeah. A lot of live yeah. shows taking place since. Testifying. Yeah. Well, since COVID kind of locked down, a lot of live shows having a lot of success, I think. Yep. Mm -hmm. We have chosen not to do any of it. Right. Which is a bad idea. No, avoid the problem. Everybody's been trying to get on the road to go see everybody after everybody's been kind of locked in their in their houses. So ticketing has become a thing because ticketing had to stop for two years. Ticketing was not there was nothing to ticket. So these companies literally just stopped, which meant only a couple ticketing platforms are gonna survive because whenever you live off of live events and there's no live events on the entire planet for a long period of time your business stops obviously and everything kind of takes on so i think the ticketing process is going to go through quite a change here uh over the next maybe couple years on how it all works out because there's a lot of people that obviously scam people they buy so many tickets they have bots that buy a bunch of tickets Uh then they sell them on secondary platforms and they fuck people over and then everything happens so i think they're trying to fix that now i think we're trying to get that all figured out but there's only so many ticketing platforms left because COVID knocked out yeah. so many ticketing platforms because there was no live events. So what an interesting time. A lot of, uh, a lot of shit going on. But SeatGeek was our first partner sponsor mm-hmm. whenever I retired and was at Barstool. They were the first company that we read an ad for. Yep. Still with them. We fucking love them. Love you, Thank you, Geek. Geek. Thank you, We Tickets appreciate too. the hell out of Sea Geek. Now, you know what else we appreciate the hell out of? Plus the that. fact that we get smarter every single week whenever there's a round man that joins us. He lives in Arizona, but he flies to Indianapolis weekly so that we can go in the trenches with A.Q. Shipley. Hey! Hey! Come on, Alan! Ooh. 
Let's go. A little bit more energy. Playoff football. Oh yeah. Every get, everything gets turned up a little bit more yeah. in the playoffs. Just like these boys. Down three out of five offensive linemen. What? Big what? shout out to Frank Pollock, offensive line coach, Cincinnati Bengals. Gave a hell of a speech to the boys after the game. You guys see that? Oh, oh yeah. Boy, yeah. Frankie. Yeah. Proud of the boys. That was fun. This guy getting his first start basically since he's been drafted out of Clemson. The car man. Jackson Carmen does a fantastic job. We got an open side tackle pull coming over this way. But what he's going to do is going to sell pass, club the guy up the field. That's going to open the hole. And then we get a big gaping hole right here. Ooh. And then here, we get a double team working back. We got him with a man block here. And then he's going to pull and open this thing. Let's watch this thing split. Oh, there we go. We get everybody sweet. moving. Oh, There's club. Oh, oh this baby. Carman. Ace block going there. Jackson Carmen with the little club up the field. We get the tackle pulling on the backside. And look who he's pulling on. A DB. <laughs> oh, oh, no. oh, no. How awesome is that? Boom. How awesome is that? Hey, and just real quick, don't want to throw uh, anybody under the bus, and I don't think this would be doing that, but certainly diminishing uh, an accomplishment. Snowy, slick conditions. Good for the offensive line, especially a brand-new offensive line that's trying to figure it out in the biggest stage. Very good offensive line. But, again, like we, we've talked about this. It affects everybody, but it affects the defensive line more because these guys got to be a little bit more weary when they're sticking those spikes in the ground trying to get off the ball. they got to make sure the feet are in the ground. So it does affect the D-line probably a little more than the O-line. These boys showed up, though, in a big way. Joe Mixon was flying. Yeah, we got to talk about it just real quick, one more time, just real quick. So check out the scheme. We got a backer in the box. We got a backer in the box. This motion, they know this pre-snap, a DB is going to slide in the box. This whole thing's pre-thought out. That's all part of game planning, which means coaching fucking matters. What? No. Says who? You're lying. Strategy? They're not about playing. That. Says who? A little game plan. Boom. Because seven has to come in because okay. old Cuzzy has to go out. Exactly. They're bumping with the motion. Bum, and bum, you bum. know this because they're playing zone coverage. When they play zone, they bump. If that was man coverage, seven would run with them. The backers would stay in the box. AJ, they're, they're controlling them like a puppeteer right now, bub. Yeah, they're dictating the game to the defense. That's the toughest thing when you feel like an offense is playing with you. And they, So do they get the trips over there, AQI? I That's exactly the what they did, yep. Walks out? Yep. Man, I bet this was Lou Anarumo's idea. Oh, you got a so? lot of people over there. A lot of people <laughs> over there. Lou Anarumo, probably a part of this. Yeah, he probably told Coach Taylor. Lou Anarumo on the show tomorrow. What? Whoa! Are you serious? Hey. Free Jadja, baby. Let's go. All right, check it out. We always got to pay attention to this. Don't snap it yet. Perfect. He's offset over here, which means they give the option that we can throw this pitch toss, which is exactly what they're going to do. What you're probably not noticing here is... Lane Johnson's over here at left tackle. Wait, Wait. a minute. Oh. He plays right tackle. Left tackle moves out to left tight end. Unbalanced. Whoa. Look, at this, look at this fucking right tackle. That's a wide receiver. <laughs> That's Watkins. How about that? And then here's what we're going to do. Here's the two main things. This little swoop up to capture 54. We're going to get him working inside. Wait till you guys fucking see the block by Goddard out in space. This is unbelievable. And the fake sneak. Little... Little start the motion oh, quick. Yeah. AJ, who's saying that a wide receiver is in the ti in the tackle position? That's somebody, right? I mean, everybody's. Yeah, they're going to be talking about it. This is like remember I told you our call would have been closed left, unbalanced right, over right move. You got to get all that out. Oh. Hey, real quick, real quick, let's do it. I just broke out of the huddle. I'm lined up. I'm the wide receiver. Do it. How? how you see, well, you see Quezzer, and we look around. Everyone starts panicking, freaking out. D lines pointing at him. That's Too slow. Ball got snapped. Hey, closed left, unbalanced right, over right move. Too late. Yeah, yeah it took too That's long. Weird, though, AQ. Yeah, it's awesome. And then I'm telling you, wait do you guys see this block by Goddard out in space? It is unbelievable. Check this thing. Oh, oh! Bruce! <laughs> or anyone in the face mask. It got grabbed me by the face mask. I was supposed to end up on top of him. I mean, how awesome is that? Incredible. They set this up all year. It's right here. Mm, hey, what a play. get on the line fast. Boom. Everybody breaks. Now we don't get a chance to notice. The little unbalance right there. Or if they do, it's late, and then we already got fucking angles. Everybody's got angles front side. What's the angle? What's the angle? angle? It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Paul Walter Hauser could have ran that ball. That's yeah, it. he could have. He took a hell oh, of a punt I like the this other one. week. I like this one. By the way, what a game. What a game he had. Unbelievable. Every time this guy had the ball in his hands, big-time runs were happening. Big, gaping holes. holes. What we got to notice here, this is awesome. This is the hardest thing in football whenever you're running the ball, when you get a run twist. Look at this. 
We get him up the field. That's an N. Here's a T. N up the field. N T. Little twist behind. This guy's got to sell out to block him. He has to sell out. But watch his ability to keep his hips underneath him and pass this run twist off, which allows the seal create the wall there. Big dog comes up here, seals there. You get my lotter running through looking for somebody wow. to hit. Oh, my God. Jeez. How good boys is, move bodies, huh? How good is that? I mean, they're so good up front, it's unbelievable. Is my lotta supposed to look outside first, or is he looking back they're, towards? Does they're it matter? expecting somebody to be here. The whole thing when you pull is when you come around that corner, you want to try and stay as tight as you can to the down blocks because you want to be able to kick inside out. So the hole should come uh. between wall and kick out, and there's where your hole should be. A lot of times what happens... Whenever they come, this guy could come underneath him and make that play. So you're always looking to stay tight so you can kick out. So you get the ass cheeks here with the wall. And then off the wall, you get another ass cheek on the kick out. That's how it should be. So he's doing the right thing looking outside in. There's just nobody there to block. This is unbelievable. Wow. So now the head just goes on a swivel. Pretty good, this Eagles team, huh? Oh, man, I cannot wait to watch that. This is, if you love line play, this is the game you want to watch. Philly versus San Fran is going to be awesome to watch. If I know what's next, you do. Wow. <laughs> it's San Francisco. Who's in the backfield? Wait, that's Debo Samuel. That's not McCaffrey. Huh? Listen, I love everything that they do. By the way, I thought he did a magnificent job calling plays this week. One thing we will talk about a lot, and I've talked about it a lot this year. As a coordinator, if you stick with the run game, it will get better as the game goes on. These guys were running into a brick wall early. Dallas had an unbelievable game plan. They were getting one, two, minus one, whatever. And then some hit later. Now they get five. Now they get six. They break one for the touchdown. Now you get eight. You get ten. You get the big one by Mitchell later. And all of a sudden, you got a five-yard average carry. Check this out. This is awesome shit. We are going to get the ball to Debo. But yes. here's, here's yes, what's going to be awesome. If you look at this, this play's going right. Kittle. In my opinion, the best blocking tight end. I said it last week. Hell yeah. Oh, he's got to get to him. Check out the action here. We're going to go jab step inside to influence him to get him up the field because we're getting a puller coming this way. Then he's going to go back outside to bluff him. And then from there, get back inside and get back to 55. This is fucking unbelievable what Kittle's able to Jeez. do here. Jeez. Jeez. a lot of steps. Unbelievable. Now check this thing out. Do oh, that. Bang, bang. Now, now we get the counter tray, right? We've talked about this play a lot this year. Guard, kick out. Big Trent coming around. He's going to block him. He's the second poor. First guy off the ball. He goes to number two off the ball. Now, wait. Look at McGlinchey. Oh. Look at McGlinchey. Oh. Fucking very oh. Hope he could brought syrup. Oh, yeah, because the pancake. Nom, 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 nom. I mean, if you love watching offensive line play, this is as well blocked of a play as you can get. Finish. Great job. Oh, let me also talk about this. Because when you get gap schemes, if you can see me from behind here, the gap scheme on a deuce block is going to go here here and then they start working vertical working this way because this team is known in their identity is zone schemes instead of them doing a normal deuce they tell these guys to make it look like it's the backside of zone so he's just going to go which then makes the block easy on him watch him they don't even touch him until hankins has already passed the hash Wow. Creates the hole because they it's think bluff. It's, it's a bluff. It's a bluff. They think it's zone away. Genius. It's a feint. It's a bluff. This is a a fake by Kyle Shanahan. Shit. We're going to make Cuz think that this is zone the other way because their natural read is going to be offensive lineman cutting in front of my face. I need to get that way. Exactly. I need to get front side. Exactly. So you're taking them out of the play because of their rules. They have to do they that. They have to because all we do is zone, 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 zone. So then yeah, when we run the it. gap, we make it look the same as zone and boom. So good football players – are going to lose to this. So it's almost like they get better as the years go on because they're playing the better teams. So they're taking advantage of good football players. Yeah, absolutely. Is that what it is, AJ? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's crazy. that Shanahan continues over and over to have things like this, and it's just, yeah, it's, it's awesome to watch. AQ, you've watched both O-lines all season. Who has the advantage between Philly and the 49ers? Yeah, and watch give it's, an answer. I, watch I, give an answer. Yeah, okay. one time, so here, Al. So, so here is the answer. Philadelphia is the better offensive line. The better offensive line, what they put, the people, everything about them is the better oh. offensive line. I think the scheme is better on San Fran, so it becomes a wash. From a run game standpoint. From a run game standpoint. Yeah, okay. So what's the answer then, Al? He, well, he's, he did answer. Philly's the better O-line. 
Okay. Across the board. Even with Lane Johnson being banged up? With yeah, for sure. Because, listen, Kelsey's a stud. Both right. guards are studs. Right. Both tackles are studs. Right. So, I mean, they have five very good players up front. Well, you heard what Siri on his dad's up there, IUP. Mm-hmm. That's yep. right. O-line, D-line. That's it. Figure it out. Where the game's right, won. Howie? It's you where know, the game's won. You know, his brother coaches uh, WNJ. Yeah. Pittsburgh all over the place. All uh, Legit. Let's go. It's Sirianni. all over the NFL. Pittsburgh's all over. They got the... They got the thumbprint all over the NFL. They do. The Italians from Pittsburgh. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Have their well, that's and where, the Irish. That's hey, where football let's not knock the Irish from Blum either. Yep. Yeah, yeah, me, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell Absolutely. Yeah. Hell yeah. There's some other Irish. It's a massive. Guys. Oh, yeah, Mike yeah, McCarthy. Sean oh, Lee. Yeah. Big Mike. Sean Lee. Oh, Sean. Connor Lee too. He's yeah. a big guy. There that's go. right. Dan Marino. That's it. Very Italian. <laughs> Fuck. Joe Montana. Very Italian. Yeah. yeah. Brett Favre, Sirianni, Jim Kelly. Brett Favre is not from Jim Pittsburgh. Kelly. Oh. Kelly, there's a. There there we go. Go. Kelly. As as there we go. Jim Kelly. Irish as they get. Here we go. Way to yeah, go, you're damn Nick. right. Let's go, Pittsburgh. Yeah. Let's go, Joe Namath. Stand up, Ireland. Hollywood. Let's go. How do you end up in Alabama? You think way back Good question. then? Out of Great Pittsburgh, question. he goes to Alabama. It's it's to play for Bear Bryant. It's yeah. unbelievable. That, yeah. that hat. That's a crazy to think about, though. Oh He's yeah. In Pitts- Beaver County, I think he was. Right. Where was he? He's uh. Joe Namath. Beaver Falls. Beaver Falls. Yeah. All the way to Bama. It's unbelievable. What a, what a culture shock. I yeah. couldn't even imagine. How yeah. about them meeting him? Yeah. Let alone, like, obviously him meeting them. Exactly. At that time. Oh, God. What a different world. Yeah. Unreal. He had success. And he uh, obviously is all the way back, baby. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyways, this is another Niners Rich highlight. Rich Gannon. Oh, another. Richie. I didn't know he's a Pittsburgh guy. Man, Mark Bueller. Greatest pump fake of all time. George Blanda. He's Irish. I'm not sure of that. <laughs> George, yeah, he is. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. Johnny Unitas. <laughs> Johnny, you Pittsburgh? Hell yeah. Johnny Unitas. Hell wow. yeah, dude. Yeah, sure. Best quarterback. Thank you, Shipley. What are you saying? Yeah, sure. It's because you don't Johnny know. Johnny Unitas is from Baltimore, isn't he? <laughs> he played he for played Baltimore. In Baltimore. And I think don't be so such a doof. Yeah. I think you went to Towson too. So? That's where my wife went to school. Just saying. Oh, big brains. Wow. Big Shout brains. Good Johnny lacrosse you. School. Great lacrosse school. Great lacrosse school. Johnny Unitas is from Pittsburgh? Did you, I did not know. I didn't know that either. Is that real? Is that real? Everybody he, needs to start a little bit more respect. He's wow. Italian. City of Pittsburgh. Good for him. Anyways, Shanahan, not from Pittsburgh, but he's got hey, a good brain. Hey, let's point something out since we always point this thing out. Hold on. Hold on. We got to go back. Just a tad. Just a tad. Just a tad. Trent Williams staring right at him, right? Yeah, he's tipping, tipping plays. Tipping, tipping. Tipping, tipping. tipping plays. Think this is going to fucking matter? What do we think? Yeah. Think, uh, you think it's going to matter? Probably. Because they're running the counter tray again. They're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to get the bluff right here. Watch it. It gets 90 just to hesitate. Get up the field. Lawrence gets up the field. Then we get the kick out. Banks is coming. Same thing here. We get the deuce. We get the deuce. McGlinchey, fucking monster in the run game. We love what he's doing. He's going to come get this hip. Boom. Redirect. Get to the second level. Wait do you see this thing. This thing's going to be awesome. Here comes the counter tray. Boom. Look at him hitting the hip. That's how you get the movement. Hits the hip. Now he climbs on that Van Der Esch. Big Trent's coming. Around. There's a kick out. Oh. There's, oh. I mean, he doesn't wow. get touched. McGlinchey blocked three people. McGlinchey with the Look deuce. Look at the movement. The movement One, down the goal two, line, three. too. So that's very Jesus. impressive. Bro, there's two yards they need to gain, and they do a deuce counter tray, like a very sophisticated play. Yeah. It's like this is why they they can continue to run the ball in the red zone when there's not a lot of room, right? That's it. Because they're not scared to do all this shit. Now, why doesn't everybody do this? <laughs> I mean, they're just so good because, look, if you remember correctly, when they ran it before, we had a tight end over here. We had a tight end over here. Now they're running it to the open <laughs> side, using the bluff here, and then getting the arc release to affect Mike on the backside. That's how they're able to do it. They always have a fucking plan to attack somebody. Am, and in this game, it was the two edge guys. Am I wrong in thinking that normally in this area here, everybody just fucking does this number normally? A lot of times, yeah, because nobody puts as much... There's so many teams, you're seeing, you're seeing Philly, you're seeing San Fran, you're seeing a lot of the good ones who are coming up with all this creative stuff in short yardage and goal line, put time and emphasis. So many people are like, oh, we're just going to line up and we're going to move people down here. Man, it does, it you got to beat the man in front of you. Yeah. It's like, all right, I get mm-hmm. it. It'd be nice if you could. Just make it a little easier. If we can make some little leverage play here with fucking the best lineman in the game, Trent pulling. Boom. 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 Stonewall. So they're not saving this play. They're just doing the same play they've run before with a different look or running it One's to the, to the tight side. end side. One's to the open okay. side. Yep, same thing. A lot of the same stuff you get with the crack zone stuff that they've been doing inside out where Kittle goes fly motion. Boom, boom. Now they're doing it to the tackle side. They're just, they're just putting little ring. Okay, so I have a question. In the huddle, are they calling this uh, deuce weak counter tray? 
So, are they saying that to the offensive line, or is that just a part so of the they play got call? both tight ends over here, right? So it would be some like some form of firm. Firm would be the call. It would be some type of firm. You get nasty or tight because he's in a tight split, and then they're calling, you know, this could be to the even side. So 34 tackle and guard. And then the right? offensive yep. line just know they're, that's what their job that's is. That's their job. Yeah. As soon as you hear it, as soon as you hear the gap scheme, it's, hey, how do we get the number two? When I say number two, we got two linebacker spots. That's number one. First guy off the ball, number one, number two. So they know the deuce is going to number two. We're leaving two for the poolers. End man on the line of scrimmage has the flat pull. Trent has the first guy off the ball. Boom. You, you see the people saying that the San Francisco 49ers are cheating and they're putting – yeah, I saw that. Seven guys. George eight. Kittle on yeah. the line. Yeah. yeah. That's why 96 is wrong, because they're cheating. Yeah, yeah, so yeah it's rigged. That was very it's stupid. rigged. So you agree? It no, is I cheating. don't agree. I think anytime you sit there, anything, you could say linemen are cheating, they're off the ball. You could sit there and say Terry McLaurin was on or off the ball. You could sit there and say, at the end of the day, if you're back a little bit, you got to let it ride. So not or sure. they don't. You're or they saying don't. however they're calling it. It's however they're calling it. Got it. That sounds like you think they were cheating. Yeah. yeah. No, I so don't. you're a big San Fran cheats. I don't. I don't one bit. Okay. But here's what I do love. What's that? The guy we talked about earlier. Who? Carman. Carmen Jackson getting out in space. First of all, yeah, check out Jamar Chase on the crack block on Shaq Lost. He's played a lot of football Live. in this league for a long time. Boom. Oh, Look at that. Oh, Jamar. How good is that, right? That is not the big bump. How good is that? That is not the big bump. Let's wait for the big bump. Balls. We're going to watch Edmonds, who's about to make a shit ton of money. Let's watch Jackson out in space. This is going to be awesome. Gets out in space. Gets his first start. Big-time playoff game against the Buffalo Bills. Everybody rooting against him. We got the crack toss. Oh, he that. eyes them up. Oh, Target oh. acquired. Oh, oh, boy. oh no, no. <laughs> oh, Jesus. No. Bad footing. Oh, We're going to bury him. Carman. 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 Jeez. Wow. Beep, beep. How good was that? Honk, honk. Get off the track. So this is his first real action? First real action, really. I mean, he played a little bit when Jonah went down the last game. But, again, he got thrown into the mix. Probably wasn't 100% prepared. This time, my man showed up. He played well. He played very well. I watched how him. His pass pro was great. Run game oh. was great. Mm -hmm. How badly do they need Jonah Williams back? I think they're fine. Okay. I mean, this guy's comfortable now, and he played his ass I'd say off. he was a second-round pick, too. Second-round pick out of Clemson. Yeah. Looks like a 10-year vet. Looks like a 10-year vet. And he's finishing. He plays physical. I love it. Well, you I'd would trade for him, you say? Oh, somebody needs some help. That's a guy. That's a guy you might be wanting to, wanting to go after and get. What team, you think? Colts that? with Aaron Rodgers. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, like that'll it. be Aaron Rodgers' blindside. Welcome to India, pal. Quinn Nelson for Carman. I think people saw this play all over the internet. Let's just talk about it. Let's talk about the dynamics of it because here's the deal. When you run a zone play like this, first of all, look, he gets his head to the outside. So many people, I used to get in trouble at times sometimes because you're so hard trying to get to that Jeez. outside shoulder that you get there and you're soft with the inside arm. The entire block on a zone play comes from the inside arm. Watch Kelsey drive second step and his backside hand and just lift Jesus. and explode. Jesus. That's unbelievable. I mean, nice. no, my, I've told Pat this. We, I've played against Justin Ellis a bunch of times. This guy's 6'4", 365 pounds. Jesus. Big man. Kelsey, on a good day, is 275, mm -hmm. 280, whatever he is, right? And this is what leverage and strength and doing things the right way with good technique, getting your backside hand up underneath and just drive. That's unbelievable. Yeah, Bruce Brown said... Just physics-wise, mm -hmm. I don't know how Jason Kelsey is going to block Dexter Lawrence or any other D lineman. Just purely off of physics is what Bruce Brown was saying. And then he came in and said that that was the worst thing he's ever said about football in the history. Because yep. mm -hmm. Jason Kelsey seemingly had a great day. Yeah, that's some yeah. bitch. Played his strong. ass off. He's had an unbelievable year. I mean, some of the shit he did in this was unbelievable. All right, well, we appreciate you for all season. Can't wait for your uh, all-pro team. Let's we go. can't thank you enough, ladies and gentlemen, in Trenches AQ yeah, Show. Yeah. All right, to Aaron Rodgers, thank you for joining us today. AJ, you've done a great job. Before we get out of here, AQ, we need you to try to make some putts here. Ooh. Come on, here out. Go. Hey, for the good of the people. For the good of the people. Here we go. For the good of the people. bring your own putter? You bring no. us own putter like Bruce? Now, Bruce is a lefty. He did have his own putter, made his first putt after missing 10 of them yeah. last Friday. That is correct. Yeah, he stayed in here all Friday night, actually. Mm -hmm. AQ Shipley, and he got his reps in, which I appreciate him. He won some money for some people out there. That's good for the people. What's good for the goose? It's good for the gander. Hell yeah. Speaking of, if AQ Shipley can go 2 of 5 after an incredible in the trenches and an incredible mm -hmm. question on Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, we'll give 15 people $500 wow. who retweet this video, say something nice to somebody, and put their cash tag in the same reply so we can pay you officially on cash. App. Come on, Al. 
His first putt. One Dash for wow. one. The game wow. might have been figured out. I believe this thing, although it was a carnival state fair like putting green, there has been a spot marked on the putting green for a straight roll. Oh, it's automatic. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. One day after Bruce knocks down the first putt, Let's AQ go. goes two for two for Let's 15 go. people Boy, to yeah. win $500. On this Good Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, Good January trip, 24th, 2023. <laughs> AJ, thank you so much to everybody that allows us to do this every single day. We can't thank you enough. We'll see you tomorrow with a big one. Lou Ann Rumo's on show. What? A couple other special guest surprises. Can't wait for that. AJ, have a great afternoon. Goodbye, everybody. You're the best. Thank you, boys. See ya.